more dumpsters than I got losses. Oh. is not moving. What a way to win. Yeah. That says something. Unstick it. They are going full Brazil, right? It is. It is. Uh, Coakley's loading in. It is all smiles. It's said cut. Wow! This but wow! Cthulhu is dead in the water. Yeah. Super scope is celebrating. Well, I do have to award the golden dumpster to your brother. It's not my uh, honor, but it is my duty to give you this golden dumpster. Drew is just. Oh, all right. oh, that shot is just indecent. It's almost personal, Chris. Wow! The battery is coming out of your face! Good evening and welcome to downtown Norwalk, Connecticut for the 2023 NHRL Finals. We are entering the round of 12. This is the World Championship. We are this close to crowning Golden Brett winners. It is now prime time. We have entered the round of 12. Now in each one of these weight classes, 24 robots entered at the start of the day. We have eliminated half of those robots and we are entering our single elimination bracket. We're going to see 12 robots in the threes, the 12s, and the 30s. This is where legends are made. This is where the heroes will be crowned with golden brets. This is where we will find out who the world champions are for 2023. It has been a long season. We've been through six competitions so far. I'm very excited to see who comes out of this. Here is how primetime is going to lay out. So in round one, the robots seated five through 12 will fight each other. In round two, the winners from round one will fight the top four seeds, and then we will go into the semifinals. And then finally, round four, the finals, where the world champions will be crowned in the three, 12, and 30 pound, pound weight classes. Now for uh, robots here, they have either three or four fights left between them and the Golden Brett. Let's take a look at a couple of big moments from earlier in this day. We see Tony D'Ambrosio celebrating here with Black uh, with Blackbird. Kablooey Tango here Completely taking on dismantled. STF. Just absolutely brutally dismantling STF. Look at this and beautiful Megatron. fight between Megatron and Vorion. The number one ranked 30 pounder here in the field and Jameson Go, uh, the greatest combat robot builder of our generation. Yahoo. Chad New here, the captain of magnitude uh, here with Yahoo facing off against Knockoff White and the Wrigley Brothers. Man, what a dapper referee they had for that matchup. All right, now we see Monkfish. Ooh, this is such match. a dominant three-pound robot with Monkfish. Rachel de Guzman there, the, uh, the driver and operator of that bot, celebrating after that win. Now, this is how the bracket is, shake, is shaken out. Check this out. This is our 30-pound division. We've definitely got some top-ranked robots waiting in the second round. In the first round, we are going to see Kablooey Tango. Jubilee. 
STF and Yahoo, Eva facing off against Boreon, and Chibata facing off against Toro Feather. Wow, there is a lot of Brazil hanging out in this particular bracket. Really excited to see how that shakes out. Do you think we could crown our very first ever Brazilian Golden Brett champion in the 30 pound division. It's possible today. Absolutely. Yeah, we have three Brazilians, but only two of them uh, will potentially advance to the second round here. Uh, we see Chibata facing off against Toro. There's only going to be one Brazilian exiting the box there. Wow. All right, uh, let's check in upstairs with Sam. Hello, Sam. Hey, how's it going? We're up here with Nick from the STF team. He's got a huge fight coming up against Yahoo. Nick, what are your plans for this fight? We're just gonna keep the momentum going. We've had two really big wins and we're, we're just gonna show up uh, into, into our rematch with Yahoo and show them our upgrades. All right, well, I know that the pit desk is calling for you already. You're about to head downstairs and take it to Yahoo. Good luck in that fight and I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna go to cage one here with action immediately out of the gate here. I can see that this is Kablooey Tango facing off against Jubilu. Now, Kyle, here you go. Here's one half of the Brazilian chance here. Yep. Now, for Jubilu to advance, they're just gonna have to kill the number two ranked 30 pounder, uh, you know, this year in Kablooey Tango. Uh, pretty tall order, I would say. They have not beaten Kablooey Tango yet in this competition, so this is quite a tough matchup for them. Um, yeah, Yubilu is an extremely hard-hitting horizontal sprinter, probably the oldest design. Uh, they've probably got the oldest design in the Brazilian lineup thus far, but it is definitely a well-put-together robot. Um, but yeah, also, Kablooey Tango, Team Captain Lucy Du, won the Best Builder Award in the Sparkies earlier today. Most valuable oh, most builder. most valuable builder. Yeah, we don't put like, uh, you know, Gotcha, there's like no, best. there's no like quality. It, yeah. Yes, it's just the most valuable. Most valuable, like that's, you know, how, how much you For what really she's kind contributed of give to the sports, to the, sports, to the community. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I mean, she's a great builder. She is. She could be the best builder, but we don't have an award for that. I mean, Hot Not Leaf yet. Juice was the, was the last, you know, real entry that she brought into this competition, did exceptionally well. Really put 12-pounders on the map in a lot of ways. Yeah. Lucy Dew, the captain of Valkyrie here on BattleBots, and I think that a lot of these design learnings that, they've, uh, that they're taking from Kului Tango could make it into, uh, into Valkyrie. Now, this is a super dominant four-wheel drive under Cutter. They have the ability to run forks on this robot to great effect. They're, this is a robot that they introduced here in 2023, and it already climbed to uh, the number two spot on the rankings here in this weight class. Yeah, the changes between that robot at the beginning of this year and now are just staggering. Uh, this is a phenomenal just process of design, implementation, and changes after every single tournament. The cool part is, is because, you know, Alex and Lucy have been kind of co-captaining this robot throughout the season. When one of them is available, they captain. When the other one's available, they captain. And when they're both available, they're both here. But they both kind of have their own ideas about what to implement, what to change. And therefore, they've really been, to ex been able to accelerate this robot's growth and development very quickly throughout the season, to the point where now it's just an apex predator in this division. Yeah. Okay. And we can see Team Warrior here uh, standing cage side with Jubilee. We are ready to get this fight started. This is our single elimination portion of the bracket. Every single winner that you see here will advance. The losers will be Five, going home. The four, Blue Tango to take it three, all has to win four two, fights in a row. One. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, and immediately I saw a belt go stripping away. Is that the belt off of Jubilu? Wow, yeah, I think it might be. No, both of these weapons continue to run. I did see a very long belt. I think that was perhaps a drive belt or what? The mystery of combat robotics, Kyle. You can see that belt there in the left-hand corner of your screen. Good weapon to weapon hit there with Kablooey Tango and Jubilu.
Both of these weapons are running very strong, but it looks like one half of the drive on Jubilee is impaired. Wow, and I think that Kablooey Tango may have embedded its weapon into the rail. Yeah. Jubilee, this is your opportunity to come in here and capitalize. It does look like the right side of the drive on Jubilee is not fully functional. Or sorry, yeah, the left side of the drive. So it's hard for them to take advantage of that, but what they have been able to do is shake Kablooey Tango loose. Wow, another big hit there. These are two haggard-looking opponents here with 90 seconds left in uh, this fight. There's a huge amount of time on the clock. Anything could happen here in the next 90 seconds. Kablooey Tango is on its head. It's an overhead uh, spinner now, and that spinner is not spinning, Kyle. Not good. Jubilee here now uh, crab walking its way over to its opponent. Kablooey Tango's weapon is down, and Jubilee is now eating away at those big orange wheels. Looks like one of the tires is off of the back of Kablooey Tango. 50 seconds left here in this fight. Yeah, they're doing their own little crab walking action there. Now, do my eyes deceive me, or has the weapon come back on Kablooey Tango? Sounds like it, if you listen to all the different kind of tones and pitches here. Yes, it is wow. absolutely back. It was digging into the uh, into the floor there. 20 seconds left, and the weapon on Jubilee has gone down. What a destructive match here. Jubilee still, though, trying to, to advance, trying to show some aggression here. Now, both of these robots have uh, entered the last 10 seconds of the match. They have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges. Yeah, it does look like that inverted weapon on Kablooey just can't make contact with Yubaloo in their current form. Wow, big round of applause for our very first fight here in prime time. One of these builders were advanced, the other will be going home in round one of the bracket. You don't see uh, totally confident faces on either side of the no. box here. You can I'm see a little bit of tire there in the box from, uh, from Kublooey Tango. See some metal, but is that a fork perhaps from one of these robots? Yeah, neither of these bots really having their best showing there. The winner of this matchup will go off to face Megatron in the next round. Okay, just the number one ranked robots, you know, uh, in the 30s. No big deal. Yeah, returning world champion, you know. Yeah, like defending that's... world champion. Yeah, yeah, Oh, wait, uh, yeah. Former world champion? Former world champion. Yeah, yeah. returning former. Not, not yeah. the defendant. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. Now, uh, we're going to uh, wait for that judge's decision, but first, let's check in here with Cage 4. I think we have another fight loaded in. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? All right, we've got Chabada facing off against Toro Feather. Now, Chabada run by Ratto here in the pink corner. Both Ratto and uh, Toro have uh, advanced through these play-in matches, and they are facing one another. Two Brazilians enter the box, only one exits. Rato has had a phenomenal tournament. I think a lot of his success he attributes to his father that he brought with him for his teammate this time around. That is very cool. Isn't that neat? Yeah, I do love that. And uh, Team Riobots here running Toro Feather here in uh, the blue corner. And uh, fighting their friends. It doesn't feel great, you know? Um, these, are, these are people, you know, who flew... <laughs> An incredible distance to get here. Yeah. They help one another uh, in between competitions, and uh, only one of them is going to be advancing. Now, Junior D'Souza, captain of the Rio Bots uh, Toro Feather, he's been doing a phenomenal job getting the bot ready. It's the best looking version of Toro Feather I think we've ever had in an HRL, and it's performed beautifully today. That drum is hitting like a brick. Heck harder than a brick. I bet if that drum hit a brick, it would obliterate the brick. Yeah, you could definitely use this for, you know, brick wall demolition, you know, if you needed it. 
Don't need a jackhammer. You just need a dominant uh, featherweight from Brazil. Yeah, just bring a Toro feather from five, Brazil. It'll be fine. Four, yeah, there you go. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, we can see good spin up here from Chabada. Toro Feather, though, really eager to pop Chibata in the air, but Chibata getting under Toro in this first exchange. Nice little shower of sparks there. Wow, Chibata really hanging in here with Toro. Now you're not seeing that characteristic Toro drive style, these big arcing, uh, kind of like circling its prey. No, they're really trying to get their angles, make sure they hit that horizontal blade at the right spot where it doesn't cause too terribly much damage to their drum or their side armor. It's a really tough game to play. You can see here on the back of Chibata, though, it has a little uh, speed ramp, you know? So, like, uh, even if Toro was to get around to the back, it's a pretty heavily armored uh, back plate there on Chibata. And, uh, you know, really favors Toro going up it. Yeah, that's one of the things Rato told me is there's no real engineering or there's no electrical or uh, mechanical changes they made to Chibata. It's all armor configurations. It's all shape. It's all design changes to the actual exterior of the robot to really try to maximize its effectiveness. Chibata is looking great. I know that Rato has put in so much work uh, in between competitions to improve this design. He is really doing great here against Toro. Toro needs to turn on the gas here and really kind of show us this classic Riobot style. Is the weapon on Toro down? The weapon on Toro is down, Kyle. Yeah, that's why we're not seeing any of those gyro dancing moves that we're used to seeing from the Toro Feather team. Wow. It does okay. look like they're having a little bit of struggles with their drive, too. Shibata ahead on the points here, killing the weapon on Toro Feather. This may be uh, an... Chibata advancing here, but they can stay alive for another 50 seconds. Nice wow, hit big there hit there. Yeah. Now the winner of this match will go on to face Waddles, a super destructive horizontal. But Toro Feather is not looking great here. Down a weapon and uh, really like not showing the aggression that you're looking for. Chibata landing a grinding hit there. 25 seconds left. Wow. This may be the last 20 seconds uh, of the year for Toro Feather here at NHRL. Shibata could be advancing here with a judge's decision. Wow, they've both escaped the count out. They will take this one to the judges, and it may be Rato and Shibata. We'll have to find out what the judges have to say, but I'd say that's a pretty safe bet there, Luke. I love you the know, new kit on the Chibata team. Yeah, they look great. And also, I, I just noticed this. Rato is doing this in a full rat mask and sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, his view is obscured and it's uh, UV safe. <laughs> <laughs> just in case you got to fight outside or something, you know? Wow. Okay. All right, so... We do have a split judge's decision for the previous fight, and it just came in split, but in favor of Kablooey Tango, which will move on into the tournament and face Jameson Go and Megatron in the next round. Let's go upstairs and talk to Sam. Sam, how's it going up there? Oh, hi, Sam. All right, hello. I am here with Kevin Milcheski in the pits, who's uh, been on a, quite a run today so far, and a bit of a house bot bully. What do you have to say about that, Kevin? You know, they're in the arena, they're fair game. All right, fair game, that's true. And uh, it takes some decent driving to be a house bot bully, and that's why this year you have won the Sparky Award for best driver. Oh my God, no. This is amazing. <laughs> yes, holy cow. I was not expecting that. 
Um, well, you've earned it. You've really shown that you got what it takes to not only bully your opponents, the house bots, um, you, you've just got it. And so congratulations and enjoy the trophy and the 10K, I believe, for a charity of your choice. Absolutely, thank you so much. This is unbelievable. Did not expect this. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, wow, congratulations here, to winning Kevin. Best Driver of the Year. Well deserved. Fantastic. Now, that was an incredibly competitive, sparky, uh, uh, like, nomination class. There yes, are it a was. lot of very good uh, drivers here in this sport. Kevin, though, showing exactly why he's the top driver. Yeah. Coming up with some pretty innovative uh, drive strategies here this year, killing multiple Brazilians in his last competition to take home a golden dumpster. Winning fights and not only that, but yes, earning a golden dumpster yeah. with not even just a non-kinetic energy weapon, but after his actual weapon, his lifter, got thrown off of the bot entirely, still yeah. winning the fights just based off of his driving prowess alone. Kevin, well deserved. I cannot wait to see what he does with that $10,000 of charity money i that is just so heartwarming to see how excited and happy he was to earn that I'm it is surprised. a tough tough field to earn yeah. that award in so yes well deserved for kevin that was amazing fantastic now we do have an update on our last fight uh the one that we just saw between the two brazilians the winner of that fight by unanimous judges decision was Rato and Chibata. Now, well Chibata earned. advancing to face Waddles in round two. Fantastic work there, Chibata. Okay. Wow. wow. Now, Waddles is finally actually a, uh, a modular robot. They have the vertical module working. So if you were to face Chibata in the next round and you were Waddles, would you run that vertical or would you run that horizontal as horizontal, far as your module? Horizontal all day long. Really? You want that horizontal on horizontal Beyblade action going on? Yeah, absolutely. Waddles has had just had great performance. You know, it really comes down to reliability. Yeah. You know, round two of the finals is not the time to run the weapon that we've seen once before this year, right? right. Um, you know, like they have defeated tons and tons of opponents with that horizontal. And and uh, horizontal against horizontal, at least you're going to that fight with even footing. And, um, you know, like we've seen Chibata, it's a very tough robot. Waddle's going to have to bring it here to, uh, to really advance. Yeah, absolutely. I do think that Chibata has a very good chance of progressing past Waddle's if they play their cards right. But then again, Brian Boxel, not somebody to underestimate. Absolutely. That is a vicious bot. All right, let's check in here uh, in, up in the pits with Lindsay and more Super Chats. Hello, Lindsay. Kyle, hello. Oh, there I am. Uh, all right. We, we have a bunch of super chats here to get through, so let's get to it. All right. Uh, they're not all about Chibata, but some of them are. Uh, the first one here is from Quest Williams, who I think is maybe Droopy's biggest fan here. Um, uh, bring out the sad bots. Bring out Droopy. Booty Brigade. Big fan. Uh, obviously, Booty Brigade has qualified. They've moved on, uh, going to a no today so far. So uh, hopefully we see them soon. But Quest Williams has a follow-up here. Oh, okay. Uh, judges gave Droopy the win. Uh, so he was really excited celebrating that uh, judges' I mean, decision. I wouldn't say they gave no. Droopy the win. I think Droopy earned that win for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one here is from Eric Tate. Hashtag supportive dads. He's been a, a fan of uh, all the, like, families competing here today. Uh, so have I. I love to see it. It was cool to see uh, Blackbird and Caldera. It was, you know, yeah. the, the father-son, cool. father-daughter teams. That was cool. All right, the next one here uh, is from Ellie. Team Monkfish, Renee is my hero. Uh, Monkfish uh, uh, also still in it, so looking forward to seeing how far she can get. Shh, Monkfish isn't just in it. They've got a great chance. Yeah. They're doing great today. Monkfish is dominating so today. So crushing today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go with another one. Uh, this is from Eric HF. I liked the NHRL kingpin, hashtag go Chibata. He's actually submitted this one a couple times. Eric, uh, glad we could read that one for you. Uh, another Chibata fan here, of course. Uh, next one. I'm a Chibata uh, fan. Uh, we need a sparkly <laughs> pompadour wig for Luke. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for looking out for me. I appreciate that. I'd love huh. to see that. 
You know, could we get a sparky pompadour wig for you? Oh. Like in the shape of a sparky? Oh, sparkly. Yeah. I think sparky. Uh, the last one here from UC Combat Robotics. You see, yeah. Let's go Maximizer. Let's Jake go Maximizer. So many fans from the University of Cincinnati, and they're all cheering for him today. Uh, yeah, absolutely, as they should be. Jake's having a phenomenal showing, and he's had a great year. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Kendall, who's the artist on his team yeah. earlier, and I asked her what it was like to be in an event where so many people are wearing her art as <laughs> yeah. merch. That's and she was cool. like, this is the weirdest thing to be around. I feel like I'm at like, a rock concert I had nothing to do with, and all of a sudden <laughs> everybody's wearing my art. It's, like, amazing. Um, that's a cool experience all the way around for her. Yeah. Combat Robot merch is a, uh, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I like a you lot are a of, connoisseur. Yeah, like, like a lot of super fans, all I wear now is robot <laughs> shirts. <laughs> If they started selling robot pants, I'd probably wear those, you know? My wife was actually, like, kind of organizing all the laundry earlier this week, and she was like, you know, I was trying to contain all of your kind of NHRL shirts in one place. So you would have them ready for the tournament at the sure. end of the week. And then I realized you wear them almost every Did you day. you get a lot of signatures? So there's no way that I could have, like, really put them all in one place for you because you're constantly putting them back through the laundry. It was like, they're really nice shirts. I don't know what to tell you. Every single time we do a competition, I always go home with a new NHRL shirt. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I'm just This time you're coming home with, a, like, a new jacket. Okay. Oh, my God. What is it? Uh, it is 520. You've just broken the, uh, the running joke here, Kyle. At 9 a.m., we agreed as friends that we were not going to address the sparkly jackets at all. It already got broken funnier. by Ricky. It already got broken by Ricky. So okay, all right. I, I didn't do it. It was Ricky who did it. Ricky looks like a mid-'90s uh, Eastern European ice dancer with his jacket. He looks phenomenal. Okay. I'm not saying ice dancers don't, okay? But uh, he, he somehow figured out a way to outshine all of us with his jackets. We were not supposed to talk about this. It would make it so much funnier. It would have, but also Ricky Willem's combat robotic style icon, we have to acknowledge. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he's also doubling up. Now, see, you've got, like, the black on black, black tie, black shirt. Very classy. Thank okay? you. Yes. Ricky looks like um, like he's he's running, like, a, like, an illegal, like, kind of card game or something in somebody's basement, you know? Yeah. He, I mean, the Eastern European thing kind of works in two directions yeah. there. You know, you... You got some stereotypes to, to fit right into there. So I hear you. I hear yeah. you on that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things here uh, at NHRL, especially with our little friend group, is uh, just not addressing the weird inside jokes that we come up with. Yes. You know? Um, I just find that so delightful. I believe but, it was um, the last world championship we ended up ducking, right? Just filling the set with little rubber ducks and not really acknowledging it at all. Every single shot where they came back to us, we would add a add duck. Add more ducks, and yeah. We and we didn't this was say through, anything Through multiple announcers, by the way. Like, I would leave and you would come in, but there would still be we more ducks. We had a ducks. bucket of ducks here, and we would just kind of dip in and grab a, a duck and kind of move it a little bit. Um, actually, if you take all of those, you know, and stitch them all together, it becomes kind of like a stop-motion animation. Of just more ducks, just a, a, an entire... Yes. Flock, yeah, really. moving around on the desk and yeah. everything. It's pretty great. We try to make it as weird as possible up here. Here's the thing. I mean, like, as announcers, we, we got we to gotta find ways to, uh, you know, amuse ourselves, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, announcer lore. It's the least favorite part about people's NHRL experience. But uh, I don't know. For, like, the five or six of us, it's like Groundhog Day. We got to find a way to uh, mix it up. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, it was Sparkly Jackets, and Kyle slash Ricky broke the seal on them. So It thanks, was definitely guys. Ricky. Ricky did it first. I'm well, so Ricky sorry. technically wasn't, uh, wasn't in that conversation where we're like, we're not going to address it. So. I guess that's true. Okay, it's, it's acceptable. It's not his fault. All right, okay, All right, enough of this jacket talk. Let's get into the fighting here. We've got STF here loaded into the box, facing off against Yahoo. Now, STF here run by David, uh, David Jin. Yahoo here, run by Chad New from Team Copperhead and the brand new Captain of Magnitude here. Chad is running a really interesting hurricane twisted design on his drum, inspired by, um, by the Brazilians and Sombra. And uh, Five, we're going to see four, how he goes up three, against an absolute two, sledgehammer one, in a 45-pound walker in STF. Fight. STF earlier today completely and totally dismantled Kablooey Tango to the point where that... Ba oh, nice. They actually disassembled the battery before it could catch on fire. 
Now Yahoo doing great at getting under its opponent and keeping that hurricane drum spinner running just great. STF showing the back of the robot to Yahoo. STF up against the, uh, at an angle. Now, one of the advantages of that Hurricane-style drum spinner is it gives you so many more opportunities for engagement, so many more opportunities to make an impact. And when you're facing a dominant horizontal spinner like SDF, that is critical to winning these weapon-on-weapon -weapon engagements. Now, Chad knew not afraid at all of speeding his, his robot straight into that weapon of SDF. That is showing an insane amount of bravery and confidence in your design. It's really the best and only option he has at this point. Slow down that weapon, kill that weapon, push that weapon up against the rail. And, and get here. under the bot and try to go after those drive pods. Try to get up to those feet. If you're able to chop apart or even just dismember those feet in any kind of a way so that they don't have free range of motion anymore, you're able to win this fight. Under the robot is the safest place for you if you're uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like being in the off. eye of the storm, really, in a lot of ways. Now, let's see if that spinner on Yahoo comes back. Either uh, Chad turned it off or it was killed. But STF, that spinner is not running, like, super fast either. No, I don't think it's a good idea for them to run at full speed right next to the wall like that. Now, that hurricane bar That's is down now. on Yahoo, and STF is fully spun up. So that is just relying on that wedge to deflect those blows from STF straight up. Wow. Hopefully, Yahoo's able to hold it out for the next 48 seconds of this matchup. Yahoo trying desperately to show control here. Now, I think that perhaps the weapon has come back on Yahoo. I can't really tell from this angle. Yes, the weapon is back on Yahoo. It's fully spun up. STF is at an angle. 20 seconds left here in this fight. Now, is this a pin on STF, uh, or is this a pin on Yahoo? Hard to tell at that point, yeah. Both of these weapons wow. are going. Ten seconds left. They're both escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges, and the judges will be deciding who will be advancing to round two, STF or Yahoo. Winner of this matchup will go on to face Kevin Milcheski and Red Storm in the next round. You can see Chad New hoisting little Max into the air, his five-year-old son. They flew in here yesterday from Colorado and uh, really uh, eager to see Yahoo's strong performance here in the finals. You can see Team Ribot here with STF. This is a 45-pound walking horizontal, and it is one of the most feared robots in the 30-pound weight class just because it has just min-maxed its weapon. Yeah. All right, let's check in uh, with Sam up in the pits. Hello, Sam. Hey, how's it going? For some reason, I'm up here with Corey, Calvin, and Tommy, uh, and they have actually won a Sparky Award, all three of you. Uh, believe it or not, you have won the Fight of the Year Award, as voted on by our fans. Uh, so I just want to say congratulations to all three of you, and hold on, let me grab this Sparky for you real quick. You can all talk about the experience of that fight. I'll let you guys go. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we've never fought synthesis before this, and we we're uh, really excited to. I mean, we've seen this robot do really well, and so it was just an amazing fight, and I mean, we just got cream, so I've never seen Lynx torn apart like that, and that was just amazing. That was such an awesome fight. You, did, you deserved every moment of that. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, guys, thank you so much. That fight was so amazing. It still gives me chills. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, wow. very cool. Wait, before we, before we leave this shot, can we see how the Sparky fits together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can you guys put, put the Sparky together? So there's yeah. three drivers, and we <laughs> made this into a, a, uh, might have, uh, into a, into a three part award here. Oh my God. Here we go. All right, we got to rearrange Tommy. 
We got to put him over there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, and then we got to put him over there. Okay. I see. Yep. And then those guys go th there. It is. There wow. It is. Here we go. Rock and sock em robots. You can see that the winner here is in Beautiful. blue. And uh, yeah, that is fantastic. Now, um, Tommy and Calvin and Corey taking home hardware here and uh, really fantastic winning fight of the year. That was an absolutely electrifying fight. It's one that I will never forget. One of the best combat robot fights of all time. Absolutely, and also bringing home $10,000 in STEM charity money for the, for the charity of their choice. Gotta love that. Also, we have an update for you. We have a judge's decision. It was unanimous okay. for Yahoo in that last fight. Wow, okay. Absolutely, so Yahoo will be moving on. They will be facing Red Storm in the next round, but unfortunately, STF Save the Frogs will be going home. All right, let's go over here to Cage 4. We can see Eva facing off against Vorion. Now, uh, if I zoom in with my super special eyes, it looks like Eva might Five, be running a heavy four, plow again. Three, two, it is their one, most successful configuration five, throughout the day today. Fight. It might also be the only one working. Whoa, Vorion wow. coming in immediately being aggressive, hitting that side panel and slamming directly to the back panel. Vorian's forks really making quick work of that heavy plow on the front of Eva. Now this is a very wicked wedge. Oh, now there's a fire on Eva. Yeah, that's not good. Remy de Guzman here with his powered lifter here. His Wicked Wedge inspired powered lifter, and uh, oh my god, it's doing the thing. Yeah, the thing has been engaged, and it doesn't look like they're able to get out of it in any way, shape, or form. They're trying to get the unstick from Flo. Flo is really struggling to be able to do so without just applying way too much force. Now, Brandon wisely is hanging back and coming in here to re engage. Now, we saw a fire earlier with Eva. Now, two of those wheels are stuck up in the air. And Eva just it looks like that lifter is stuck in that position. The fire may have taken out the lifting Ooh, mechanism. Oh, nasty hit there from Boreon. This Wicked Wedge configuration. Wicked Wedge is one of my favorite robots. It's a very shovey, dominating robot. Great drive. And um, that lifter is now its Achilles heel here in this fight. Wow. Brandon Bennett Young again oh. tipping his opponent uh, into that compromising position. Brandon is celebrating. Vorion doing a little dance there in the center. It looks like this will be a count out. The last fight of the season for Eva. Yeah, for the uninitiated, each robot gets one unstick tap from the house spot. That unstick has been used up, and therefore we now have a tap out. That means your next round will be Vorion versus, versus Emulsifier. Wow. A lot of firepower in that fight. Brandon does have a full copy of Orion back in the pits that he is probably going to go get prepped for that matchup, but that's going to be a lot of explosive hits if all goes well. Now, Vorion is Brandon's last robot in the field. He started the day with three 30-pounders that he had qualified. Phenomenon eliminated. Fracas eliminated. Vorion is his last chance. However, he's advanced here um, and uh, facing off against one of the scariest birds in the field in Emulsifier. Now, when, I, sp here at when I spoke fight. to Brandon yesterday, he did say Vorion was his best and greatest hope for winning a golden breath today. These matchups are definitely showing that pedigree of this bot. It is the pinnacle of all of the design experience that yeah. Brandon has earned at this competition over the past four years. Vorion is essentially Phenomenon version two. He's yeah. had great success with Phenomenon, and Vorion is really the upgraded version of that. New internals, new uh, kind of like drive platform, and um, it is no reason, you know, it's not a surprise that uh, Phenomenon version two has advanced beyond Phenomenon version one. Yeah. 
Very cool. I love to see Brandon just having success, and it's cool that he has advanced into the bracket and is advancing to round two. Won his first ever gold dumpster this year back in August. Um, very proud of him. He's put in a lot of great work. And turns out he's a really good podcast host in a pinch. Yeah, that's true. Isn't Not in nice? a pinch. I mean, he's fantastic as a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I just mean in a pinch, like we asked him and he showed up literally like the next week and was like, yeah, all right, let's do this. Yeah. Um, all right, let's take a look here at the bracket. Now, we have completed round one of the 30-pound bracket and we are advancing to round two. Megatron, the number one ranked 30-pounder, will face off against the number two ranked Kablooey Tango. Only one of them will advance. Redstorm taking on Yahoo, Emulsifier, and Vor Orion matching up and Waddle spaced off against our final Brazilian in the 30s, Shibata. Now, uh, it is wild that uh, only four of these robots are going to advance to the semifinals. For each of these robots, there are only three fights left before we crown a Golden Brett winner in the 30s. At this point, it could be anybody's game, but it's probably going to be Jameson Goes. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, these, these are some fantastic fights. Jameson has a tough road to get there. These three, next three fights, whoever is going to fight them, it is going to be tough. So next matchup, Kablooey Tango. Yep. Big flat top. And a weapon that really can't get to anything vital on there on, uh, Megatron. on Megatron, unless they get off to the side, which, by the way, that means outdriving <gasps> Jameson Go. It's tough to do. It's very tough to do. After that, you're talking about either a Red Storm or Yahoo, both bots that are pretty optimized to be beaten by a bot like Megatron. Yeah. That puts them right into the finals. Now, uh, we're going to go into our 12-pound uh, fights here, but let's take a look here at the bracket. Now, uh, just like before, we have our lowest-ranked bots that are going to be fighting each other here in round one, advancing to fight our highest-ranked bots. Nightcrawler is going to face off against Swagmore for a little bit of vert-on-vert -vert action. Toro Jr. facing off against Buzzkill. Full Court is going to take on Disco, and Chupacabra is going to take on Torrent. Now we have two Brazilians uh, left here in the field, and uh, they are desperately hoping to advance to round two. Uh, now the winners of these round one matches will go on to fight Psycho, Huge, Maximizer, or Voxel 12, depending on what corner of the bracket you're in. These are formidable opponents, and uh, I certainly would not like to face any of them in round two at all. Wow, do you remember when 12s were like the afterthought weight class? That is not the case anymore. That is a terrifying bracket full of absolute murderers. All right, now we're going to see that very top of the bracket fight here. We've got Pete Covert and Nightcrawler facing off against... Swagmore. Swagmore here from Team Honeycracks. Five, four, three, two... One fight, robots fight. Now this is a little bit of egg beater and egg beater action. Nightcrawler here is in orange and Swagmore here in yellow. Now, uh, Nightcrawler seems to have the slightly larger weapon, but yeah. it has more gyro. Swagmore considerably more uh, mobile inside of the box. And uh, it just spent a little bit of time in the air. Now, I wow, will say a good hit from Swagmore on Nightcrawler, and Pete is stuck up against the rail. Nice shot there. Now, Cody wow. has worked a lot on optimizing the wheels on Swagmore to make them a lot grippier, a lot stickier onto the floor, and that is showing a lot of promise in this matchup. Now, Pete is delivering massive hits here in Cage 1, sending Swagmore into the air several times, and one of these weapons is spun down Swagmore. The weapon on Swagmore is down. Looks like Swagmore's really having some drivetrain issue on that bright side. Ooh, nasty. Now, it sounds like perhaps Pete has spun down his weapon slightly to reduce the gyro here. We can see, you can hear that. Oh, look, he spun it back up. Thanks, He Pete. heard you. He heard you. He's, he's <laughs> responding in real time. I wasn't going to criticize it. I think it's the smart move here. You're ahead on the points. That weapon looks absolutely twisted yeah, on Swagmore. Get your hits. Take what you need to do. Don't go full speed. Save yeah. your bot for the next fight. Now, every time that you spin up your weapon to full speed, you know, you run the risk that you're going to burn up an ESC or something like that. 
And, um, you know, spin it down a little bit. Still, like, hit these big concussive hits. But you're so far ahead on the points. You just got to drive conservatively here. Don't get stuck. And you got to think that Pete, at this point, isn't thinking about this fight all the way. He's got to also be thinking about that next round matchup against Psycho. Yes. Yeah. Our you know number what I mean? Let's save the pounder. bot a little bit here. Yeah. You got to take on Psycho after this. Yeah. 90 seconds left. There's a ton of time. And Pete, please don't die here. Pete, please don't die here. Pete. Pete. He's not dying. He's doing a cool breakdance thing. Okay. All right. Please breakdance more, Pete. Yeah. He's having <laughs> a great time. Oh, my God. Whoa. Another big hit. All right. We're like, hey, take it easy, Pete. And Pete's like, eh, you know, maybe I'll just launch them across the box one or two more times. Now, really, like, spinning your weapon at a slightly slower speed results in these big concussive kind of, like, hits up in the air. I think it's one of the fallacies of, uh, you know, fans in the sport, at least, that they say, oh, you should spin it at 900 miles an hour, right? Doesn't right, that you sound don't better? get the, the weapon as fully engaged into yeah. the body of the other bot when you do that. You, you make impact kind of at the edge of that bot. Yes. When you're, you... when you're running your, your weapon at half speed, you can really pop your opponent in the air. It's a great move when you've already killed the weapon on your opponent. Just uh, come and play with your food a little bit, Pete. Yeah, the speed issue really comes in when you're weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements. That's right. when you want the higher tip speed. All right. And it looks like the house bot is coming over here to nudge Swagmore back to life. Ten seconds left here, and uh, we are going to take this one here to the judges, but I think it is very handily a win for Pete Covert and Nightcrawler. Advancing to face Psycho in round two. Pete seems pleasantly pleased with his performance. Now, losing your weapon is a massive amount of damage, and Pete also showed great aggression and control. Yeah, and some really great uh, wins in these early weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements. I mean, not hard to do when you have dr a drum the size and power of Nightcrawler. Now, Team Honeycracked does have one more chance here in the bracket, uh, the 12 pound bracket, with Buzzkill. Now, uh, Buzzkill is a really great robot here from Liam King, and, uh, but it does look like Cody Graham and um, Swagmore will be going home early. Round one eliminated in uh, the finals. I spoke to Zoe earlier today. She said, expect a lot more 12s from Team Honeycrack next year. That is the weight class that they are really going to focus on and that they want to bring the most innovation and the most bots to next year, which I'm very excited to see. It is a smart choice. I think that if I was going to get started in the sport, you know, if you're thinking about it, 12 pounders is really the uh, the weight class to go uh, with. Absolutely. In 2024, there's still a lot of room that to run in the 12s. Yeah. You know, we see two or three super dominant designs. It is not like the Beatles or in the 30s where like things are fully developed. We're gonna go here into cage four. There's still a lot of room to you know create new legends in the 12s. Amen. Yep. So in cage four, we have Toro Jr. going up against Buzzkill. Five, four, three, two, one. There you see Junior D'Souza. Fight, robots fight. You can see Liam, this is the final Honeycracked uh, robot left here in the finals. And you can see considerably better drive from Toro. Now we saw it in Toro Feather, kind of sluggish drive, but we are not seeing that here. Look at that, Liam popping Toro Jr. onto its head. Wow, and really pursuing here with this undercutter. Yeah, you gotta say it. I mean, Buzzkill has been the most consistently successful machine from Team Honeycrack throughout the year this year. Liam is just a very consistent driver. He's very thoughtful. He's very cautious. And the bot just works. Yeah. Two minutes and 10 seconds left here in this fight. And Buzzkill really uh, staying on top of its opponent and winning these weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchanges. It's not often that you see better control and dominant driving from the horizontal. But yeah, this vert is, uh, looks like it's suffering here in the box. 
Taro Jr. just did not expect this kind of performance from Buzzkill, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I bet they thought they were going to come in here and do a little bit more bullying, but they really have been put on the defense from moment one and impact one of this fight. I think that one of the challenges here is Toro's just a lack of a front defensive package. I think that perhaps if it had a big plow on the front or something like that, and look at that, the weapon has gone down on Toro. Yeah. The, uh, the weapon off. is its defense. Its offense is its defense, and its offense it looks like it could be dead here. I feel like that that's a very valid choice. And I feel like that's a very valid choice that's becoming less and less valid as the time as the developments in this sport go on. You need to have modular attachments for your robots in 2024. Absolutely. Uh, it is not enough to say, I'm just gonna build a super reliable machine, throw it in there and just see what happens. You know, you have to have a horizontal attachment, a vertical attachment. Uh, you've got to put some of your weight into um, into your armor package in these kind of modular modular attachments. Yeah, it can't just be about different driving strategies. You have to have different components on the bot to just make those strategies be effective. Now, it's very silent in the box. Both of these weapons have gone down. I wonder if Buzzkill's weapon is dead or if Liam has just turned it off. Yeah, he could just turn it on in the last 15 seconds to show the judges that it's working and maybe save it. I mean, it wouldn't be such a bad idea. Yeah, okay, it's 15 seconds. Let's see it, Liam. Nope, that weapon's dead, Kyle. That oh is my god, Kyle! There it is. You called it, Kyle! Listen, wow. he's got to face huge in the next round. It's probably not a bad idea to save a little bit of that juice. That weapon that. came right back. He wanted to show the judges that it's still running. Liam, wow, a little bit of misdirection. I love it. As we send it to the judges, that is a very conservative, interesting drive choice. That is, uh, that's a move we've seen from Liam in the past. Save that weapon. You got more, you more to do with it. You got more to see with it. Uh, let's just not use it when we don't need to. I feel like you see the personality of the drivers and the builders come out in this sport. Especially like uh, towards the end of the season like this, you've seen their kind of development throughout the season, what strategies they've really identified with. Yeah. Liam definitely has like zoned in on a couple of different key strategies that work really, really well for his bot. And it's really cool to see him just kind of perfect those as time goes on. He has the most successful bot with Team Honeycracked right now, but not by much. You know what I mean? That team just overall has improved exponentially this year. Yeah. Now we do have an update from our previous match, Nightcrawler versus Swagmore. The winner by unanimous judges' decision was Pete Covert and Nightcrawler. Congratulations. We'll go on to face Jameson Go and Psycho in oh, round two. Horrible prize to win from winning that fight, but okay, you know. I will say that if you're able to kill Psycho at any point in this bracket, you do open up like kind of a... Uh, commuter lane to the final like match. Yes, you know? yes. You did uh, destroy everyone's bracket predictions and you yeah. probably cost people thousands of dollars in betting money, but Kyle, you're the only person who bets on this sport. All I'm right? not legally allowed to bet on this sport. Thank you I very you much. Texting. I see you texting. You're, you're, you're texting your bookie. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying. I'm texting my family. They're out there in the audience right oh, now. Oh, wow. Kyle's entire family came. I mean, give him a round of applause for the crosses. Yeah, nice? there we go. Yeah. yeah, supportive right, so family. Hashtag supportive family. Hashtag supportive family. It's nice, right? There you go. All right. <laughs> Let's check in uh, with Lindsay upstairs in the pits. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. I am so happy to see how many people are downstairs cheering. Uh, that's so cool. Um, all right, I have some super chats for you. And the first one here is from Heinous Hiccup. Uh, as a what person. a name. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of hiccups, so I kind of relate to this. <laughs> um, but they say the announcers and hosts look all amazing tonight. Wow, you know what, you know what Heinous Thank Hiccup? You. Thank you for that. But also, we look fabulous every night. Thank yeah, you very you much. <laughs> I mean, we, we are looking especially <laughs> fabulous tonight. That That is true, Heinous Hiccup. Yeah. That is great. Thank you so much. I'll take the compliment. Yeah. Um, all right. The next one here is from uh, Wagner Braga. The final will be Brazilian Chabada versus Bubalu. Champion Chabada. And then a bunch of hashtags. Manda Braza, of course, Racho's dad, Team Brazil, BR, 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 which I have been told is Brazil. Um, however, I don't think Yubalu uh, will be making it to the uh, final because I don't believe they're in it anymore. 
Yes, Jubilee was eliminated yeah. round one of uh, of the of the the bracket. Oh, J sounds or Y sounds in Portuguese, just FYI. Yubalu <laughs> was <Yubaloo>. eliminated. <laughs> all, right, all right, we've got one more, and it's from Quest Williams oh. coming after Wagner Braga. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. The final will be Droopy versus Booty Brigade, who will then go on to defeat <laughs> the 30 pound champion. Speaking of people who have money and betting on these fights, I'm pretty sure Quest Williams is, you know, maybe doing something yeah. illicit there. I'm that guy has question. a bookie, I'll tell yeah. you what. That is yeah. a special side now, is bet. That, is that Twin Beast Wagner? No, that's Wagner Prestes. Oh, that's right, that's yeah. right. All right. There's just There's a, lot a lot of, of Wagners here. Hanging out over there in Brazil. Interesting. I wonder how that happened. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, all right, good. I can see that we've loaded into cage one, and uh, we, are, we are loading in some Brazilians here. And uh, that is very exciting. I wonder if cage one is where we're going to go next. I can see we're loading in Chupacabra and Torrent. Now, Chupacabra here is our miniature black dragon here, run by the black dragon team, Team Warrior, facing off against Torrent and Donald Sung. Now, uh, fun fact, my favorite fact about Donald, he was college roommates with Jameson Go at Georgia Tech over a decade ago. Now, they've both gone on to become engineers, fantastic engineers um, in their careers. Donald Sung works for Meta on uh, as a mechanical engineer on the VR project. So if you enjoy, you know, uh, the, uh, the quest, is that right? The Quest 2? Is that the, uh, is that the, the name of it? Oculus Quest? Is I think right? that is. I think they're even on to the Quest 3 now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're enjoying that uh, product, uh, Donald Sung works on it, so that's pretty cool. It's uh, the favorite project of, uh, of the guy who runs Meta, you know? Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. He loves it. Yeah, exactly. He loves it almost as much as he likes Sweet Baby Ray's. Okay, now we just heard uh, an update on our last fight. We had a unanimous judge's decision in favor of Buzzkill, killing Toro Jr. and advancing to round two, where they will face off against Huge. Fantastic work there, Liam. Now Chupacabra facing off against Torrent. This is our last Brazilian in the 12 pounds and uh, in the 12 pound weight class, but Chupacabra is a fantastic 12 pounder. This is a very balanced, brutal machine and uh, facing off against Torrent, which I, I'm gonna say Torrent is kind of like a plucky underdog in this fight, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that that is an accurate way of describing it. No shame to Donald. No. He's built an amazing robot and the fact that he's been out five, of the sport for like 10 four, years, three, showed up with Torrent and Torrential two, and has done as well one, as he has is amazing. Fight. Robots fight. But you're going up against Zupacabra, which is like one of the scariest bots that we have ever seen from Brazil. Oh, wow, a good nice. weapon on weapon hits. These are two incredibly fast weapons here. Oh, another big hit. Torrent getting sent up into the lights. One of the things you cannot discount about Zupacabra is Enrique Oliveira and his dominant driving skills. The guy is just so precise. Oh. And his ability to use his gyroscopic precession to really control his direction is amazing. Wow, these are huge hits, and both of these robots are testing the edges of the cages. Yeah, they are. And it looks like we do have a lack of movement now. From Oh, there we go. Torrent, Torrent is back in the game. Wow. Now That's we are seeing a lot of smoke. smoking from Chupacabra. That's not what you want to see, and that looks like a lot of smoke. That could be lipo. That could be some sort of battery damage just to see that much smoke pouring out. Well, I don't know. It's starting to dissipate now. That might be a speed controller then. We're not sure. And it's still coming. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like, that smoke is pretty heavy. Like, typically when you see heavy smoke, it is usually a lipo fire. Yeah. But we're not seeing flames yet. No, I it's just say. persistent smoke. Wow, Torres tipping the that robot up system. against the uh, the rail. And thank goodness for the air pressure, the negative air pressure system within the box, sucking all of that nauseous fumes out so that our audience is safe. Yeah, you can see that heavy smoke. That is typically like the smoke that you see from yeah. a lipo fire. 
Yeah, and lithium polymer smoke is, uh, it's, it's not great. You don't, you shouldn't breathe that. No, it's awful. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Wow. We do have safety measures in place for dealing with the bot that is on fire, especially with a lipo situation happening. So that will probably be implemented after this fight, but both bots are moving. The fight continues. Now, Black Dragon is famous for compartmentalizing the inside of that robot so that it can lose part of its drive. It can lose one of its weapon motors and it continues to run. We've seen that before. We've seen fiery finishes for Black Dragon and Chupacabra looks like it's just as tough. Well, they are the uh, the original design inspiration for the Black Dragon robot. And yes, that Titanic style separation of the components inside is very crucial to that design. Now we have a super powerful negative air pressure system in each one of these cages. Oh, and look at this. Crash Fest is patting Chupacabra here to death. Aggressive tapping here, Kyle. Very aggressive. And a really good pin on their account as well. The negative air pressure system is capable of sucking all of the air out of this box. Now, if you're sitting cage side here, you're going to watch a really amazing magic trick. We're going to suck all of this lipo smoke, I believe it's lipo smoke, out of the building. You're going to see cage one uh, very quickly here uh, just regain its clarity, which is really, really a pretty cool little engineering trick. Now, uh, Torrent's weapon also went down, but uh, it didn't go down in a burst of flames. So it looks like perhaps uh, damage is going to go to Torrent. And uh, we did take this to the judges, so the judges are really going to be deciding who advances to round two. The winner of this fight is going to face off against Voxel 12. Yikes. It's a tough, tough match. Yeah, the judges are going to have a little bit of a hard time with that one. That was a great back and forth between these two competitors. But you're right. There was no fire in the side of Torrent. So oof, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, once again, Robert Rund showing up at this tournament. Yeah, for comedic effects there right at the end. It's pretty great. All right, let's take a look here at this replay. We saw massive concussive hits. Uh, robots hitting the uh, hitting the ceiling. Robots hitting the middle of the Lexan. Wow, that was a roofing. And uh, Torrent just getting the better of some of these exchanges and finally catching its opponent on fire. Now, uh, you know, if you see an ESC, maybe you burnt it out yourself. When you see a lipo fire, it's typically your opponent Pierce that lipo for you. Yeah. Yeah, very little lipo damage that could be self-imposed in that case. So there wow. we can oh, see the flame suppression go. system taking the, the heat kind of off of that lipo battery. Now, it will not stop the fire, but it will slow it down enough that a human could reach in there and grab it and throw it immediately into a sand-filled trash can so it can be disposed of outside where it can then continue to burn and kind of burn itself out, burn all of the lithium polymer out of the system, out of harm's way, away from human lungs, away from human bodies. Now, this is a really cool uh, addition for all of our big box house bots. They all have fire extinguishers inside of them and cameras. You can see a bot's eye view of the action uh, from the camera. And uh, you can also see these uh, very cool fire suppression systems. Now, I can see that Rob here is uh, wearing the space band suit. He's going to go in there and blast Chupacabra. This is not the best look that you want as you send it to the judges. Yeah, your, uh, no, your you're robot right. being blasted, you know. You're right. But this CO2 is what we have to do to get this bot safely outside to let it finish burning out the rest of the way. Lipo fires have a tendency to burn all the way unless you can stop them. So uh, there's, there is a possibility. There's that almost as long as there's oxygen in the environment, there's yeah. like kind of no way to stop it. Now it's uh, crazy. The uh, really like we throw it into the gonk droid, we take it outside, and uh, we just allow it to sit out there and see if it's gonna reignite. Now this is uh, you know Luke's favorite bot to win the 12 pound division. This is yep. full court. Uh, oh, yeah. They'll be facing off against a classic 12 pound competitor from even before NHRL times in Five, Disco. Four. Three, the Durfler brothers two, here on one side of the one, box running Disco five, facing off against Coleman, fight. Christie, and Full Court. Full Court not running a minibot this time around, just going in full war all by wow. themselves. 
Disco spending a considerable amount of time on its head, and now it's stuck up on the rail. Now, will Coleman go in there and lift with those just absolutely fearsome lifting arms there on full court? Waggle, waggle sticks? No, no, those are lifters, Kyle. This is a powerful lifter that we have here. This is uh, not a weapon in name only, Kyle. Why no? This is a fearsome robot. I'm pretty sure it's a wino, but you know, they, that's what they do. They have winos. That's the, the whole thing about this bot. Now, uh, these super sharp forks are finding the seams in the floor here. Look at this, these little fingers. They're just uh, tapping out a little beat. There you go. Aggressive tapping. Wow, that Aggressive is definitely tapping. an active weapon, Kyle. It's actively, aggressively tapping Disco. It's letting Disco know, like, hey, don't mess with me. <laughs> I'll poke your chest and tell you how it is. All right, a minute 50 left here in this fight, and Disco has got to rack up damage points here. That's what they're built for, and they've got to do something here because they are being controlled and corralled by Full Court and Coleman Christie. Now, the ground game is how Full Court really wins, but that does mean they've got a greater chance, so many chances with all those forks, of getting caught up on the plywood. And you can see he's kind of driving at a diagonal angle to those plywood seams to avoid that going forward. Wow. Disco really just being controlled, manhandled here in this fight. Pushed up against the rail, this long, uh, bendy robot here in full court. And the Durflers trying to mount some kind of credible offense here in the last 50 seconds. Okay. Nice hit there from Disco. Good yeah, that was there. good. And Disco not trying to be fancy, just going full on in at the front of the robot. I think that might be the best strategy for a bot like Full Court. You know, you want to hit those drive pods. They look Here juicy, but you're not going to get them. Just go hit the front, smack them in the air. 25 seconds left here in this fight. This is Full Court's opportunity to land yet another good pin. Instead, high centering Disco, pulling those uh, wheels up off the ground. And the Durflers there, just uh, spinning helplessly that weapon. So we enter the last 10 seconds of this fight. We're going to take this one to the judges. And the judges will decide who is advancing to round two to face Maximizer. Doing a little victory dance at the end because their weapon was so spectacular. It is fearsome, Kyle. Yeah, they're getting bad. But... You can see Coleman Christie there standing cage side with Nate Franklin, uh, the driver of Thunderchild. Didn't see Thunderchild though in this match. No, they forego, they forewent uh, Thunderchild for those metal forks, I believe, this time around. So they had a little bit better ground game. Good. All right, so we do okay. have a previous fight judge's decision to announce for you. Here we go. And there you go, unanimous judge's decision for Torrent. Why? Probably because they didn't end the fight on fire. Yes, yeah. Now we're finally going to be pulling Chupacabra out of the box here. I can see it going into the Gonk Droid. Yep. And we're going to be rushing that out of the building. The it's going to, Gonk uh, Droid, for non-Star Wars fans, is what we use, the, the kind of rolling trash can full of sand that we use to transport these bots that are on fire. In the meantime, though, we're going to look at our 12-pound bracket, which is shaping up to be quite an event. So we have... Beetle weights. Oh, sorry. Is this Beetles? Wait, what? Wait a second. I see Waddles up there. No, 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 no. There we go. There now we, go. we have Beetles. We're going to yeah, work yeah, yeah. on that graphic that a little bit. That was a 12-pound bracket with Beetle weights. It was a very strange thing going on. We didn't understand. Anyway, okay. we'll get to that. back to that later. Okay. All right. Very good. Now, uh, I can see that the fire marshal has come down, and uh, they are moving people away from this cage for safety reasons because well, we've yeah. got a flamethrower in cage three. Now, this is Clyde, a very hot flamethrower control bot facing off against Droopy. Yeah. Tommy Wong and Droopy. Now, control bots are a bit of a unique challenge for Droopy. Yeah. If they're able to get under him, they could possibly slam him against the wall and cause some massive damage. But um, that's if they can get under him. 
Right, yeah. You know, uh, Juby is wide enough that uh, it may be able to attack these kind of outer uh, structures like yeah. on the outside of Clyde. And uh, it is a really tough robot. I don't think that that fire is going to be able to do anything to Juby. Not at all, it's, no. Uh, its internals are really safely ensconced inside of the body of the Maybe robot. Maybe four, four or so versions of Droopy, flames could be a problem, but this version of Droopy, it's just, there's, there's not a whole lot. You if, can do there. If I am a, if I'm Gabriel Brown here with Clyde, I think that my strategy is going to be box rush, shovey, try and push Drupy yeah, up pin against and the flame, rail if you possibly can. Land as many pins as possible. You have to have a lot of faith in uh, you know your armor package. Yeah. Uh, Clyde is running great, really heavy, chunky forks. Yep. You know, so um, you've got to just kind of go in there and trust that, uh, that you've built a tough robot. Yeah, you've you've got to stop those weapons from going. Now, hold on. This just in. We have a judge's decision. No, we don't. Maybe we do. Wow. We've ah, got a split wow. judge's decision in favor of Full Court and Coleman Christie staying alive, eliminating Disco here in round one. Now, uh, Full Court will advance to face Maximizer and Jake Hoffman. We will see if Jake can mount a credible defense against Full Court. And that would be the end of our first round fights for the 12 pound bracket. So the quarterfinals has been well shaped out now, but we are going to go into cage three. There you can see Coleman. Oh, sorry, Gabe and his brother Alex. Currently students at WPI, or currently a student at WPI, but he's from Austin, Texas. Five, four, he's got an impressive three, 18 and 11 record two, before coming to this one. event. Fight, robots fight. But this is Droopy. A bot by Tommy Wong. And quite frankly, Droopy is death, destruction incarnate, and the destroyer of worlds. Droopy looks like it's uh, three baked potatoes, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, taped together. Look at this thing. It looks like a, one of those uh, popcorn, you know, like, there oh my go. God, there look at this. Fire and flame from Clyde. Wow, that's a full 10 second fiery pin from Clyde on Troopy. Wow, there's that thermal cam shot. Check out all of the heat coming off of the front of Clyde. And it looks like Tommy's really having a hard time getting his bearings with all that flame in the box. One of the factors we don't talk about much is how distracting that is. Juby is really having trouble spinning up its weapons completely. Clyde just staying on top of its opponent, shoving it into, uh, into the rail here. But this is how Drupal gains space. It flops itself kind of around the box before it kind of lands far away from the opponent and it's able to get back up to speed. But it looks like something is dangling on Droopy. Wow. Gabe doing a phenomenal job really maintaining control over this fight, following Droopy in every direction it kind of flops into. Chaotic here for Droopy as it tries to get away from Clyde, but Clyde is staying on top of its opponent, just ready to re-engage and landing another good, clean 10-second pin. It does look like the flames are still working, though a little bit less prominent at that point, but still able to put quite a bit of heat on a particular location on Droopy. Droopy got back up to speed, though. This is the most speed we've seen from Droopy so far in this fight. Boom, nice hit there from Droopy, knocking Gabe back into the corner. Clyde really struggling to get back out, but they were able to get main, maintain control again over Droopy. Some piece just got flown off of Clyde after that major impact there. And you can see the heat disparity between Droopy and Clyde at this point. So much heat just coming off the front of Clyde. That bot is lit up. 
Looks like they're preserving a little bit of flame, trying to wait for another pin, but we are down to the last eight seconds of this matchup. In a judge's decision, I don't know how well this is going to favor Droopy. And there we go. This will go to a judge's decision. That is quite possibly the best case scenario for Clyde. Really impressive. So we'll have to wait and see what Gabe has to say. So as you can see, Clyde doing a phenomenal job with the pin and stick and burn. Their primary strategy as a robot. They did not give Droopy a lot of opportunities to get up to speed for the first two and a half minutes of this fight, really. Very difficult thing to do. Droopy spins up incredibly fast, and just by the nature of their weapon, Droopy kind of bounces around the box and usually is able to land far away from their opponent, so they're able to get back up to speed. But no opportunity to do that. Gabe did a phenomenal job staying on top of him, and Tommy had a great time. Kind of doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to him. I heard fire, so I showed up. I appreciate that that is what draws you out. Just a little Moth bit of chaos. To a flame. And a little bit of flame. Yeah. And there you are. That was a fantastic match. It I, really was. I, and, it, and you're right in saying that is basically the best case scenario. For, for Clyde? Clyde, yeah. It nailed it. I mean, really did everything it wanted to do. Yeah, perfect match uh, for them. Being able to position yourself near where your opponent is going to land when it's just frantically flailing about the arena. That is some, like, precognition predictive powers that are very difficult to very master. Very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. And uh, it worked out great for him. I mean, we do have to wait for the judge's decision, but that seemed like a masterful uh, No matter performance. what the judges say, Gabe drove an amazing match up there, going up against former world champion Droopy, the destroyer of worlds. Mm -hmm. That's just a, a best case scenario yeah. for them. Fantastic. Um, either way, we know Tommy Wong had a great time. Yeah. That guy just has a great time. I think he's a good time machine. Literally cannot not have fun in a robot combat scenario. Like, that's just kind of where he's at. That, that's a good place to be. I mean, what, once you take home the world championship, it's all kind of gravy. Yeah. Until he's, you want another world championship. He has won another. a golden dumpster this year, which yeah. is amazing. Like, everybody was like, hey, what's Droopy going to do? They, this is the first yeah, time they've been back in, like, two and a half years. Uh, what did they do? They want to go. They immediately won everything. Yeah, that's that's just kind of their thing. Uh, this is a whole different ball game, though. They're up against the top-notch players. Speaking of top-notch, here's our bracket as we are sitting right now. Boy, this is a stacked uh, bracket. Silent Spring, Supreme Ruler, Voxel, and Fully Defined have already made it uh, into that quarterfinal uh, matchup. Uh, Caldera and Hot Wings are going to duke it out for who fights Silent Spring. Yep. Clyde and Droopy just duked it out. We're going to see who faces Supreme Ruler momentarily. Jetlag and Monkfish figuring out who's going to go up against Voxel. And fully defined, uh, who are the last two there? Booty Brigade and Kickstart? That is correct. And we, by the way, we do have a unanimous judge's decision that just came in, unsurprisingly, for Controlled Firebot. Clyde. Congratulations to Gabe and Clyde. Well-earned victory for them. Some of the best driving we have seen today. And, nice and, job. And don't forget, just a year or two ago, the idea of bringing a flame-based robot to the championship. Oh, it was a joke. It basically was, yeah. Yeah, no, it was like, oh, flames are fun. Yeah. We like them. We're glad they're here. Yeah, they, they make Bless more... your heart, Kyle. You yeah. brought a flame robot? Yeah, they, they're entertaining. That's not the case anymore. A flamethrower no. is an incredibly effective weapon, and especially at the three-pound weight class. We have seen bots literally melt to the floor Five. based on these flamethrowers yeah. and how powerful they're three. getting at this point. Reduced to Two. ash and Five. cinders. Five. Now, speaking of heat-based weapons, this is Caldera versus Hot Wings, two spicy robots, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, Caldera, one of the most powerful horizontal spinners in the three-pound weight class, but Hot Wings is something truly unique. It is two heating elements on two actuated arms. They give you the most spicy hug you would ever have in your entire life. They literally burn the sides of robots to pieces. 
And right now, facing off against Caldera, which is actually a great matchup for them. They are really positioned well to handle a horizontal spinner like Caldera. Yeah, especially with the way Hot Wings is constructed. So many of these wide control bots are just made to take abuse. Uh, oh, wow, look at the mini bot action getting in there, Kyle. Yeah, Brian is operating the uh, the control bot for the mini bot for his dad's Caldera. Glenn is an amazing driver. But I got to say, that pinch hitter of Brian coming in to, to do the control bot action for him really comes in clutch so often in these fights. Now Hot Wings really needs to get away from that mini bot so they can get in and do exactly this. Yes, hold on to the sides of Caldera and melt through that side armor. Try to melt into the wheels and limit the mobility of Caldera moving forward. And they are doing a uh, pretty wonderful job at it. Both of these robots actually playing to their strengths. Uh, neither of them giving up a lot of ground. Truth. And that mini bot really is wow. a huge deciding factor for Caldera. I think this match would be a lot more even or maybe even weighted towards Hot Wings if not for the mini bot's help in this action. Nice job and nice driving from Brian. Oh, interesting strategy there. Hot Wings is starting to be a little more aggressive with how it deploys those, uh, well, those Hot Wings. That's what you got to do, especially this late in the match. One minute remaining, like 55 seconds is all you've got. You got to show those judges if it goes to the judges that you were being aggressive and that you were trying to implement that weapon as much as possible. I will say both of these robots still looking pretty spry. Oh, there, there we it go. Is. That's There's what you that want to see from Hot Wings. The pin and the hug, the spiciest hug in the game. Oh, he's hugging both of them, too. That's right. That's exactly what he needed to do. And there Fantastic. is another big hug on Caldera. It's hard to see if those hugs are actually burning, but they are absolutely scoring aggression and control points. Yeah, really, damage is just kind of an added bonus to a bot like Hot Wings. It's true. We are going to go to a judge's decision as the clock winds down. Uh, Hot Wings was a bit of a disadvantage for some of that fight, but they have come back strong. This is anyone's game, folks. Yeah, there was a, quite a bit of back and forth at the beginning. And then I'd say there was a lot of advantage to Caldera in the middle, but right at those last 40, 14 seconds, 15 seconds, Hot Wings was really showing their ability to drive and control a fight. And that hug on both the mini bot and the main bot was really one of the greatest things to show a judge at the end of that fight. Absolutely. Eli Davis feeling pretty happy about that performance. That was a tough one all the way around. Anytime you have to face Caldera, it's a challenge. Man, I am looking here from a distance at the damage done to Hot Wings. It's, it's just superficial, but it looks dramatic. Yeah. You know, it, when you get these large robots that have a big plastic chassis, uh, the, the damage, even if it's not structural, just looks intimidating. Yeah. It looks like you've been through, you know, a war and back. Yeah, but everything worked. Everything was totally functional at the end of that fight. That's exactly what we wanted to show the judges. And superficial damage, I do feel like, has weighted a little bit less for them in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. On, on the flip side, getting away from superficial damage, uh, it's interesting to talk about the damage that happened or didn't happen in the Droopy Clyde matchup. Uh, you yeah. know, we got, the, we got the results. It's really unusual for a golden dumpster winner uh, to be taken out, not even in the finals, but, uh, you know, early in the match, or kind of early in the bracket. Yep, really early in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, and then to be taken out by a fire-based robot, that's an, an immense upset. Yeah, I would say that's the biggest upset we've seen today so Certainly far. Certainly today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there we go. We do have yet another version of Droopy driving again in Cage 3 Five, with Booty Brigade. Four. Three, now, this Droopy two, is a little bit different. One, it's not quite fight. the same Robots robot, fight. but it operates under the same principle and is still not a uh, force to be trifled with. So this is Booty Brigade versus Kickstart. Booty Brigade is Lynx and a three-pound version of Droopy working in tandem Ooh. as a team robot. Huge hit. Wow. Oh, I think uh, Lynx came out on the better end of those two hits there. 
Wow, that is a lot of damage to kickstart in a short period of time. Kickstart is a new robot for this year. They placed second back in the January tournament. Wow, that minibot really coming into play strongly here. Uh, Droopy, not so much, or, or Tiny Droop. No, Tiny Droopy is really more of an arena hazard. Absolutely. Oh, I see some belt is yeah, now missing Yeah, that's from not Kickstart. good. It is on its uh, proverbial last legs here. The minibot is carrying most of the weight of the robot at this point. And it does seem like, uh, oh, there we shot. go. Lynx is really struggling to get engagement with tap that minibot. Out. We now have a tap out, and it's only safe to presume that that's, oh, wow. Ouch. Unintentional hit from Mini Droopy at the, after the tap out. But that was a tap out from Kickstart, which does mean Broody, Booty Brigade will be moving on into the next round. Yes, they certainly live on. Wow, so that means we will be seeing a fully defined versus Booty Brigade matchup in the next round. Now, we've seen uh, fully defined go up against Lynx before, and that all in and of itself has been a uh, dramatic matchup. Yeah. Uh, you throw a Droopy in the mix. That's going to be a really weird matchup. I think that's going to be a tough one for Fully Defined. Yeah, it, it, it will be. Uh, at the same time, Droopy, for whatever reason today, all of its additions have not had the kind of precise mobility uh, that has been so you know jaw-dropping and, and impressive out of a, a gyro walker yeah. like Droopy. Uh, for whatever reason in the past, it was able to walk and progress across the arena in a uh, comparatively measured way. It seems like it's... Uh, you know, bouncing off the walls today. It spends a lot more time inverted today, and I think that was an intentional choice just based on how low slung and kind of low profile a lot of their opponents were. Sure. I think that worked out in some matchups, but yeah, you do sacrifice a little bit of control, and you do sacrifice a little bit of stability when you do that. The mm -hmm. bot's designed to kind of run in one direction. Right. It can run inverted, but it's, it's not, right. the, it's it's not, not optimal. For. Yeah. All right, so we do have a judge's decision for you. So, yes, oh. that is a split judge's decision. Not a surprise that it's a split judge's decision no, for not at all. Caldera. I, and here I was thinking Hot Wings had pulled it through. You know, it was very close, and Hot Wings did have that last moment of glory, which yeah. definitely would sway a lot of judges' decisions. But I'm not surprised Caldera pulled that one out. Yeah, I think since we've tightened down uh, the guidelines for judges' decisions and what goes into a judge's decision, yeah. uh, the judges are tending to, to weigh the entire fight a little more equally, whereas in a lot of competitions, you end up with someone who weighs, you know, the last 15 seconds or At 10 compared seconds. Compared to the, the previous 245. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think yep. you're getting a much more balanced, temporarily balanced, if you will, uh, assessment of each fight from the judges these days. Yep. We're going to go to cage two. We've got another three pound fight for you. Who do we have, Kyle? Well, this here looks like it is a jet lag, and it also looks like it's a monkfish. These are two of the top competitors in the three pound division. Monkfish is a newer robot. Jet lag is a wet kit. So by you know by design, it's an older style of robot. Uh, but it still checks out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. And I mean, this is this is a dialed-in Weta kit also. Yeah, um, absolutely. Lots of modifications to this Weta kit. And the biggest modification is, of course, Lars, one of the best drivers in the sport today. Mm -hmm. what, he's 15 at this point. I think it's a lot like going to NASCAR and be like, it's a Toyota Camry. <laughs> you know, it's, well, yeah, uh, not really. It's no, no, it used to be a Toyota Camry. Now yeah. it's something completely different. And now it's in the hands of a professional precision driver. And uh, this is Monkfish. Monkfish is a shuffler with an incredibly powerful horizontal spinner. And it just looks terrified to be here. It just looks like it doesn't know why it got put into this box, why it got put into this situation, and why it has to destroy these other robots. That facial expression looks like what I would expect an actual Monkfish to react with. 
if put into a, if, a robot fighting arena. Yeah. Why am I here? What are you? Do? Well, Five, why did you do this to four, me? There's no water three, here. Two, <laughs> There's zero one. water. Fight, robots. Now, fight. something we've been really impressed oh. with today is Rachel's driving proficiency has really gone up a notch for this competition. But now she is in the arena with a true master in Lars. Let us see how her new driving prowess stacks up to Lars's experience in the arena. I mean, Rachel was just shocked to make it here last I checked. Uh, it has been such a, uh, an exp oh, wow, that is a hit. Uh, it has been such an exponential uh, growth on her part uh, to, to make it to this level of the competition. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And she's coming into this competition with the most kind of momentum, winning the Golden Dumpster at the last event right. in quite dramatic fashion, I'll tell you. I love how Monkfish moves. It's these tiny little shuffles, but it gets across that box so quickly. Wow. You're right. No, I, I hadn't been focusing on that, and I started looking deeply into the eyes of the Monkfish, and I couldn't look away. No, right? It it's was, got some terror. I was be, I'm was i caught by a, a, a siren right now. <laughs> <laughs> when you stare into the monkfish, the monkfish stares back into you. Right? And then if you get, like, kind of meta about it, you think about the fact that the monkfish is not in control of itself. It's being controlled by Rachel. Right. It just has to be there and deal with these hits and deal with this this chaos and destruction. And we say that as the monkfish face is pressed up <laughs> against the camera. <laughs> and by the way, it's been absolutely dominant all day. Oh like, yeah, it's it's lost like one match so far, I like to and think that was that's against... more horrifying. You know, it's it's one thing to be put with no no uh, autonomy into a terrible situation. It's another to be murdering your compatriots <laughs> with no say in the matter. I oh, love it. Yeah, they've really developed something that's truly just personable, marketable, and uh, terrifying yeah. in Monkfish. The, uh, I don't want to undersell it, too. The mini-bot for Monkfish has been doing exceptionally well. Oh, yeah. Huge part of their strategy. The, I, I'd say that might be one of the biggest bits of growth that we've seen this year at NHRL is the development, the exploitation, uh, I won't say perfection, but uh, the rapid growth of the mini-bot. Yeah, not really becoming more of a multi-bot configuration meta rather than a mini-bot meta. The, mi right. the mini-bot was just there to give you a weight bonus, but now people are really incorporating it into the entire strategy and design of the bot. So this one was a knockdown drag-out slugfest from the minute go. And by the way, once again, Robert Run putting his fingerprints on a matchup here at the World Championships. The man is everywhere. Kyle. He's just he's always there. He's just always there driving the minibot for Lars. So we will have to wait and see what the judges have to say about that one. I gotta tell you, I I don't know who won that one. So here we are on the replay. Yeah, there is a, a tremendous amount of good hits here. A lot of control, uh, which is amazing because neither one of these robots is, is meant to be a control robot uh, whatsoever. They don't Definitely. even like to rely on it as a backup plan. Uh, but the fact that they were able to drive in such a precise uh, and efficient way it still speaks to the driving capability yeah, quite a bit. Absolutely. Really, really impressed with Lars's driving up against such a scary component uh, opponent in Monkfish. Monkfish is a lot of scary components together. Whew. All right, so while we await the judge's decision, we wanted to tell you about something big we have coming up in December. So let's go check that out right now. Get excited for Havoc All-Stars. We've got three nights of some of the best fighting robot superstars from NHRL's past, present, and future. 
Plus, we managed to convince some of our best friends from the internet to come, like this guy. Three weight classes of 12 of the craziest robots fighting across three nights to be crowned the inaugural Havoc All-Stars champion. That's some heinous hits. That's some preposterous prizes. And oh my god, the challenges are the craziest. What more could you want? December 5th, 6th, and 7th here, right here at the House of Havoc, or streaming exclusively on YouTube from 7 to 10. Be there. I will. Man, you know, fun fact, that's just Sam doing that. It's not a recording. He, no. Anytime he's left alone, he just goes into that uh, that pitch for All Stars. Yeah, and it gets a little bit more manic and a little bit crazier every, every single time. time. Every Listen, time. I understand he's very excited about Havoc All Stars. Yeah, I would be too. It is going to be uh, a tremendous amount of fun. We're really trying to celebrate some of the most uh, entertaining aspects of NHRL. Yeah. Uh, bring that weird to the forefront, celebrate it. You gotta. It's, uh, it's part of the magic of the event. It's part of the magic of the community. And, uh, I love that we're bringing in these kind of STEM content creators from across YouTube, across the, you know, the internets, and uh, exposing them to what we do, exposing them to our weird little culture that we've developed here, mm -hmm. and hopefully kind of bringing them along for the ride a little bit. Yeah, take them into the fold. That's yeah. what we're here for. So, I am getting word, though, that we have some uh, results on our previous fight. We're going to go to, oh, it is, uh, unsurprisingly, a wow. unanimous decision for Monkfish. You can hear the crowd loves that. Rachel has been developing her driving skill a lot over the past two competitions. She has. And to take out somebody like Lars is just monumental to her record. Phenomenal job. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at our updated 30-pound bracket. We are now heavily into round two, so we're going to start it off with Megatron versus Kablooey Tango. Red Storm will be taking on Yahoo. Emulsifier will then go down to the bottom half of the bracket and take on Boreon, and then we have Waddles taking on Chibata. This is a very spicy looking bracket. We very well could end up with a Brazilian versus Megatron final or a Kablooey Tango versus Emulsifier final. It could go any which way. There is point. no robot on this list that doesn't have the chops to make it to the finals. Amen to that. Uh, there's also no robot on this list that isn't an absolute devastating hitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of damage. They are all murder machines. And speaking of murder machines, we are going to see Red Storm Five, taking on four, Yahoo three, right now. Two, one. Fight, robots. Away fight. we go. This is a rematch from earlier today. Oh, wow. Beautiful work there by Yahoo. Chad really taking advantage of that bottom plate on Red Storm, getting underneath them and just ripping them apart. Yeah, Red Storm really needs to get on a roll early in order to make this fight work for him. Or Kevin needs to get on a roll. Red, Red Storm is not a sentient being. To my knowledge. Yeah. No, no, I, I hope it's not either. That would be really scary. Yeah. Now, one of the unfortunate things about this matchup is the weight distribution on Yahoo is as such that Redstorm really needs to grab onto that front, that drum, if they want to get a suplex on them. Yeah, it it is not. F oh, speaking of suplexes, oh, so is. close. Oh, that is quite a pin. You don't expect a pin from the vertical spinner on the control bot, but here we are. Yeah, Chad is a control bot driver at heart in many, many ways. The way that he operates Yahoo, that drum is kind of an afterthought. I think we're gonna see an unstick here, Kyle. That is un- Oh! Wow, I don't think that even counts as an unstick at this point. No, it, it does, it does. It was once they're called for, oh, they you called have- they called for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have an unstick. 
Oh, and then Yahoo taking a, just a quick breather there. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if they're having some intermittent control issues there. I, or that's just, a really unfortunate time to take a break. Yeah. I mean, nice oh, lift. There's a nice lift. A good now, bit of see control. What I mean? They're able to pick them up from the back, but they're not able to get them all the way over top. You gotta hold on to that front drum if you wanna do a full flip. You wanna get the full range of motion. Still, this is exceptional driving on Kevin's part. It was a slow start, and don't get me wrong, Yahoo is still landing some serious hits in this process. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's still a dangerous robot. Oh. Just a, just a little munch. Just a little pick up. Just, 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 a, just a little pinchy uh, pinch. A little, uh, yeah, I pinch. Munch, munch, munch. <laughs> I outdrive you and I pinch you. That's what Red Storm does. Yeah, this is this whole kind of middle to latter section of this fight has been a lot of Red Storm control domination. Ooh, nice oh, and hit then there. a big hit, although Red Storm recovers very elegantly. Yeah, this will be going to the judges. A lot to go over here. A uh, very strong start from Yahoo, but the bulk of this fight uh, just dominated by Red Storm. Yeah, that was great. A really excellent driving match between two of the best drivers that we have in the sport, two of the best drivers at the competition today. Kevin Milcheski, winner of the Best Driver Award for the season. Well-earned, well-deserved. Definitely for good reason. Uh, is Red Storm the only control robot we have left in the bracket? In the 30-pound bracket, yes, indeed. They are the only control bot that we have left in that bracket. Oh boy, this is quite a matchup. We've got Kablooey Tango going up against Megatron. Kablooey Tango is running its long front Five, fork configuration. Four, uh, three, they, I don't want to say they two, have no choice, but one, it's a wise fight, move against a robot like Megatron. Uh, ooh. Nice grab there by Megatron, getting really good. Oh, and a beautiful top shot on Kablooey Tango. This is what Megatron's trying to do, trying to get those kind of front engagements and win the ground game so they can get their blade delivered to the top of Kablooey Tango. So far, though, Kablooey Tango's forks are letting it control this match. Oh, those are some big hits. I think a front fork, yes, a front fork has been removed from Megatron. Nice shot by Megatron there onto the front armor plate of Kablooey Tango. You can see Megatron is running Ow, oh, that was one of those classic Megatron pin and smacks. Letting that weapon get up to full speed before they brought it down on top of the bot. You can see Megatron is running two big uh, uh, compliant armor packages, those kind of fabric looking things. Uh, I believe that was in case Kablooey Tango decided to run inverted as an overcutter instead of an undercutter does look like that they, they were able to stick themselves kind of to the top of Kablooey Tango there. They seem to be loose now. Kablooey Tango is still spinning, uh, but one fork is definitely down and out. Yeah, both these bots looking a lot worse for the wear as we go into a minute and 39 seconds of this fight. Kablooey Tango is able Ooh, to do Ooh, that's not good. Oh yeah. Yeah, just peeled a, a huge amount of armor off the side of that robot. And then I think one of the forklets is, uh, stuck under the house spot right now. Yeah, Hard to that's tell from this not angle. great. Will Megatron be able to capitalize? And yes, they do by backing into them using the bot as a vertical spinner. That makes me curious. Is the arm not working right now? They were able to self-right with it. If you say, oh, oh, yeah, that's working. You're just, uh, just tempting him into it there, Kyle. Yeah, that was just a strategy using the, the arm as kind of a vertical spinning weapon for a moment there. I got to say, I don't want to backseat drive, but I think Kablooey Tango needs to up their aggression here. Uh, they're doing a wonderful job controlling this match, but there's a few moments they've had for, for a big hit that just haven't completed. Oh, that is a really bad place for Kablooey Tango to be. Yeah, they do seem to be somewhat teetering right now, high-centered on either a piece of themselves or uh They're high-centered on a chunk of their own fork, it does appear. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, we're that's gonna not get, good. Get fluffy into the mix, but this is gonna be hard to write them. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, Megatron's giving them a little bit of space to be self-righted as well. Interesting choice by Megatron. 15 seconds oh, left on so, the clock. It's so close to being self-righted. We'll see how long it goes. Oh, we are gonna... I can't tell if this is a count out countdown or if it's the end of the match. Either way, it does not look good for Kalui Tango. Yeah, probably the right move for Jamo to just kind of back off and let them flail all the way up until the end. Yes, victory stance by Jameson Go. That's what he likes to see. This has been a more intense J-Mo than I think I have ever seen at a tournament. And that's saying something, Kyle. J-Mo is not a, um, how shall we say, uh, laid back, easy going kind of fella? Yeah, I was something like that. <laughs> Lackadaisical, you know, head in the clouds type of guy. No, but, no. Uh, you can see here this, uh, this match was going very well for Kablooey Tango, all things considered. Once you remove one of the forks on Megatron, you are doing better than most people who fight Megatron. Yeah. Uh, both robots had taken damage, but both of them were still largely functional. Uh, just one bad hit where they ended up inverted, and that was uh, that's all she wrote for their competitive advantage. Remember, the winner of this matchup will go on to face Red Storm in the next round. Now that is an either either winner here uh, would be a really interesting matchup against Red Storm. Oh, my, Jamo, tone it down. That was a loss. No, you don't have to tone it down. So we'll await the judge's decision on this one. It seems pretty clear to me who won that I, one, but I think uh, so. we I, will await the judge's official decision. Kept it interesting, but uh, oh, speaking of keeping it interesting, Red Storm taking home the victory there. Split decision. Not surprised about the split decision, I'm honestly. I'm a little surprised. I thought it was going to go unanimously towards Red Storm. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, you know, could go either way. Yeah. All right, let's go upstairs to Lindsay. Lindsay, what you got for Hi, us? Lindsay. Hello. All right, we have uh, two super chats here from the, from the YouTube live chat. The first one is from Ian, who says, "Is Jupacabra actually Jim Carrey in the mask? Because that was smoking." <laughs> uh, I really appreciate Team Warriors' uh, commitment to driving while on fire and filling the box with smoke at any weight class. Um, I absolutely love that. Yes. And then uh, the next one is from Ann TSB. Hi to my husband, Ben, in the crowd. Hey, drink some water. Ben, stay hydrated for your wife, yeah, okay? Yeah, stay hydrated, Ben. Yeah. Not just beer. I know we have the beer trucks, but water, too. And uh, yeah, that's all we got. All if right. you have any super chats, send them in. We'll read it. Yeah, yeah, we'll read your super chats, and we'll remind you to stay hydrated uh, as we go through this. Uh, Yo, speaking of hydrated. Yeah. We have an incredible NHRL water bottle in the merch store here. Oh, it's actually really nice. No, I, 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 I say that jokingly, but it is actually a really nice water bottle. Yeah, as a connoisseur um, of water bottles, that's a really quality water as bottle. As a not connoisseur of water bottles, I don't like toting around bottles, let alone ones with water in them. It's a nice water bottle. Yeah, it's a really no, nice uh, water No, seriously, bottle. go check out our shop. It helps uh, support, obviously, here out at, uh, at NHRL, but it also helps support so many of the builders. Uh, so many of the teams have merchandise here. The yep. vast majority of that money goes back to the team. It, it helps them dramatically. So please check it out when you get a chance. All right. This just in. Looks like what we have a judge's decision. Ah. Unanimous. No surprise there. For Megatron yep. and Jameson Go, bringing us one step closer to a possible triple crown victory for Jameson Go with this competition. He wants that turkey. It's November, Kyle. It's turkey it's season. Turkey time. Yeah, that's uh, that's the truth. Listen, if Jameson Go is able to pull off Golden Bretts in all three weight classes, he will be the first ever Triple Crown champion of NHRL. He has uh, also won two Golden Dumpsters at one event in two different weight classes mm -hmm. already this year. So there is a precedent set there that he could possibly uh, run with. And he's a lot more set up at this event than he was at that event to succeed with multiple bots. Yeah, I mean, he certainly brought his A game today, even more so than usual. Uh, but I got to say, the possibility of that, I've heard in the pits, I've heard it from builders, uh, that is lighting a fire under people. I mean, yeah. as a direct quote, JMO can't win everything. Like this is this is lighting, uh, you know, a passionate, passionate yeah. 
uh, fire in people's blood. To that, though, I respond, can he? I guess we'll find out. I mean, I'm pretty sure he could. Yeah, I mean, it's... We'll find out. We'll find out. I mean, Jameson Go is, in so many ways, the GOAT thus far of this sport. The guy is like, shown up in so many ways to just perfect these different styles of robots that weren't necessarily as successful before he kind of took a handle on them. I think, I think there is something to be said for that for sure, but let's also not uh, discount the fact uh, this has been a very good year for him, too. Yeah, I mean, across the board. Uh, you know, whether or not it's a question of, of talent over, you know, all of existence, right now he is lining them up and knocking them down. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think that that is just putting a target on his back in a good, oh, friendly, yeah. competitive way. For sure. Uh, and I've seen people respond by bringing even more of an A game. I mean, just look at Brendan ben Benignan. Uh, he Perfect example. He has shown up with the mindset of, I need to beat Jameson. Yeah, specifically uh, and he's not the designed only one. to. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But it, it, it uh, heavy is uh, the head that wears a crown kind of situation. Maybe? Amen to that. All right, so this is our updated 30-pound bracket. Now you will see in the semifinal round, Megatron will face off against Red Storm. But back in the quarterfinals, Emulsifier will be facing off against Vorion, and Waddles will take on Chaipata. This is going to be a very spicy bracket, this kind of lower half of the bracket here to see who will end up facing, like going into the semifinal round. I honestly don't know who's going to pull it off. It is a lot of big, powerful hitters. Anyone's game at this point. So, uh, yeah, we'll see who's uh, who's going to end up in the final bracket after this. We'll see. Man, I'm uh, kind of digging this little jam they got. Kind of it's not bad, right? Yeah. A lot of times it fades into the background, but every now and then, it really just strikes a chord. All right, so we're going to head upstairs and check in with Chris in the pits. Chris, what's going on? Hey, guys. I have next to me Johnny Bahana, uh, Johnny Bahama, a.k.a. Johnny Sumpas, the captain of Team Stamina. Johnny, uh, you had a great year. Uh, you, you're you're one, of those, uh, one of those people here in the community that really grinds. You put in the effort. I, I came and I saw your whole workshop operation uh, this summer up in Woodstock, New York, where you had... So many young builders congregated, all like just making. It was the most exhilarating thing I had seen, maybe in my entire life. Um, I'm I'm really proud of you. Tell tell me just if you can summarize your 2023 season uh, real quick for the folks out there. Ups and downs. Um, I came here January and met my uh, friends, Team Pandemonium. We ran as a multi-bot. It's a 12-pounder. Um, became really great friends with them, and now we all pit together. Um, I had great run in May with, uh, I lost to Droopy eventually, great event. In June I went 0-2, but I had so much fun, so it was just worth it. Um, and August I qualified somehow, um, which has brought me here. <laughs> and you know, today I went 0-2, but both fights were amazing, and I am just so happy to be here with everyone. I mean, I, everyone here is like my best friend. I, I just love it here. It's it's so interesting because like you're you're one of the community drivers here. You you're you're an incredible builder. You are uh, one of those people that we thought about for every category of our NHRL awards. And I don't want to send you home empty-handed. And it's my honor and privilege to award you the NHRL Young Builder of the Year Award for 2023. And with this comes $10,000 donated to your selected charity. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, I wasn't expecting this. Oh my God. I mean, I have these guys to thank. I, I, I wanna be honest, these guys are the best. <laughs> Oh man, thank you guys so much. This really, this means a lot. I don't know what to say. Lars, come here. We, we share this. Me and Lars share this. <laughs> this another another person uh, on the docket there. You know, for this award, and it's just it's incredible to see how you've pulled so many people into your orbit. It's it's awesome. It's uplifting. It's an honor to call you a friend, and I'm so happy that you get to take this home. And that, obviously, you're going to be back in 2024, right? 
I have a brand new robot for January. Uh, it's a vert, um, and Spartan's going to be competing for as long as I'm alive, I guess. <laughs> as long as I'm coming here. Congratulations, Johnny. You deserve it. Back to you guys. Uh, thanks, Chris. I have never seen a more honest reaction yeah. uh, to news like that. How wholesome was that? Johnny Sumpas, just a genuinely good soul, just a genuinely good kid, well-deserved. Man, and like just to see so much community support for him right off the bat, too. How cool was that? Look at that. Everybody back in the pit celebrating for Johnny. Well-deserved. Big hug from Chris. Yeah, this is a kid who just, you know, showed up as a teenager asking for help, asking to learn. And now he really is truly a leader in this community, bringing people Five, together, four, helping new three, builders. He's awesome. Two, one, All right. Fight, robots so fight. here we go, guys. This is Emulsifier versus Boreon, two of the hardest hitters still left in the 30-pound bracket. The winner will move on to the semifinal round, and right now it's Fork Wars. No weapons are touching, just forks. There we go, nice big hit from Emulsifier onto Boreon. Emulsifier getting a little bit of a drive advantage with those tank treads. Ooh. And Emulsifier with a slightly bigger weapon diameter, but it's kind of high slung on the oh! bot. I don't know if it gives them a reach advantage, but yeah, there you go. Brandon taking full advantage and getting in there. Something just flew off of the side of Emulsifier that I think is supposed to be attached. Yeah, I can't quite tell. It looks awfully belt-like, but everything does still seem to be spinning. Yeah, what, what belt would that go to? You know they don't use belts on the wheels. They got the treads. Yeah, they... Oh! Nice hit there oh. from Emulsifier. Orion has lost something important. I can't quite That's tell a what tread. it is. That's that is a tread. one of the treads. But Vorion has also lost something. Oh, they've lost their self-riding arm. Ah, which is, is why they're why not self-riding. The yeah, that's not great. They uh, need a little help here, and they should be able to get back up. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Now they're back up and stuck on the wall. All right. And it does look like Emulsifier really struggling with their mobility. They are crab walking and gyro dancing to try to get themselves into the proper position to get a hit. But Vorion not able to go. There we go. Now Vorion's However, off the wall. Vorion is now smoking on the left-hand side. I see that. And they're having some drive issues on that left-hand side as well. Yeah. Uh, that is oh, a lot that's a lot of smoke. smoke. And that's a fire coming out of the side of Vorion. You put this much kinetic energy into the box, somebody's coming out with a lot of damage. Probably everybody's coming out with a lot of damage. I think that smoke and that fire is a result of Vorion trying to self-right using his weapon. It can still drive on the right-hand side, but boy, that's not a lot. No, that's a big struggle right there. We are down to 37 seconds left in this match, and these bots are just gyro dancing at each other. It doesn't look like we got any movement from Vorion for the past seven seconds or so. They will be counted out if they I don't start moving. I can see the countout has yeah, begun. Yeah, there it is. This is going to be an emulsifier victory, and that is unfortunately it for Brendan Bennett Young in wow. the tournament today. Now, emulsifier is... Former world champion. If you're going to go out in the tournament, that is a way to do it. I thought you had me when you got me. I don't know how to do the but. Boy. Wow. Words of congratulations just given back and forth. Mutual respect between both teams. That was a hard fought match. Both teams have a lot of repairs to do. But yeah, Emulsifier moves on. I hear some creepy chanting. I'm not really... Yeah, it's a little weird, right? It's a little unnerving. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little strange. Oh, what's going on it's over there? a little there? haunt. Oh. Well, there's Chibata. Mm, it's a cool-looking bot. I, I kind of appreciate that the look of Chibata has, uh, to my knowledge, nothing to do with the name 
nothing to do with the build. It just looks cool. Yeah, it's not bread or anything. No, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> It'd be kind of hilarious if it was I bread. I want just one one event him to show up with a loaf of bread with some wheels stuck on his side. I would love that, actually. I'm always hungry. I don't know if you know this about me. <laughs> I, I eat a lot. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, well, you've got to say, fuel all those adventures and misadventures that yeah, is your life, true. you know? Four, you see, I, I like three, three carbohydrates two, in my day, like one, carbonation, right, carbohydrates, fight. and carburetors. Yeah, I get that. One for fuel, one for fun, and one for a little extra cash on the side. Yeah. Got it. Chibata is really dishing out these big hits against Waddles right off the bat. Waddles is running that vertical attachment. I am super surprised by that. I really thought they would be going into this matchup with their horizontal configuration. That is a lot of gyro dance on Waddles' part. Well, this is a new attachment for Waddles. They have not had that vertical attachment working throughout this entire tournament or throughout the entire season. You know, I wonder, Kyle, if the horizontal attack. Wow! Oh, no! Chibata's a hat. It's a bread hat on flow. Get off, get off. Nice shot from Waddles once again. That Far is be it an... for me to question the Boxels. That's a great idea running this attachment. That is incredible. Wow, no mercy. No mercy from Waddles and Brian Boxel. And Waddles isn't even running full bore. Oh, you no. can see the light is in the arena. We've gone to great lengths to make sure that those lights don't fall down as often as they used to, and yeah, they still knock one but off. But there's so many roofings that have happened in this. That weapon on Waddles is really getting some great airtime on the Chibata. Wow, that was a lot of weapon-to-weapon -weapon impact there. Chibata seems to be having some drive issues and some weapon issues. Yeah, left-hand side is, or I guess that's the right-hand side because it's inverted. Right. Uh, the weapons both do seem to be working. Yeah, Chibata's still in it. The game is still afoot. No one's getting counted out. Whoa! But Waddles is just playing, playing with the food, playing with the mini bots. They're I mean, not going after the to, main bot. To be fair, Waddles uh, has done more damage. They've shown more aggression. They've shown more control. Yeah. And now they can just mulch a mini bot if they want. Uh, Gra grab some damage points from that. Why not? And not really kind of risk your main bot this late in the tournament. Yeah, they're they're not going to lose a lot of aggression if the opponent can't make up aggression. So. It's, it's not a completely foreign strategy. It's just, it's, it's one that requires an awful lot of confidence, though. Yeah. 12 seconds left in this matchup. That's Waddles it. still mulching that mini bot. Yeah, I mean, if Waddles is confident. And there we go. Nice big hit onto the side of Chibata, and another big hit onto oh. the side of Chibata. And that seems to be a wheel guard that's flown yeah, off. Yeah, bits and pieces of Chibata are. Oh no, there's a lot of excitement going on. Everybody's jumping around and cheering for Brian Boxer. There is some strong and I think well-founded excitement that Brian just took home a win there. Yeah, a lot of his WPI alums and, and classmates are really excited for him, cheering him on there. See some of wow. these uh, big hits coming in. Yeah, this vert attachment just working beautifully as designed. Really crazy idea to kind of pull this thing out at the World Championship and test it out. Absolutely bizarre idea, but you know what? Worked out beautifully for Brian. There you go, you see the light coming down after that hit there. And that does mean Chibata has been eliminated and Waddles will go on to face Emulsifier in the next round.
assuming they win this judge's decision, which if they didn't, that would be absurd. Yeah, I think the Pitchfork store will do very well tonight if uh, they walk around away with a win here. While we await that decision, let's go up to Chris in the pits and see what he has to say. Hey guys, I'm here with uh, NHRL 2023 Best Driver, Kevin Milcheski and Red Storm. Uh, Red Storm just coming out of an absolute nail biter against Chad New and Yahoo. Kevin, you have a very big matchup coming up. I'm not gonna, I'm only gonna take half your attention because you're about to fight Jameson Go and Megatron. What are you doing to get ready? What happened in the Yahoo fight? And uh, you know, are you gonna make it in time to get uh, your bot ready for Megatron? Uh, so we didn't take a whole lot of damage versus <clears throat> Yahoo, very luckily, but we have to do a full config swap for uh, Jameson. We have a config that we built just to fight uh, Megatron. So we're having to swap to that now and uh, see if the gamble pays off. Now, I think uh, Jameson Go is still in the running for every single weight class. You're one of the, the few people left here at the World Championships that stands in the way of potentially that first ever NHRL Triple Crown. Uh, tell me a little bit about your strategy going in against Megatron. You know, Jameson's got the best robots and he's one of the best drivers. So we're gonna bet on our driving uh, and go with a config that makes Jameson make trade-offs he doesn't wanna have to make. So we're taking off the front armor to try to tempt him into turning Megatron into vertical spinner mode where he spins it fast and drives backwards. I think that's gonna give us the opportunity to drive around him and then control the fight. Really interesting, uh, in, uh, you know, your, your, your theory going into this. Uh, it's gonna be a driving match. Jameson Go against Kevin Milcheski, 2023, best driver. Well, good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Man, what a matchup, and that is the way to put it. Uh, this is kind of a, oh, I don't, I don't know how you put it, but you've got people bringing very different strengths to the table yeah. in this in this match. Kevin focused, you know, these are very well built robots. Jameson brings very well built robots. Uh, Kevin is going to bring what what we've announced here this year happens to be uh, what we think is the best driving skill. And it's going to be a question of which one of those is more potent in the ring. And you got to love that he actually brought a Megatron full setup. Uh, that's a compliment to Jameson Go, if nothing else. All right, so we're going to move is. over into the 12-pound brackets in preparation for a 12-pound bright. So speaking of Jameson Go, Psycho will be taking on Nightcrawler at the beginning of the quarterfinals. Huge will be taking on Buzzkill. Maximizer will then face off against Full Court, Luke Stangle's favorite robot. And Voxel12 <laughs> will be then taking on Torrent. Love the fact that Donald Sung is still in this competition. This is shaping up to be a scary, scary division. Absolutely. You gotta love the 12 pound division. You know though, that it does point out we do have one robot left that is still a control bot in addition to Kevin's. That's actually. right. We have full court. Um, so there we go. We are now going to watch Cage 4, Psycho taking on Nightcrawler. I'm Five, getting I'm getting word four, now in the last three, fight Waddles two, won that by one, unanimous decision fight, not a huge fight. surprise yeah not uh, a huge surprise good to know though man these are two very compact bots and when you see robots this compact usually that means that they are built like tanks Nightcrawler uh, taking the edge in that first couple of exchanges, and then Psycho returning a volley. I think this is going to be a very back and forth fight, Kyle. We have, uh, yeah, they are trading almost one for one at this point. Yeah, just two kind of very different design philosophies, Ooh. but chasing the same basic weapon to the component. Interesting. You can hear it sounds like both robots are in an arms race right now, spinning their weapons faster and faster. Yeah. They both started off slow. One will lose an exchange, turn their weapon speed up. The other will lose an exchange, turn their weapon speed up. Wow. Wow. Psycho coming out on the wrong end of that one. Yeah, flying all the way across, landing down in the pink, uh, pink corner. Uh-oh. There is drive mobility issues Yeah, that's something Nightcrawler's Nightcrawler right been struggling with all day Ooh. long. 
Psycho is flying across the arena. Um, but Nightcrawler is just barely moving at this point. Oh, I... Oh, there are some bad noises coming out of Nightcrawler right now. I can't quite no piece movement, them together. No movement from Nightcrawler. There we go. We got a little bit of movement from the back, but now Psycho's behind them. They're, they've got to make some contact. And there we go. Psycho or Nightcrawler able to get a little bit of gyroscopic procession going, but not a lot of controlled movement. Yeah, enough that they're probably not going to be counted out anytime soon, but not enough to bring any any kind of aggression to Psycho. It is nice, though, that Psycho's kind of able to pick their shots and really come in at an angle that's beneficial to them. Oh, this is troubling, too. Once uh, once Nightcrawler's backed into a wall, that back yeah. up and reverse away from your opponent doesn't work so well anymore. Uh, we may end up getting, yep, we're going to have a flow unstick. There you go. That gives Nightcrawler a little bit more of an opportunity to move around with 35 seconds left in this matchup, but I don't see a lot of movement from them. No, at this point, Psycho, uh, Jameson is, is biding his time with Psycho, just kind of letting the situation speak for itself. Yeah. Not a bad move. Save the bot. You've got a tough Not next God. round, either against Buzzkill or Huge. Yeah, that was a nail biter for Jabo, you can tell. But the knockout was achieved. Pete Covert will be going home. Man. Heading over to cage one. This is a fight I think a lot of people have been waiting for. Huge going up against Buzzkill. We've seen so little of Huge. It's it's uh it's a yeah. phantom in the mist. Yeah, it's just been making its way slowly but surely through the bracket, and uh, they lumbering they had... giant. It's so uh, they... uh, this says a lot. Robots have been so scared of Huge. They're just saying, oh, I'll take the loose. I'll yeah. take the loss. We don't need to. Uh, don't now, need granted, to one of those, one of those was a, was a teammate in the form of Disco. Yeah, of course. Disco didn't uh, want to fight them. Yeah. But this is literally Huge's first fight in the day. They how, have, how does that happen? That's so bonkers. They have won three fights in a row just by being known as being good, essentially. Yeah. And also not wanting to fight, you know, their brother. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not where this is in the Civil War. Seven o'clock in the evening, and we're we're in the middle of quarterfinals. We're, yeah, exactly. Quarterfinals, second round of the tournament. Huge so first. Everybody round. else has stacked up damage. Everybody else has stacked up some exhaustion. Yeah, huge. I mean, it's fresh. It's like a newborn baby. Yeah. Presumably, the Dorflers have just been sitting back there taking a nap. It's still got you know like uh, puppy paws smell like Cheetos. It's still got that fresh out-of-the-box smell to it. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, wafting, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's very wafty. Yeah. And there you can see two fresh Dorflers. Their mom's here. So I know. they are well-fed. They are well-hydrated, taken care of. I had to be careful. I thought their mom was going to tell me to sleep. You know, she has been giving me fashion advice throughout yeah, the day. Yeah, if, if I sleep, I catch on fire. <laughs> That explains some of your work choices. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, fair, fair. Draw. I get it. Um, Huge looking great, shiny new blade on it. That, oh, interesting configuration that this Huge is going for. So uh, this particular Huge uh, can do a, a variety of different wheel choices and weapon choices. Uh, this is a relatively low slung, low to the ground, uh, nimble and compact Huge. Yeah, less. Less huge, more uh, low slung, low to the ground, but that makes sense considering who they're facing off against. They're going against Buzzkill, Undercutter Driver, and very low bot themselves. Right. Oh, and interesting, Buzzkill is running inverted today. They're putting that blade yeah. a little higher in the air. Can't be surprised about that. So I do believe Huge is Five, trying to get underneath four, that blade, if at all three, possible, just by being two, a little bit lower to the ground. One. Well, not Fight. just that, Kyle. Robots Those wheels, fight. by virtue of being smaller, uh, can now be a little thicker. Yeah, a little and less likely to collapse. Oh, that is a big hit on Buzzkill. Yeah. And they are uh, no longer inverted, I think. 
Now, horizontal spinners in general are kind of the kryptonite to Huge's strategy. Doesn't mean that Huge can't win this, it just means that it's a much harder than kind of the meta they're designed for, which is that four wheel drive vertical spinner. So far, though, this uh, this particular Huge is doubling out a lot of good hits, not big hits. Uh, but those little hits add up. You can see mobility issues already stacking up. Oh my gosh, that is an entire, the entire yeah. weapon system. It's yeah. just falling out. Wheels fell off. Wow. And you hear those sounds from the crowd. Those are not boos. No, those are chants of huge. That is an absolutely dominant performance. So that does mean that Huge will go on to face Psycho yeah. in the next round. That is a really tough matchup for Psycho. Yeah. That Honestly, is not, like a worst case scenario for them in a lot of cases. It is not what Jameson wants today. Even if he were to pull out a win, uh, he is going to take a lot of damage in yep. that fight. More yep, absolutely. Psycho is exactly the kind of robot that Huge is designed to defeat. It is low, it is compact, and it is just meant to go through that car wash of pain that is Huge's weapon. Whew. All right, 12 pounds shaping up to be interesting. We will still get Maximizer versus Full Court coming up, but right now let's watch this replay. You can see Huge winning the first engagement. You can see a little bit, oh, there you go. There's the weapon flying off. What happened? Yes, hit the hit the tap out. Please, please stop. Please no more. That's, please, that's my enough. weapon's gone. I can't do any more. Don't hit me again, sir. <laughs> Joe and Don super happy with that outcome, as they should be. Yeah, that's something to be proud of. Especially, I, you know, it sounds great to get uh, buys and forfeits and stuff and easy street to this point in the competition. That's, yeah. a, that's a nerve wracking, nail biting kind of thing. You're just waiting upstairs in the executioner line. Well, and not only that, but Buzzkill has been through the paces today. Buzzkill kind of knows what works, what doesn't. That's kind of your first test of huge of the day. That's a scary way to go about things. Yeah, for all they know, like, yeah, crud, we forgot to plug in that, that one thing. <laughs> that yeah. one trick that makes robot builders angry. Just forgot. <laughs> you know? All well. right, we are closing the door on cage four, which means that we do get two really top-notch competitors. Maximizer and Luke Stangle's favorite robot, Full Court, the last non-kinetic energy weapon in the 12-pound division. I'd really love to get, uh, you know, someone just doing a needlepoint uh, version of Full Court to hang above Luke's bed. Oh, that's a great idea. Anybody in the audience who does needlepoint, if you could work that out for me, I would really appreciate it. And yeah. we would display that prominently above Luke's bed, for sure. Any of you wonderful people that like knit things or crochet things, if that's something you want to consider. There's Jay Kaufman standing by. Oh, yeah. Full court, ready to go with the most aggressive weapon so far. The most aggressive tapper you have ever seen. Five, four, three. Look at look at those angry two, little taps going. One, they are fight, ready to tap you out. Fight. Coleman Christie, one of the most aggressive tap drivers or tap operators you have ever seen. But I gotta say, Maximizer uniquely suited to do a lot of damage to this robot if they're able to execute their strategy effectively. Is a tap operator a soda jerk? Similar, yeah. Yeah, okay. There's the taps. They're aggressive. They're not I, actually hitting uh, Maximizer, but if they were, uh, trust me, it would be devastating. You don't even know right now how devastated you are. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this is actually a lot of dominant driving by Full Court. Full Court takes up such a huge percentage of this box just in the length of the bot. Yeah, and, and Full Court really is uh, not a good matchup for Maximizer. No. Maximizer wants to be able to whip around, uh, hit the squishy bits on the sides and the back of robots. Uh, Maximizer could flip around three times and still not be even around to the side of Full Court. 
And there we go, another big pin from full court. They've gotten quite a few of those, and they've put Maximizer on their head now for the second time in this matchup. And that's just too high of a weapon placement for them to really do too much damage to full court. So you can see Jake desperately trying to get his bot back onto its wheels, back onto the correct allocation. There we go, we got it. He has nailed it. Will he be able to hold it and possibly get a hit on a drive pod? That's what he's going for. No, flipped over again. Mm. And yep, another pin, but Jake able to get out. And then the pin restuck, but Jake able to get out. Seems like Jake's getting a little bit wiser to this pin strategy from full court as time goes on, but he doesn't have much time left to really show the judges what he can do. One minute left in this fight. Yeah, just a third of the match remaining, and so far neither robot showing a lot of damage, which leaves the control and aggression on the part of full court in prime yeah. focus. They have been able to successfully pin them several times, and there we go, aggressive taps happening. You know, those little finger movements are, are kind of unnerving. Yeah, I think that's why Luke likes them so much. Yeah, they're not. It's emotional warfare. <laughs> that's it's, The weapon isn't meant to, to attack the robot. It's meant to attack the driver and just make them unsettled. Yeah, that is the full court, the psychological damage right. that happens to you in the middle of this fight. 20 seconds left, and... Uh, Maximizer has lodged itself on top of full court. Yeah, that's not good. This is not where Jake wants to be right now at all. Wow, so this one will be going to a judge's decision. Jake, very uh, pensive, disappointed face. Yeah, interesting advice there from Nate Franklin. The less time there is between a fight for you to get ready, the better you do. Just a little lesson in not overthinking it. And I gotta say, we don't have the judge's decision yet, but that does look very favorable to Coleman Christie. It sure does. The driver of full court. Luke Stangle's favorite robot. We should really just call it the Luke Stangle. Oh, you know, actually, we should call Luke Stangle full court. Ooh, that's good. It's Luke a good full court Stangle. Luke full court Stangle. Yeah. I like it. If we could contact, I, I think he's, you know, one of those guys that like likes to plan ahead. Yeah. So if we he could, is. if we could, yeah, exactly. If we could talk to like, you know, the local cemetery, 30, yeah. 40 years from now, just have that headstone ready. Call all the hotels in Norwalk and make sure that they change his, uh, any reservation that he has. Absolutely. To Luke Full Court Stangle. Yeah, so that's I'll, what's um, on. I already seat. have his tax returns. Great. So Perfect. I'm ahead of the game there. You know, he's really going to appreciate this effort that we're putting forth for him. We try. We're caring people. All right. So we do have a unanimous judge's decision for Coleman Christie and Full Court. They will be moving on into the next round to face the winner of Voxel or Torrent. Kind of amazing. I, I mean, that was a pretty ideal matchup for them in that round. There is a little piece of me that is so excited right now that we have not one but two control bots still left in this, uh, in this competition. I agree. Not to mention two flame robots. Yeah, how weird is that? This is, this is a very... Um, mix up, you know, surprise laden uh, semifinals or quarterfinals, rather. All We're right, so speaking of Voxel 12 versus Torrent, here we go into cage one. And once again, there's Robert Rund. What's that guy doing here again? Holy cow. Five, He's just in every weight four, class today. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, so there you see Torrent, the little red robot, going up against Voxel, the wide drum, the small black robot. Michael Shore is operating Voxel 12. His Voxel line are these wide drummed robots that are just extremely maneuverable and hard hitting. Also very compact, very durable, these robots. 
Uh, however, it does seem to be having right side drive issues already. Sure does, yeah. And uh, Donald taking no time to take advantage of that, coming in and smashing once again into that right drive side. Whatever drive might be left there, Donald probably just took that completely out. And now he's winning weapon to weapon engagements with Voxel. Not an easy thing to do. Looks like uh, looks like there's a little bit of drive issues going on on Crash Fest as well. So we are down to the last two minutes remaining in this fight. And so far, it is all Donald Sung and Torrent. Really impressive changes that Donald has made to this robot over the course of the last year. Catching the design up to kind of the modern ethos of how we're building robots today. And that is a tap out by Michael Shore. That means your winner. And moving on to face full court in the next round. Donald Sung and Torrent. Excellent job, Donald. Welcome back to Combat Robotics. What a way to find yourself back in the fray. Yeah, you can hear them talking right there. Uh, Michael said, you got one perfect hit on the side of my weapon and it knocked my drive completely out. It's all it takes sometimes. And you know, that's something we see a lot with older school drivers. Uh, is they built these robots to deliver one good hit and disable an opponent. Yep. Uh, you see a lot of things that are much more measured, much more balanced. Uh, a lot of these older robots are just yeah. go for we, the, we have one purpose kill. and we go in for the kill. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Michael is calling for the tap out, smashing the tap out button. We're done. Thank you. Going home. Nice job by Donald man. Song, man. Would you have expected Torrent to be this far into the competition at this no, point? No, I, I truly didn't. Uh, I mean, I, I know I've said today a few times that this is a competition where anything could happen, anyone could win. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you do have your favorites, you have your expectations. Yeah. And, and they were frankly kind of lower on my list. So it's... Not quite an upset, but still surprising. All right, we're gonna so, go, oh, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, we're going to head right on over to what's left of the three-pound bracket. So we have Silent Spring taking on Caldera. Supreme Ruler will be taking on Clyde. And then down at the bottom half of the bracket, Voxel V1 versus Monkfish. And then Fully Defined versus Booty Brigade. This is a very bustable bracket. A lot could change and a lot could happen moving forward. Oh boy, this is, uh, I hope that this lives up to my own inner expectations. Right now, we are gonna watch Supreme Ruler go up against Clyde. These are our two most competitive flame-based robots uh, in the entirety of NHRL, and certainly in the entirety of today's proceedings. Uh, if everything goes well, there's gonna be a lot of flame in this box in just a few minutes. Absolutely. There you see Gabe Five, and his brother four, Alex. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. They have driven Clyde nearly perfectly throughout the day today, even taking out former world champion Droopy. But now they have to face not one, but two control bots in the same arena that in Supreme Ruler. That is so much delightful fire. It really is. The entire just color temperature of this room has changed now, and everything is on fire. Fire lingering behind on the paint in the arena floor. I pins, love it. Pins and flames abound. It does look like at this point Clyde has the better of that one, that one engagement, but it could go either way. Look at the flames lingering behind in the arena behind them. Melted pieces of bot. You know, wheels. Lingering behind, Clyde not moving, currently just held up on Supreme Ruler's fork. Oh, now finally unpinned. Even more fire coming to the fray. Amazing, too, seeing uh, 
These are both potent control robots. Oh, look at that. Yeah, beautiful work there. It's pinned by Supreme, Supreme Ruler and Supreme Ruler's minibot coming in for the flame. You know, whoever said you can't fight fire with fire is just outright wrong. Of course you can fight fire with fire. Like, that's an absurd thing to say. Yeah. I never understood that phrase. I mean, water works better, but, like, yes, fire works. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you look at that thermal camera we had up there for a minute. Both of these robots, the entirety of the chassis is just glowing hot. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a long wait time after this match is over to wait for these bots to cool down before any human hands go in there to pick these guys up. Now, you can see the kind of color change on these bots. Both of them have kind of decked themselves with a little bit of heat-resistant tape to help kind of ward off the worst of the flame effects, but that doesn't really stop your bot from being cooked on the inside. It really just turns your robot into a baked potato. Which Look is exactly at what's that. Right now to Look Supreme at that, Ruler. ladies and gentlemen. Supreme Ruler's gotten, the, I think, the more pins thus far, but right now, Clyde having a little bit of a resurgence. And now, once again, Supreme Ruler pinning Clyde up against the wall. Both of these bots are no or, uh, are not surprised with the judge's decision at the end of their fight. That's kind of what they go for. And there you go, Clyde. Got that flame back up and running. Waiting for the best moment to implement it on Supreme Ruler. With 14 seconds left, they better get that thing going now. Nice pin by Clyde. Not able to hold it for very long. There we go, that is the match. The bots are wrestling to the very end. But everybody's still functional. Everybody's more or less in one piece. No giant explosions, Kyle. No That's giant explosions. Uh, uh, but still a really great technical match back yep. and forth between these two competitors. Very excited to see what our judges have to say. You know, in a way, we could say, too, you know, I talk about we have two control robots left in the competition. We really have four here. These are both heavy control robots. Yeah, yes, absolutely. they have flamethrowers, but the flamethrowers, as we've found, especially this year, are really not a valuable uh, a weapon system unless you are an effective control bot as well. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they are a good add to a control much akin to like an overhead attack bot, you have to be a good control bot before you can be a good flame bot. Absolutely. And Clyde, one of the best control bots in the game for sure, but man, in the Battle of the Forks, there are very few who can stand up to Supreme Ruler. It's the it, worst pun, too, but it just works so well. It's true. And they are, I mean, the epitome of forks. You know what I mean? If you want to do it, that is how you do it. And it's going to completely change Man. the fork design. So this they is kind of amazing. They check things with the thermal, ca thermal cam before they reach in there. They have to wait till the bots get to a, cer a certain temperature before they can reach in. Both bots still too hot. So our safety officer saying, no, you cannot reach in yet. You got to wait. You got to wait. So we're gonna let them cool off, gonna let them get to a position where you can actually touch them. There we go. Hmm. Gotta love it. That, uh, we're gonna wait on the judge's decision on that one, but I will tell you who won. It was the audience. That was nothing but great driving. I a agree. lot of flame. All around fantastic matchup. I love control bot matchups. Maybe that makes me too much of a nerd in the sport or no, something. No, I, I don't think it does. And it, the trouble is, is that a bad control bot matchup is oh, in fact so terrible. boring. They get very boring. Yeah. But when you can see the skill that goes in, when you can see the skill that goes in, not just to the driving, but to the thought of the robot beforehand. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's just a celebration of of top tier building and top tier driving such good driving in that matchup yeah and the both of those designs really complement each other and led to a great a great back and forth i do think we had a little bit more pins from supreme ruler at I the agree. end of the day um that might give them the advantage we'll have to see but it was a great matchup for both bots at the same time i think the fire might have been a little more intense uh, oh yeah coming off of uh, clyde was dishing well, out the flames yeah so for sure you know, we'll see how it goes yeah i'm excited to see how it goes
I'm just excited in general. This is an exciting day. Uh, exciting robots, exciting destruction, and uh, quite frankly, the vibe, it just in general. Yeah. It's we're, good. This we're is the moving through this bracket as a, at a good clip, mm -hmm. but we're giving a lot of like time to respect the builders. We're giving a lot of time to really like let these stories kind of play out. It's lovely. I, I think it's a testament to the quality and skill of the builders that we have in the building here today, but this is the first finals that I have been to that feels maybe not calm, but under control. You talk to the builder, you see yes. how they're doing, they're like, I'm focused, I'm ready, I am I have prepared, and I'm gonna do this. The fact that we have uh, builders doing things that they've never done, like Jameson Go coming with multiple copies of robots, something we've never seen from him before at NHRL, Absolutely crazy. Really shows how high the stakes are. But it does show that everybody's prepared. Everybody's ready for it. Yeah, and that just changes changes everything. Speaking of Jameson Go, we're going to head over to cage two. We have Silent Spring. Silent Spring Five, is going to be going up against Caldera. Both of these incredibly Five, powerful robots, horizontal Five. spinners. Silent Spring. Slightly more weight just because of those shuffler pod mechanisms. Believe it or not, those are shufflers moving that bot around, even though it is such a smooth locomotion. Yeah, it is incredible that robot can move so well despite having no wheels whatsoever. Wow, beautiful hit there from Silent Spring. That was like a perfect impact of weapon on weapon, launching Caldera across the box. And there we go, nice pin from the multi-bot on Caldera. Nasty weapon to weapon impact sending Silent Spring careening onto the other side of the box, but it does look like they are inverted and back into the fray. So we do have some sparks as these weapons come into contact with each other. Indeed, we do. Now, Silent Spring totally able to move when inverted, not a problem at all, but that is not optimal placement for the weapon. Yeah, it is not where they want to be, for sure. Still, they're getting the better of some of these impacts and, and engagements. All right, Silent Spring did was able to get itself flipped around three or four times, but ended back on its head. Wow, big weapon-to-weapon -weapon impact there. Still sent Silent Spring careening up to the wall. Silent Spring on the pursuit now of Caldera. And you can see these builders really jockeying for position, trying to find the most optimal place for their horizontal weapon to hit the other. We are down to the last minute of this matchup. And it's been a lot of Silent Spring chasing Caldera, but it does look like half of the drive on Caldera is really struggling at this point. Yeah, so Jameson's is. chasing after that other wheel to try to disable it. And the Minibot also really struggling with their drive, which is unfortunate because they were doing a lot of work. Oh, there we go. Now they've pinned themselves into the side. And that's another pin from the Minibot. Taking away valuable time that JMO needs right now to gain more points before this match is over. Oh, the Minibot not able to disengage, so therefore Brett coming in for the unstick. Oh, there it is. Oh man, we are down to the last 10 seconds. jmo has got to score as many points as humanly possible. Caldera does appear to be able to move, but just barely. Just barely, yeah. You can see Jambo trying to focus on that drive. It's still working. And the weapon is shut down on Caldera. This match is over. Looks like the weapon was still functional. Just hit that bot right there at the end, stopping the weapon. This one will go to the judges. Once again, that is that is a pensive, kind of nervous face on Jameson Go at the end of that matchup. Yeah, it's... Listen, if you want to win, don't let it go to the judges. Never that is let what it they go always the tell you, yeah. and for good reason. They're, until that judge's decision comes out, you do not know. No, and our judging rubric has gotten really, really good, but I would never call it perfect. No. 
Oh, Speaking of judges' decisions, yeah, we from have the previous fight, we have a judges' fight. decision coming in. Split decision for Supreme Ruler. I can't say that I am surprised. No, I kind of think that was where I expected it to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am, I'm kind of glad it was a split decision, honestly. Well-deserved for Clyde. Uh, but yeah, Supreme Ruler will be moving on. Um, so good for Luke. Yeah, congratulations to Luke. Uh, Supreme Ruler, I think, honestly, probably a better spot to defeat some of the opponents that they're going to see uh, later in that bracket. Let's. Uh, so they will be going on to face the winner of this last matchup that we just saw, Silent right. Spring versus Caldera. And either Caldera or Silent Spring is going to be a better matchup for Supreme Ruler than Clyde would have been. I agree. I agree. Uh, Okay, so here we are in cage three. This is the bottom half of the bracket here, fully defined. Ian McInerney. Hi, Ian. Ooh, nice blow in the kiss. You gotta love that. Yeah, a little bit of style, a little bit of suave. Yeah, you're keeping the romance alive. You gotta keep the, you gotta give the people what they want. You know what I'm saying? Five, and he's going four, up against Booty three, Brigade. Talk about a team two, that brings the people what one, they want. Two former five, world champions. Robots fight. Bring in the pain, bring in the destruction, bring in the chaos, but most importantly, bring in the booty. Wow, beautiful hit there. Hits. Okay, this is where Lynx just shines. Coming yep, back in with a full volley, and that is a tap out. Your winner, Booty Brigade, moving on into the semifinal round. They will be facing the winner of Voxel V1 versus Monkfish in the next round. Did you catch that weapon? It was a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Fully defined wasn't even looking in the right direction. No, they got a little underdefined at the end of that uh, fight. At there. the end, that is where they ended up. Yeah. But they it got is hit so hard they were smiles. Side. Yeah, absolutely. But it is all smiles for Ian. He is having a blast. And, you know, if you're going to go out, going out to two former world champions that's yeah, not so bad not so bad <laughs> including one of which is the reigning world champion mm. not so bad hashtag not the worst yeah yeah it's a it's an okay day you know every time i show up at an nhl event where droopy or any of the droopy gang is present i just wonder what are they going to put butts on next Oh, good question. There's t-shirts, there's, there's hats, there's other people's robots. Yeah. Uh, yep. Trading cards. I've got poker chips. Oh, I have a poker chip. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh hold we, on. We have a developing situation yeah. going up on, on yes. up in the pits. Let's go to Chris right now. Chris, what do you got going on for us? So we're running. We're running. We're running. Um, Monkfish, Rachel de Guzman, was having uh, apparently some issues. They uh, had to take the bot apart. Uh, it looks like they reconfigured some of the electronic components inside of it, and they are off to the races. We're going back down now. So it looks like Monkfish is ready to go. My goodness. They'll now, see you any second. Back to you. Sometimes it's down to the wire. This is one of those times. I know uh, Rachel is putting an awful lot of effort into that robot, but at the same time, it is not a simple or quick teardown and rebuild process. No, not at all. And I will say that bot was slated to fight at 6.47. That was their original fight time. They right. have now been moved back to the end of the day. They, they should have fought a little bit earlier today. Um, but they are now slated for 7.35, and they're on time. But we have a judge's decision right now, split decision. Caldera oh, wow. versus Silent Spring. Got to say I'm a little surprised that's a split decision on that Me one. Me too. I um, thought that was rather yeah, resolute. One, but, but either way, the winner is Silent Spring, um, and they will be moving on to the next round to face off against Jeff Waters and oh, the baby. Supreme Ruler. I am really excited to see that. I, I can't remember. I know it's happened. I can't remember the last time uh, that Silent Spring faced off against a fire-based robot. Uh, but here's the thing. Those shuffler pods, that's a relatively squishy, low melting point material yes. that's used on each of those feet that yeah, crawl to across the traction. ground. Yeah, to give the yes. That's a prime candidate for melting and yes. perhaps gluing itself you know, two arenas getting yes. glued together, gumming up the works. Now, to another point, that weapon is incredibly low slung, and those forks on um, uh, on uh, Supreme Ruler are kind of prone to getting bent out of shape when they yep. face off against an undercutter like that. So there are some advantages kind of both ways there. Yeah, um, I agree. I'm very excited to see how that one goes. Mm -hmm. I, it could go either way. My, my, uh, my prediction is definitely going in the way of Silent Spring. All right, oh. so let's go back up to Chris with the developing situation. Oh, actually, no, Chris has somebody delightful. Hello, Chris. Yeah, that counts. This is a developing situation. I'm here with 2022 Rookie of the Year, 
Tom Farkas. Tom, you had an incredible year with Positively Hysterical. Um, you have provided delight to millions of people around the globe. That is astounding, and you, you captured the imagination of so many people, and you've drawn so many people into the sport. If you can, real quick, summarize what 2023 has meant to you. It's, it's been unreal. Um, I showed up in, um, with, a, with a weird, silly cat robot, um, with a rubber stamper, and people loved it. And I just kept bringing it back with something new and ridiculous every time. And it means so much that, you know, I'll talk to somebody and they'll say, I started showing up to Norwalk because of um, pause. And it's the greatest feeling in the world. I can't look at this robot without a huge smile on my face. We've seen bouquets, we've seen squeaky hammers, we've seen a beater bar that doesn't necessarily beater bar, but it did beater bar. It beats, but it doesn't bar. Exactly. <laughs> so I, um, I just want to tell you right now for, again, doing such a great job bringing all those people in, cap you know, capturing that attention, that imagination, we would like to bestow upon you the NHRL 2023 Most Fun Bot for Positively Hysterical. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who watches the videos. It, it means a ton. And of course, with this comes a, you know, a sizable contribution that you get to make to the charity of your choosing. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you so much, and thank you again to everybody. Wow. Back to you guys. That. I love that. And by the way, one of the most uh, merchandise moving robots, positively hysterical. Yeah. They're selling stickers. They're selling uh, plushies. They're selling shirts. They're selling all kinds of stuff out there. And it's good stuff. It is, actually. Like, the, the, sometimes someone sells merch. And you're just like, do they really need to exist? Everything positively hysterical related, in yeah. my opinion, needs to exist. Yep. Uh, my wife loves the merch. I bring it home all the Five, time. Yeah. Four, <laughs> three. Two, one, fight, robots fight. Oh, nice hit there from Boxer V1, taking on the Monkfish. Rachel, as we said, really struggling to get the spot together and working before this fight, but it looks fully functional now. I'm not seeing any issues. Rachel and her husband, Remy, really do know what they're doing. Okay, so we're a little stuck. Just a little. There's going to be an unstick that got called for. So it looks like the ref's kind of getting this whole thing organized and getting everybody together to do a safe unstick. But every all the action is paused right now. Can I have the crowbar? You gotta love it when the ref calls for the crowbar. Please, sir, may I have a crowbar? This is the safety crowbar. This is what you use to as safely as humanly possible, separate two robots from each other. Oh, and we're also taking a, uh, a hot minute to replace the battery on our house robot. That's always, uh, always a good thing. Sometimes they get a little sleepy. They've had a long day too. Yeah, providing the service of unsticking robots and giving us weird camera views. Mm -hmm. Here you see inside the guts of Brett the Brick. Brett is the OG, the original house bot. We owe the design and uh, function of all the other house bots to Brett. Brett originally was a cinder block, now a piece of just pure steel destruction. Anger, spite. Um, he's a very happy robot for such an angry robot. I gotta give props to that ref. That was one of the most gentle unsticks that I've ever seen. Yeah, it was like watching someone who grew up using chopsticks try yeah. to try to separate two robots. Very from surgical. One I bet you could catch flies with those those crowbars, honestly. Yep. Yeah. Okay, everybody's still functioning. Great. And the fight continues. Here we go. All right, 
Chipmunk Fish. Yeah, do a little dance. Show us how it's done. Bing, 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 bing. It is getting down to the wire two minutes left in this fight, but man, we know Monkfish is running on a little bit of borrowed time, especially after that complete rebuild they had to do up in the pits. Oh my, Voxel does not seem to be moving very well now. Yeah, it is uh, struggling off and on, has right side drive issues, intermittent left side drive issues. Little bits of plastic are being shedded every which way. Oh, nice hit on the actual functioning drive side of Voxel V1. Really trying to get that knockout in probably the last minute of this fight. Oh, huge hit. Ooh, that hurt. Yeah. Monkfish doesn't always connect with its hits. Sometimes they're glancing blows, but boy, every once in a while, yeah, it's devastating. I mean, it's a giant bar, relatively speaking, on Monkfish. You kind of are distracted by the enormity of the robot itself, but that bar is just huge. And spinning so fast, our camera frame rate just has a very hard time keeping up with it. In many cases, you just know it's there because of the sparks it generates on the armor of the opponent. And that, I believe, ooh, nice hit there onto the mini. Oh, wow. And the countdown has started for the end of this matchup. Four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. This one will go to the judges. It went the full distance, and everybody just took a big sigh over there on the Voxel side. Not surprised. Every fight that goes the distance at this point is a victory for both teams involved, but only one team will be uh, taking home a win here. Whew. They will then go on to face Booty Brigade. Is that really a win? No, I mean, that, uh, if anything, is a punishment, but... Fair. All right, yeah. we're going to check in upstairs with Chris. Chris, what you got going on up there? Hey, guys, I'm here next to Jave, Jake Hoffman and Maximizer. Jake, it was only a year ago that you emerged out of some kind of hidden cocoon somewhere and came in with you know, this incredible bot, you went on a tear, you won two dumpsters, you came here all the way to the world championships, and y you got there. You were almost a stone throw from really taking home everything. Tell me if you can just sum up 2023 and, you know, uh, what your takeaways were from the season. Uh, this year, like recapping it from November 12th of last year to November 11th of this year has just been such an incredible ride. Like. I've learned so much I, I, being able to develop this robot, develop a team alongside of it, um, and develop myself has been such an honor. Um, it's been such a cool experience. Um, I'm glad we, we put on some good fights this year. Uh, I'm glad we brought home the dumpster twice. Uh, I'm sorry that it did not go out in a bang. I would have rather seen this, you know, guy burn to death. You know, that would have been way more fun, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And sometimes that's the draw. Um, we ended up 15 and two for the year, so that's a pretty good opening year for this robot. It will be back. 15 and two for the year. Absolutely incredible coming out of left field. Nobody saw you coming. It's been absolutely astounding watching your build diary on YouTube, seeing how this bot got to the way it is today. I am so looking forward to 2024 Maximizer. Any uh, any plans uh, that you're gonna make to this bot for, for next season? Big plans, win some fights. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the Jake Hoffman, what else is there to say? Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It is uh, It is easy to imagine another reality where we'd be looking at 
Maximizer versus Torrent in the next round. And that's a pretty easy win for Maximizer if you really look at the physics of those two bots. Yeah, I mean, anything could happen, but yeah, it would it would definitely be in they, his favor. They've got a big advantage there, and that's just not what we ended up with. We've got full court moving in. It was uh, the perfect matchup for full court in so many ways. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show you, you can have the absolute perfect version of your design of bot. And there's the kryptonite for it waiting for you in the next round if you just if it all shakes out that way. All right, so we do have a judge's decision coming up, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, unsurprisingly, Monkfish taking it with a unanimous decision. Monkfish yeah. will be going up against... Oh, who will they be going up against? Booty Brigade, right? That is correct. They do have to move on to face Booty Brigade in the next round in the semifinals. Thank you very much, Rachel de Guzman. Taking on two world champions, this is uh, this is very similar to where we were at last event in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this shakes out for her. She's been driving beautifully today. The bot was working great despite their issues in the pits. So we'll see how this shakes out. Yeah, they're t making the use of their time for sure. I think we're going to go now up to Lindsay in the pits. Lindsay, what do you have for us today? Surprise, surprise, Ricky. I have some super chats, and oh. some of them are about ciabatta. So let's get to it. Uh, the first one here is from Valerio. Ciabatta de Tona, Bora Brazil. Sure, let's do it. Uh, the next one uh, here is uh, from Joao. Ciabatta will whip everyone. And it did for a really long time uh, until it went out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, there was much whipping. <laughs> there was a lot of whipping. Uh, all right, the next one here is uh, from Mauricio. This year, it wasn't for Chibata, but his participation was very good until next year. And I feel like that's the attitude to have. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, another one uh, on behalf of Brazil from Felipe. We have so many Brazilians watching the broadcast today that we deserve our own channel in Portuguese next time. What do you think, NHRL? Rat gang conquering the world. I'm going to tell you what I would like to see, and that would be NHRL in Brazil next year. That's what I cool. want to see, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything, but if I could, like, manifest it, mm -hmm. that's what I would like. Yeah. All right, uh, from It's Bree, tell Team Defective, Bree says hello from back home. All right. Well, we say hello sweet. from here, Bree. Hello. All right, next up from Quest Williams, no Clyde, more Droopy. Quest has a one-track mind, and I it mean, is Droopy. We all love Droopy. <laughs> we do. But Clyde, Clyde deserved that win. Yeah. 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 I think so. All right, uh, the next one from Stephanie Spooner. All this triple crown talk has me wondering if there's a trophy in standby if Jamison pulls this off like they have in horse racing. No, there's not a trophy on standby. There's a crown and scepter on standby, <laughs> obviously. Obviously. <laughs> a cape as well. <laughs> and a cape. <laughs> uh, last one from Frank Melatino, Jamison Goat. Yeah. Jameson Goat. Why is there a question mark at the end of that? That's my question. I mean, Jameson Go At? Yeah. Oh, Go At. Yeah. Oh, no, they're yeah. wondering where Jameson is going. That's why the question mark's there. Oh, yeah. Where is he going? Jameson Go At. Where is he at? Somewhere? Yeah. Where is he going? Uh, that's a great question. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out today. <laughs> well, uh, I got to say, Kyle, I'm going to, right now, Take a moment, register on one of those language learning apps. Okay. I want to come back next year. I'm not, I, I, let's, let's be honest, I'm not going to get to a point in Portuguese where I can like fully uh, get through a fight. But it would be great if we could share some moments with our Portuguese fans because uh, that contingent's just growing strong. And then, you know, we end up in Portugal. I'm sorry, I end up in uh, Brazil at some point. And, uh, all the better. Yeah, actually, that's a really good idea. I'm going to download one of those things too. That's a great idea. All right, so we are going to go to the semifinal bracket for our 30-pound division. Not much to look at here, folks. We're getting down to it. First up, we've got Megatron versus Red Storm, and apparently Red Storm does have a special Megatron configuration going into that matchup. We've got Emulsifier versus Waddles. What's Waddles going to come in with? Are we going to see vertical Waddles? Are we going to see horizontal Waddles? I, oh, that is they're hard. Both, they're equally as scary at this point, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Either way, we are getting down to it. There's nothing else to look at in this bracket, man. It's just those two fights. And then we're into our world championship. Every Ooh. one of those fights is going to have 
such a high caliber of machine, of driver, of strategy. And by the way, a control bot this late into the 30 pound bracket, the hard hitting bracket, the bracket yeah. where you've got to have just an insane weapon, the bracket where we're just always like, wow, how delightful that, uh, that Megatron got this far when they're kind of half a control bot. Right, right. Even uh, they are almost a surprise. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's really cool that they got that far. It's true. Um, you know, we do have reigning defending champion Emulsifier still in it. Mm -hmm. Can't count them out. Waddles has been on an absolute tear today. I mean, that bot's looking... It's dialed in more than it ever has. It's been. looking unbeatable in so many ways. But then you look at that top side of the bracket, man, Megatron having to kind of out-control bot the control bot of Red Storm, it's going to be a tough fight. Absolutely. Speaking of which, by the way, we are going to cage one. Megatron versus Red Storm. Kevin Milcheski, Jameson Go. This is my most anticipated fight of the night so far. Yeah. Uh, it might be the most anticipated fight that we have, period. You know, after this, uh, what, what, what else is there? No, I lo would love uh, to see a good all-out brawl to the death. Uh, and there's just so much talent in the box right now uh, on, in, in every way. Top of the food chain drivers, absolutely dominant bots. Red Storm was winning fights at the last tournament with no weapon at all. So let's see what he's got in store for Jameson Go, his special Jameson configuration. And there's Jameson looking calm, looking collected, looking ready. There's Kevin looking. A little bit nervous. <laughs> just just a, a scooch. I mean, understandably so. You're going up against Jamison Go, former world champion, current holder of the giant nut. And, uh, you know, winner of what, three golden dumpsters this year? I, you know, I don't even know anymore. Two of them I, I in the same so tournament? Many, I only have so many fingers, Kyle. <laughs> And, you know, Fluffy, just looking happy to be here. Fluffy's always happy to be here. Fluffy does great work. Really, really puts in, puts in the hours. And there's the Jameson Go fighting stance. That bounce, ready to go, getting pumped Five, up, getting ready. Four, three, he knows this two, is going to be a driving match. One, he knows he's going to have to be 100% zoomed fight. in and focused to make this work. Uh, Kevin, so quick off the draw with Red Storm. Yeah, a lot of speed coming out of that bot. And uh, ground game. Oh. 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 That is excellent. Wow. What a boss. Hey. Wow. wow. Nice lift and throw from Red Store. Beautiful work. Yeah, Megatron looking like a toy there. However, uh, really unbalanced Red Storm, and that is not something Kevin can afford right now. No, yeah, it just takes one opportunity for Jameson to pin him and get some shots in, and that weapon system is going to be in a big world of hurt. All right, Jameson coming in like a vert now. That's actually a really great strategy. Just by the geometry here, he's getting a lot of great hits. Well, that's what we heard earlier, that Kevin uh, really wants to see if Jameson can rely on. He thinks that's going to give him a better lift. And it may well just. Oh, man, the uh, opportunistic driving we are seeing from Kevin Michelski right now. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, Unfortunately, really good. you can see one of the forks is bent up on Red Storm. That is going to make it really hard to do a full suplex moving forward. Not impossible. Wow, beautiful shot there for Megatron. Another one right in a row. Third grinding shot after the fact for good measure. Just trying to pick away at that other side of forks and try to limit their ability to get underneath them as much as humanly possible. Red Storm has been winning the ground game engagements thus far. Spinning around was a really good strategic move for Megatron at this point. Uh, I see uh, quite the level of damage on the left side of Red Storm right now. Nice shot there, just launching Red Storm across the box into the wall. Oh, 
both drive sides really suffering now. Might be completely disabled. This is not the place to be for Red Storm. Wow, yeah, still not going completely. in for the kill, though, for Megatron. That is unlike them. He's more likely to kind of hold back and wait to see movement before he goes in for that hit. Uh, on a control bot, he has a little more leeway to uh, take that step. Be that little bit more aggressive. Not a surprise there. Knockout from Megatron. Moving on into the finals. That is just one step closer to a possible Triple Crown win. The winner of the next matchup, Emulsifier versus Waddles, will be going on. Could we have, for what, the third year in a row, an Emulsifier Megatron 30 pound final? It is more than possible, Kyle. Those two bots have had a storied history, back and forth, just volleys of attacks. They are really each other's kryptonite in so many ways. Man, look at this driving. Kevin was off to such a great start here, uh, but even the uh, smallest most calculation was enough to get the drive system and the fork system on Red Storm just a little tweaked. And frankly, there's no room for that in a fight like this. Uh, once you are performing anything less than your best, your opponent is going to take advantage of it, uh, and you're going to get taken to the cleaners, which is exactly what happened here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, last year in that final, we did have Megatron versus Emulsifier, and that was a very war-weary Megatron. Megatron that had been through a lot, and, they, and Jameson had really just kind of been welding it back together throughout the entire year. This year, Jameson's come into the finals with two full copies of Megatron, brand new, new components in both of them, ready to go, completely different strategy and game plan for him this year. And it might work out well for him. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not going to hurt. Yeah, it's been working out so far. He has made it into the finals. All right, let's go upstairs to Chris. Chris, what you got you go. for us? Hey, guys. So, like we just saw, yeah, Jameson is on a tear in the 12-pound division. He still has Psycho in the mix. However, I'm here with Joe Durfler and Huge behind me, who is one of those bots that stands in his way. Joe, Huge looks pristine. Yeah, it looks pretty good for only having one match today. That's right. Uh, you know, with a uh, essentially a, a pass uh, given to you uh, because the two you you guys were going to fight at one point, but you you got to move ahead, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, Disco forfeited to me, and then I think Tyrannor, or um, the other robot forfeited, and then I got a buy. So I uh, fought at 6:30 today. So it's been a long day. That is, that's a, both a good thing and a bad thing because, you know, like you and I were talking about, you haven't had a lot of time on the sticks tonight. However, the good thing is that is one brand spanking new looking bot. Uh, let, me let me ask you, uh, going in against Psycho, against Jameson Go, what's your strategy and are you using this brand new bot to your advantage? So whenever I fought Jameson last time, last September, it was a different robot at that time. Um, so there's a couple new upgrades to it that I'm looking forward to showing. Uh, changes that I made specifically for that fight and what won last year for the December finals. So um, it'll be a good match. I mean, I want to see what this robot is capable of. Um, it's going to be a good fight either way. As far as your strategy going in, you're just going to try to get on top of him the entire time? Yeah, I think I just got to stay on top of him. Uh, I can't let him turn me around specifically. I feel like he's going to try to zoom around me in circles and try to get me leveling upside down, and then he'll come in for the pot shot. So, um, but again, we'll see. We'll, we're going to play it by ear. Every match, you know, fly by the seat of your pants, essentially. So, Joe, uh, good luck. You know, you're this close. I, I you know, I think that you got a real shot here. So, any any last words? Try my best. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. And thank you, Luke, for joining us. Hello, Ricky. Hello. Ricky, uh, we are in the round of four for all three weight classes. There are just two fights left in each of these uh, weight classes mm -hmm. to win the Golden Brett. Uh, it is super exciting. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. And the fights we've had to get here have been incredible. The fights that we are going to continue to see to finish it out, no doubt incredible. It's an exciting day.
Yeah. And you know, I, frankly, it's going pretty smooth. I mentioned earlier that uh, it seems like there's almost a calm in the air. Everyone is focused. Everyone is dedicated. Despite the high stakes, everyone is... Ricky, we're calm. Uh, I don't think that they're calm up there. I, I, the stakes are incredibly high. Yeah. There's $900,000 worth of charity money that's on the line for first, second, and third place for all three weight classes. And uh, there's only four robots that are left in all of these weight classes. Only one of these people is going to be out and uh, not able to donate anything. Well, you know what? Considering that, I'd say that's very calm, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I get, I, if there's a $25 prize, sure. I'm like, what, what am I going to do? Right, yeah. If there was a $1,000 prize, I'd be outside like... Yeah, you of know, course. Nine hundred thousand right. dollars is, is floating around in the yeah. ether. Yeah, yeah, nine hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to be deciding that in the next like hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, yeah. No, I just it's huge. The stakes are incredibly high, Ricky. Yeah, and somehow these people are still functioning humans. I think that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you go up there, but there's a lot Your of people. Your bar that are is just, very high. There, there are people who are <laughs> rocking in the corners up there in the pits right that's, now. That's okay? that's what I want to see. Yeah, <laughs> they're just hiding it from me very well. Over in cage one, we have a, uh, you know, collective amassing themselves. Emulsifier is going to go up against Waddles. Now, we talked a little about how uh, Waddles had a few choices here. They're a modular bot. They can go with a vertical spinner. They can go with a horizontal spinner. It looks like they went with their horizontal setup. Uh, I can't now, quite Ricky, see. Now, Ricky, I wasn't able. I was walking around uh, during this fight, the Waddles and Chibata fight. Did you understand what was happening with the locked cases and everything there? With the lock. Oh, let's go really? to the tail of type. So we'll, we'll okay. circle back. All right, I'll tell you about this. Yeah. Uh, whew, Matt coming in from Hillard, Ohio. An incredible 21 to 5 record. 18 of those are KOs. Uh, he is a three time first place winner here. Going up against Brian Boxel, a, another force to be reckoned with. Uh, a little bit closer, coming in from Massachusetts with a uh, still impressive, but not quite as impressive 13 to 5 record. 10 KOs and a second place win. Clearly on paper, Emulsifier is the force to be reckoned with, but we have seen Waddles so dialed in today. Such yeah. good performances. Uh, it is absolutely anybody's game. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you this little Waddle story yes, yes. here because we have some time as they're, they're loading in. This was delightful. Okay. Um, now, Waddles and Shibata, they both came down from the pits with two versions of the robot each, mm -hmm. and they were locked in suitcases, and they refused to show one another what their configuration was. I... Waddles had a vert and a horizontal. Shibata had a... Um, what is happening here? I'm hearing cheering. Something is happening. The crowd oh, is pumped. The Waddles team is uh, amping up the crowd over there. Uh, I'm going to see if I can tell this faster. Uh, so they refused to uh, reveal their, uh, their configuration, so they had to choose one case at random, put them in, and then they opened them up, and they couldn't go back to the other configuration. Wow. It's yeah. a Monty Hall problem of robot world. Absolutely. It's incredible. It was a factor in that fight. Yeah, it, it would have to be. I mean, the configurations people are choosing from in these fights is non-trivial. All right, now these, uh, these competitors are ready to go. The box is locked here in cage one. We've got Matt Boris and Emulsifier in the pink corner facing off against Team WPI and Waddles. Five. And as I thought, that Three, is a, a ho two, <laughs> men's horizontal one, spinner on Waddles. Five, I think that's the five. right move. Now I'm looking for massive concussive hits. Whoa, from oh, there is one! Everything all the way up the city out of the lights. Incredible! The wheels are starting to come off of Waddles already. Huge amounts of damage. The weapon not spinning on Waddles yet. We'll see if it can revive itself. Mad Boris is out for blood here. Incredible. They just stripped that, uh, that robot. Emulsifier is celebrating here. This is a knockout. Wow. All you can do is go and sign autographs. Uh, collect your robot later, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> 
My good, that is, I think that is one step up from that immense hit we saw earlier with Kablooey Tango. This is the most destructive hit we have had here today at the championships. Wow. Now, Emulsifier will advance to the finals where they will face Jameson Go and Megatron. Uh, this is Jameson's first stop on his Triple Crown Tour. Uh, Ricky. Emulsifier versus Megatron, an incredible finish here for the 30s. I cannot wait to see that fight. Stunning, truly yeah. stunning. And don't forget too, we are going to have the third place fight, Red Storm going up against Waddles. Uh, I'm interested to see what's left of those two robots when it comes time for that fight. Absolutely punishing semifinals here. And uh, yeah, Waddles and Red Storm, uh, they're really gonna have to put themselves back together here. Let's take a look at this replay. I just love this shot of Waddles going up into the camera. Look at that. Wow. It just got closer and closer and closer, Ricky. Delightful. Emulsifier is one of the scariest uh, robots here in the competition. Really, really big weapon here, and it just refused to die here in this fight. Popping off that weapon module completely. That robot uh, was in two almost equally sized pieces at the end. Yeah, it was very evenly bifurcated. You can see teams Bots FC here celebrating. They love to see the carnage and brutality from Emulsifier. Just entrails all around, all Eric, around that arena. Eric Wrigley just sh you know, flashing the heart there into the camera. Yeah, Pretty yeah, great. Just, big, just a lot of love. Yeah, wow. Okay. Whew. All right. Well, wow, that was exciting. It's thrilling. You love to see an explosive semifinal. I do. And we're setting up the two best 30 pounders in the world right now facing off in the finals. It feels right. It does. It does. I think. Whew, I mean, what's to talk about in this bracket? It's Megatron versus Emulsifier, folks. I mean, not shown again is that Red Storm versus Waddles fight for third place. Uh, that does matter. There's a lot of charity money on the line for third place. But let's, I mean, when I say a lot of money, let's, let's be clear, that's $50,000 for third place. $100,000 uh, for second place. And, and do tell what comes with first place, Lou? A $150,000 donation to the STEM charity of your choice you can take home first place. Bonkers. Now that's beyond the cash prize. If, uh, you know, the winner of the 30 pound division is going to be taking home $15,000 in cash, mm -hmm. just put that right in your pocket. Right in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's stunning. But yeah, Emulsifier Megatron is, uh, talk about two things that are like locked in horns. Yeah. Just year after year, they they're, are they're, they're like They're like eternal, uh, like kind of foes that uh, yeah. you know, face one another every set, hundred years or something, uh, you know? Set on each other by fate. Yes. Yeah. It's written in the stars that their mortal enemy yeah. uh, kind of natures will, will come exactly. and clash. Let's take a look here at the 12 pound bracket here. Now uh, we've just completed the semifinals here in the 12s. Let's take a look here. Uh, oh no, we haven't. We're going to go into the semifinals. Right. Psycho is going to face off against Huge. Full Chord is going to be facing off against Donald Sung and Torrent. Now there's only four robots left in the bracket. Three of them are going to be donating money to charity. And one unlucky person is going to be taking home fourth place. But these are robots that have gone incredibly deep in the competition here today. Two fights left to, uh, for the winner. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's check in with Chris in the pits. Hello, Chris. Hey. Hey, hey. So, yeah, I'm here next to Matt Boris, Emulsifier. We just saw a hit on Waddles, it, maybe the biggest hit of the day. T uh, tell us exactly what happened there, Matt. Well, first of all, we, we went to the box with forks on because they had their configuration hidden in a crate. So, you know, we, we had to pick our configuration. We were told to pick one, so we picked one. I thought we picked the wrong one when I saw them come out with the horizontal. So at that point, I'm like, we just have to box rush them before that blade gets up to speed. I stayed on them as best as I could, and I, I got fortunate. I got, a look, I got a hit there, and it completely shared their frame in half. I'm curious if we could even see some of this damage right here around the corner. Brian, get, could we just see what on earth happened to Waddles? Look at that. Wow. 
bottom blade. We're a multi-bot now. <laughs> oh my goodness. All of the electronics used to be in here. Where's the other half? Uh, so I'm not sure where the other half is. No, remember. Uh, Matt, so you're, you're, you and Emulsifier are, you're, you're, right, oh my interestingly, it didn't break where our module attaches, our, ch yeah, uh, the, the weapon module, to, like, swap out our undercut or invert, are these four bolts, which are still there, it was the rest of the chassis that failed. That is probably the biggest hit I've ever dished out with that Emulsifier. Was yeah, that was pretty rad. Matt, uh, um, Emulsifier... Uh, and, and yourself are, are essentially the uh, the last hurdle for a Megatron run. So we have two of the best 30 pounders on planet Earth going head to head at the 2023 championships. What are you doing against Megatron? We fought Megatron four times in the last two years, and I think we're two and two against each other, and it's going to be a dogfight. Um, you know, if you've seen our matches before, our strategy going against him is. You know, obviously we're going to probably run forks, but he's such a good driver and you can't really outdrive him with a big vert. So you kind of got to drive a little erratic, hope he makes a mistake and then just stay on him. You can't let off him once you get on, once you get an advantage. I'll, I'll let you get through the bot. Good luck. Thank you. you know, this is it. Thank you. Back to you guys. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. Incredible. That brutality of that hit, just ripping apart the frame on the robot. Amazing. Yeah, and you got to remember, too, these robots are designed with breakpoints. I mean, they are designed, you, most of them have a place where you're like, oh, I think if this is going to break, it's going to break here. Or, yeah. Or this is the place where this is attached. I assume right. these bolts will break. No, it just, no. Just a spontaneous, uh, you know, deconstruction there. Yeah. Rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Yeah. We're going to go to cage four. Oh, oh, wow. That's a familiar sight. Here we go. It's Jameson Go. He's only half stancing right now. There was also some sort of horrible monster in the background. Yeah. Let's take a look uh, here at the tail of the tape here. Now, uh, in the pink corner, we've got Jameson Go from Cambridge, Massachusetts with Psycho with a record of 20 and 4 and uh, really just absolutely going through this, this, uh, this field today like a hot knife through butter. Facing off against Joe Durfler from Pittsburgh with a record of 21 and 6. Now, these are two very similar records, and uh, both Huge and Psycho have a tendency to win by knockout. If this match goes the full three minutes, I'm going to be surprised. These are two absolute killers in the 12s. Yeah, these are absolute heavy hitters, um, consummate robot builders and competitors. Now, huge is a design that's uh, here to snipe vertical uh, Five, robots' belts. Four, mm -hmm. So uh, three, we're going to be seeing two, if they can one, line up the fight, shot and, and snipe fight. this belt. Here we go. Wow, good huge. box rush here from yeah, huge. Yeah, spun up very quickly, moving very solidly as well. The absolute speed on huge is shocking. Both of these robots are quick, but seeing something as large as huge move that quickly across the arena is something else. Now, really what Psycho is doing here is trying to eat away at these wheels, try and bring that weapon closer and closer to the ground. Ideally, you want to have Yuja's weapon dragging on the ground so it slows down and you can really start to go to work. Every other huge style uh, offense has just not been effective. Yuja is an incredibly difficult robot to plan for. It is. It is. So far, uh, Psycho has been able to dodge all of the attacks. Oh, as uh, soon as he said it, Ricky. Yeah, well, I just curse things. Oh, oh my, that weapon blade is spinning down. No, just taking a moment, taking a breather. Oh, Ooh. another big weapon on weapon hits. Yeah, I don't know if there was a clear winner of that exchange, but both robots still functioning beautifully. Now really here, what you want to do is survive if you're Psycho. You want to rack up some kind of damage points. You want to keep your weapon going and you want to show aggression. Ooh. It's kind of tough with Huge to show aggression because it's not typically the robot that's pursuing its its opponent. Right, right. It would love to land a big, just knockout snipe Ooh. on the belt. Oh, another that big, was weapon, a big weapon hit. hit. Oh, Psycho has, uh, I think that weapon might be down. Yeah, it's very quiet in the box. Did yeah. they succeed in sniping that belt? Oh. It's not booze, it's huge! 
tricky. This is the moment Huge needs to uh, uh, take off the kick gloves. Pick, uh, attack, make sure they don't break themselves, but uh, rack up that damage and aggression. Yeah, this is not the time to uh, hang back and wait for Psycho to come to them. They are dramatic. Oh, that weapon has... Oh, no, there it is. Yeah, that is a... Um, that could be a strategy. That could be an artifact of just the, the motor controller on the weapon. Oh, yep, you can hear it. It is uh, resetting itself. That weapon is spinning up, but it... Uh, I, yeah. they, even if they're not doing it intentionally, it would be a good move for them to keep that weapon at a moderate speed. 30 seconds left here in this fight. You're 30 Ooh, seconds away from... big hit from, there. Uh, seeing who advances to the finals here. Oh, Psycho is back on its feet. Right side up again. Now, is Psycho's weapon back up? I... It sounds like Psycho's weapon. I can't tell. Um, it looks like it may well be. Psycho's weapon coming back in this, the last part of this fight. Psycho's weapon is running, Luke. Yeah, it sure is, Luke. That was a... Uh, a last-minute rejuvenation. Wow, okay, damage. Not much permanent damage. No, Psycho's no. Psycho's weapon went down slightly in the middle of the fight. I would call that more than slightly, but yeah, sure. it did come back. It wasn't yeah. permanently damaged. Aggression. Huge was able to bring weapon-based aggression for the entire match. Half okay. the match... Psycho was unable to do that, and the match when they were both able to do that, I still think Huge kind of inched out a little bit more. Right. Uh, that set control, probably a slight edge, uh, unsurprisingly, given the type of robot to Psycho. So. Wow, this is going to be a close, close fight. Uh, you know, you love to see two champions in the sport, you know, go into the box and exit essentially uh, the same way that they came in. Uh, after trading blows, this was a really destructive match, but both of these robots really survived until the end. It really shows you the level of durability and refinement that these robots feature at this point. Uh, these are really dialed in. You can see Joe Durfler there, um, very happy with his performance. This is one of those fights where you take it to the judges and really like, Either decision you can't really be upset with. You know that you did the best that you could inside of the box. Um, and there wasn't one of these just absolute clear winners. I could see a case made for either Psycho or Huge here. Yeah, I definitely have a favor, um, a favorite in my mind. But at the same time, uh, don't let it go to the judges. It's, it's one of those moments. Uh, an argument could be made. I don't think anyone's going to be like heartbroken yeah. in, in, with anger anyway uh, yeah. at this point. Uh, now, to cool. mount a credible defense against Huge, what you really need is just a, a massive arm that just spins like 360 degrees. Uh, that's a just great idea. It punts the body of just way up into the air. You know I what I'm saying? I can't believe the genius that you've just leveled at me. Yeah. Right now, that's Yeah, have you ever, have you ever thought about that? Maybe like a, like a five and a half foot but you know, you should maybe six, add, I was going to say add half, another half foot. Six, six feet, just like Ish. really big, just armed. Just right. Whoosh. Right. It had to you be very strong. Yeah. And the rest really of the strong. robot would also have to be large to go along with that. Just that, well, I mean, because it'd be very tall. Right. So you wouldn't yeah. need it to be wide. And, and so you need to have it kind of long. It might be huge itself. Maybe like a triangle shaped, you know? Could Teeny, be. Teeny tiny little Triangles are strong. Wheels, though. Okay. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> All right. We've got a judge's decision in this. Uh, Neil, tell me. Really? Wow. wow. A unanimous judge's decision for Jameson Go and Psycho. I, I am stunned. I am also surprised. Ricky. I thought that was going to be unanimous in the other direction. Maybe one, you know. I thought it was gonna, going to be split for you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, there was so much damage uh, on Psycho's weapon and virtually no damage on Huge at all. Yeah, I, I thought watching the end of the match that maybe Huge had taken some wheel damage, something along those lines. I think lines. it was probably because... It was just out of, out, of, uh, out of round was all. If I'm going to guess, it was probably because Huge just kind of pivoted in place and didn't pursue as much as Psycho. However, that is the Huge strategy. Yeah, not, not only that, but there was a lot of um, kind of gyroscope. They do this dance and drop right. thing that is a very... Uh, purposeful attacking movement when you're watching for it. So 
I, I don't know. Again, it was one of those things. It could have gone either way, but uh, not not how I would have seen it. Let's yeah. go to Chris, see if there's some more info uh, in the pits or cage side. Chris, where are you and what can you tell me? I'm, I'm standing next to Jameson Go, who just went toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with Huge. Uh, what a duel. Uh, J-Mo, the, the following match is brought to you, sponsored by Red Bull. Uh, Jamo, tell, tell me what happened in that match, and what else are you, do you have going on in your pit here? I know that you have two other fights kind of looming over you. Uh, well, we fought huge before and was thinking about executing the exact same strategy. It was a lot of patience, a lot of loopy driving, just trying to stay tight circles so that we could be the aggressor and he would be on the defensive. I think that would help us with the control and aggression points. I got a little bit too cocky. I wanted to go for some big hits, so I went for blade to blade and it almost cost me. It looks like they hit somewhere on the weapon uprights, which kind of jammed it up for a little bit. And then I got flipped over and this and that, and I'm like, oh, I, you know, so, it's probably, it looked like his fight, but the weapon, I was able to throttle it a bunch, get it to turn over, and it powered through whatever was in its way. Yeah, it sounded like the desk, and you know, everyone up here in the pits, it looked like maybe a belt got sniped or something like that, but it was actually your, your weapon getting pinched for that 60 seconds that you were down? It looks like it. So if I look closer at this, the, uh, one of the weapon shaft seems to have slid out, slid out a little bit, so it's probably rubbing on the uh, belt side right here where my finger is. So that's probably the cause for why it was a little bit hung up, so a little bit extra friction on that zone. But, you know, the bot's got a lot of heart, and sometimes that heart is actually battery, but it was able to push through whatever was in its way. Jamo, I know you got a lot going on. I know you got a couple more fights to get ready for, so good luck. Wow. Whew. James and Go trying to get that Red Bull money here. Think yeah. That. that is that is some premium product placement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's put a dollar amount on that, James, and we're going to send you a bill. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got a really polite letter once from Monster Energy. Okay. Um, they said, please stop abusing our product, Richard. It's almost, almost worth the work. <laughs> We're going to go into, what is this, cage number one. Uh, you can see a, a number of robots lined up here. Full court going up against Torrent. Coleman Christie bringing full court all the way from Long Beach, California. An eight and six record. Only one of those is a KO. I'm surprised. I thought it would be like 15 KOs. That's such a <laughs> fearsome robot, Ricky. I will talk. We'll catch up on that later. Going over to Donald Sung, coming up from North Carolina with his 11 and five record, eight KOs, uh, and just barely inching out a winning record when it comes to judges' decisions. Luke, I wanna, I wanna circle back here. We've been talking yeah. about what sort of crafts would just delight you. Crafts. You know, crafts, yeah, like, you know, like, like embroidery uh, crafts, or sewing, yeah, plushy, and all. I think across uh -huh. the board, uh, full court based crafts oh. is what we think that you would enjoy. I think that those little hands could uh, maybe perhaps knit me a sweater. Right, exactly. I don't know if they could lift an opponent, though. No, probably not. Yeah, they could furiously tap an opponent. Right, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, you know, your rule of thumb should be if you look at a robot and you're like, oh, I could just uh, step on the uh, weapon to stop it from attacking me. Mm -hmm. It's not a weapon. It's not an active weapon. Got it. Got okay. it. Did not. I, I will say, seriously, I do feel like if you're going to have a lifter, it should be able to lift your opponent. I don't think that um, I, I just don't think that it's there. You yeah. Know? Well, I you know, I don't know. I think I would want to see a robot placed on the lifter and see if it can do the lift. It can't even touch its opponent. It yeah, has if it, to have but if the it did opponent touch. drive up onto that right, teeny right. little finger. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then could it lift? It's incredible. It's incredible. I'm glad Donald you think it's Sun incredible. Donald is my I, last hope here. I agree. It is Four, incredible, Luke. Three, I'm going to take that as a direct compliment two, to Full Court. Robots fight. All right. Full Court here coming out. Appropriately, looks like it took over the full box. That thing is so wide. Wow, Torrent shredding into these drive pods. Donald Sung, wow. Crash Fest coming in, trying to help. Both robots really, wow. wow. Popping full court in the air. Yeah, Torrent is having none of these full court shenanigans. Wow, Thunderchild going up against Crash Fest here in the foreground. So thundery. 
Donald Sugville successfully uh, getting under full court several times. So that is a good full 10 second pin. Wow, the crowd is booing, Ricky. The crowd is booing. Wow, I'm just stunned. Really what you're trying to do if you're Donald Sung is to find an angle here. And I just saw one of Crash Fest's wheels. Thunderchild scoring damage here. Wow, Crash Fest is on its own. Uh, Crash Fest is, is dead. A torrent is on its own here. Oh boy, and that is a very the quiet power arena. could be out on torrent. Those wheels are not spinning. Not so. Uh, wow. No, oh, fearsome not. weapons here. Here we go. Let, let's be honest. Those those are intimidating little wagglers. Yeah, right. It's like uh, I feel like uh, somebody is chastising me. You right. know? Right. Think about like the nun uh, that followed you around as a kid, telling you what to do and not do. All right, Just drive waving. is back on torrent, but I'm not hearing that weapon. No, it, uh, it's doing its best to stay active, stay engaged. Torrent is on its head. Wow, I really hope that Full Court uh, would be able to help Torrent back onto its feet. No, nope, it's going to waggle. It's going to oh, waggle amazing. real hard. It is incredible. I think this robot incredible. should come back and just be named Wino, okay? Weapon in name only, Oh, Ricky. I, I thought you meant it had a drinking problem. Yeah, there you go. 35 seconds left here. I think it should just Full come back. Is going to the finals, Ricky. Yes, yes it is. This yeah. is almost assuredly at this point. Yeah. A design that was carefully calculated and has paid off, Luke. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's go with that, Ricky. Mm -hmm. As we enter the last 10 seconds of the match, the judges in love with full court. Yeah, and, the judges. Uh, their dominating strategy here. The judges are just gonna I don't know. Quietly. Full Look court is going to just give me a drinking problem, Ricky. Okay. All right. This is. You can uh, both. You can wow. both do that. Here we go. Good. Good. Judge's decision here. Yeah. I'm assuming a unanimous judge's decision. It's your favorite outcome, right? Yeah. There we go. I think it's beautiful. I mean, listen. This was dominant driving from full court. I'm not going to take that away from Coleman. No. But uh, yeah, we we require active weapons here. We do. We do. I'm, I'm not in charge of uh, safety, you know, in terms of like, you know, when you go up into safety, when you first get here, they take a look at your configurations. Mm -hmm. They decide whether it's an active weapon or not. Right, right. Somebody should be getting fired up there in safety here uh, today. Wow. Okay. Impressive. Strong words. Send a memo to Kelly. Uh huh. Right? <laughs> okay. All right. Final match of the year, probably for uh, Donald Sung. Well, no, they're, they're engineer from Meta. There is still cool. the small matter of the third place fight. Okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. Neither of these robots is going home after this match. Sure, that's they, true. They both have one more shot. Final a, bracket fight, you know, like yeah. for, I, the, uh, for the... I understand what you're getting at, but yeah. let's not overlook the fact that both of these robots, do, regardless of how this goes, are going to have another chance to fight for $50,000. All right, let's take a look here at this replay, this thrilling, thrilling replay, Ricky. Oh, right. Just absolute domination from these active weapons on full court. And I, I will say this: that will not die, Ricky. <laughs> All right, it, it's uh, infinitely milkable. Uh, I told myself this morning I was going to be positive. Okay, positively furious <laughs> at full court the yeah. entire night. I think that uh, Torrent actually did a really good job here. It's really hard to get the kind of hits uh, on full court that Torrent was able to accomplish. Yeah, they did well. They did very well with a very tough matchup. Now, uh, it just uh, wasn't quite enough. If this goes the way we think it's going to go, the final will be Psycho and full court. Kind of amazing. Yeah, so a Torrent style robot. And right. we're going to see if Jameson goes. The judge's can do decision it. coming just in. Heard. The judges are in. Unanimous full court. It will, in are these, fact, are these, is be this a despair full that I hear from the audience. It's uh, perplexitude. Okay. Yeah. No, we go. are going to have a psycho full court final. Uh, Luke, I don't mean to alarm you, but okay. we are just a, a hair's breadth away from full court walking home with a golden Brett. Let's go and check in with Chris. Hello, Chris. He can't even respond to that, folks. It's that disturbing to him. 
Hey guys, uh, I'm up here with a couple of cheeky fellas, uh, Calvin Eba and Tommy Wong, and Booty Brigade. Uh, you guys have a fight coming up against Monkfish, a, a bot that really kind of came out of nowhere uh, in September and went on an 8-0 tear. Uh, you know, you guys were there in September as well. Uh, let, me, let me ask you, what is your strategy going into that match? Uh, we're going to treat it kind of like how I fight Droopy. Um, so I'm going to try to uh, approach slow and um, control the engagement. Um, I mean, Mugfish has been tearing it up in the Midwest, so I'm excited to fight it. You're going to approach this fight like you're fighting Droopy, but you're fighting with Droopy. Yeah, um, and hopefully Droopy can do some uh, good damage, too. Um, his blades hit at weird heights, and hopefully that will, like, uh, snare them up or something. Tommy, are you concerned at all that uh, Droopy is going into this next uh, fight with a big crack in it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the crack is just massive on this. So this is definitely going to be a big liability, so we'll really have to watch out. But overall, my plan is just to hit things until they break, so. Good luck in the next match. Hopefully we see you in the final, all right? Back to you guys. Oh, boy. Thanks, Chris. I, uh, I just simply love those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Every time they show up, I am pleased. All right, let's take a look here at our three pound brackets. Now we've got Silent Spring facing off against Supreme Ruler in the semifinals. Monkfish going to be facing off against Booty Brigade, which we just saw up there. And uh, very exciting. I see that we've loaded into cage three, Silent Spring and Supreme Ruler. This is uh, just two more fights for one of these robots to be crowned this year's champion in the Beetleweights. I am very excited about this fight. I really, I, I know you're gonna fight me on this one, Luke, but a Supreme Ruler Silent Spring fight, I think is just deeply interesting. And when you throw a flamethrower in the mix, even better. Yeah. Jameson Go is, uh, has been watching a lot of tape getting ready for this fight. He's been thinking a lot about his configuration. He is running an undercutter here, uh, yep. which is the right call. You know, when you have your uh, opponent's forks so low to the ground, you want to come down to their level and see if you can impact those forks. We'll, we'll see how it works. I know those forks bend a lot, but that is also sometimes a liability for an undercutter. It can get caught up. I mean, be. Jameson can also go after the flamethrower thr first, you know, yep. try and uh, knock that out, score a lot of damage that way. Supreme Ruler has a tendency to bring it to the judges, and uh, Psycho is a pretty tough opponent. Okay, let's take a look here at the tail of the tape. James Go bringing this, uh, this robot here from Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is one of the very few Beetleweights that is inducted into the Combat Robot Hall of Fame. Silent Spring is incredible. With a 62 and 11 record here at NHRL and uh, six golden dumpsters in its career. Facing off against Jeff Waters from North Las Vegas, the captain of Jackpot. Got a lot of fans here in the audience for this control bot. Yeah, yeah, I am, again, just overwhelmingly excited five, to see four, this fight. Three, Such a difference two, in approach. One, Who fight. knows what's gonna happen? Robots fight. So a tentative start and a big flamethrower here from a uh, Oh from my Supreme goodness, Ruler. Supreme Ruler doing exactly what it wants to do. Holding that golden dumpster winner hostage while it gets barbecued. Wow, this is the exact uh, exact strategy that Supreme Ruler has been using to such great Look at effect that, and again, year. immediately repeating that process, pinning its opponent, filling it with fire. Interesting note, Luke. Uh, Silent Spring has absolutely no flame retardants applied. I was just going to say that. I'm not seeing any oh, uh, and I see a lot of uh, aluminum tape off. on this robot at all. Wow. That is a lot of fire. Just burning that drive pod and silent spring moving more slowly over than and expected. Over and over again. Pin after pin after pin here. Now, Ricky, this is a weapon that can affect the outcome of the match, okay? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Dramatically so, I would say. Look at this. I, I've i spoken uh, with the Supreme Ruler team. There's not that much fuel in their flamethrower. I don't know if they expected to have this many chances uh, to burn their opponent. 
Now, Jamison Go is losing this fight. The first 90 seconds of this fight, he has lost almost all of the points. Yeah, th this is entirely one-sided so far. He's going to have uh, to turn it on here and start scoring damage. But this, it's not happening. No, Supreme this is a Kim ruler. entirely um, unknown feeling uh, lately for, for Jameson. Um, and I love that the flamethrower is just still here, uh, still fearsome. But it almost doesn't have to be. At this point, even without the flamethrower, Supreme Ruler is just overwhelmingly dominant. As control bots go, this is an incredible design. A leap forward, the cam lifter design. I do think that, honestly, in the future, dead forks are going to be just a relic of the past. We're going to see a lot of active forks. This twisting motion is incredibly uh, competitive. It is way, way better than like the kind of vertically lifting forks in this sport. 30 Thanks. seconds left here. Jameson Go is going to lose this by unanimous judge's decision here, Ricky. They're really just calling it like you see it today, Luke. I like this, this new bold flavor. Listen, I've always been bold, Ricky, okay? Look at this. Jameson is being bodied. This is uh, the greatest combat robot builder of our generation and uh, losing here to Supreme Ruler. Well, Luke, I'm... I, you know, that's a, a debatable thing to start with, but I'm going to come back and say you're going to have to stop saying that after this fight if uh, if this keeps happening to Jameson. Like, wow. That is... That is overwhelming. Okay. All right. This is great. This is great. Everything's fine. You know what's so great about you saying that is that there was literally a fire going uh -huh. in the background that completes the picture of this is fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, I'm just a dog sitting on a stool, drinking coffee, and everything is fine. Everything's on fire. Everything's can I, fine. Can I just point out that um, okay. Supreme Ruler is either going to walk home with $100,000 or $150,000 for the charity of their choice at this point. It's locked in. Yeah. Minimum $100,000 walk away. Right. And the triple crown. It's been shattered. It has, it has slipped through Jameson's fingers. It's this gone. is not that year. It's going to maybe be the double crown. No, no, the double crown's not a thing. That's is it not? No, not a thing. Could be. We could just make it up That's, here, Ricky. Uh, double, double crown sounds like something you get at Burger King. Yeah. There I think, you go. I think we could... Oh, man, look at that. This is a largely 3D printed robot. This is a robot that was formed by heating up metal and pressing plastic through it. In now, a... I wonder if anything is actually melted on the robot. It you... was moving slowly. Look at it. I mean, the, the armor is not really armory in some areas, to say the least. Okay. That is so much barbecue. I'm so hungry, Luke. Yeah. No one brings me food. You're not eating throughout this? Is I am. Right? It's just not. There's, I'm on screen long enough. That's time I'm oh, not let's eating. Let's take a look here let's at go this back. thrilling replay here. You know what? We could just loop this. This one yeah, single this pin over and over for again. three minutes in real time. Okay? Uh, this is fantastic for our sport. This is really going to bring in a lot of new viewers, Ricky. Okay, I gonna think see it's this, incredible. They're going to be electrified. Here's okay? the deal. Luke, let's, let's be very honest here. If you didn't have Supreme Rulers showing up at this stage and barbecuing uh, Silent Spring, okay, then there is no uh, good paper to Jameson's Rock. If you don't have this, this is balancing, everyone, this is rock paper scissors gun. Okay, this is this is the this is the evolution of the sport, and it's going in some weird mutant direction. Okay. Hey. We, I'm going to go ahead and seed this whole area with mutagens <laughs> until we get progressively weirder robots. Okay. That's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, interesting. Okay. The Good. more we can mutate things, the more interesting the outcome. I think that this uh, was just one of these lopsided, all three judges' cards are just all points yeah, go this to Supreme just, Ruler. Someone didn't, they just... Aggression. Yeah. Control. Yes. Damage. Yes. Yes. Damage. Yeah. Yeah, they're smoking slightly, you mm -hmm. know? Oh, uh, okay, we are getting just word. In. Neil, tell me. Okay, what do we got? here we go. All right. Oh, across the board. Good. You know, I missed decision. I'm going to walk home to I, the hotel. It's I a very actually long thought. distance, and I'm just going to think quietly <laughs> With to myself. With that, that, that Charlie Brown music playing. Yeah. No, I'm just going to be staring up at the, the lights in the sky and just being like, 
is this sport? Is this? Is it over? Is it over? It's over. It's, it's over. That's everyone's gonna have cam lifters next year. Listen, it's gonna be over. This is the wonderful thing, Luke. If everyone shows up with cam lifters next year, someone's gonna show up with the thing that destroys all the cam lifters next year. They haven't done it yet, Ricky. That's because cam lifters are new and interesting. These are and the smartest builders on the planet, and they couldn't come up with something for the finals. Everyone just ran their exact normal robot here. Did they you knew expect the Supreme did Ruler you expect was here? This was like Words. Um, no. No, exactly. I thought something better was going to happen. Ooh, we got to break you of that optimism, Luke. Wow. Okay. All right, a uh, dominant match. I think that was amazing. I think the viewers think that it was amazing. I bet Super Chats would reflect how amazing that yeah, fight yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. If you love Supreme Ruler, send in a Super Chat, please. Yeah. Or if you don't love Supreme Ruler, send in a Super Chat. All right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the people want to see. They want to see Monkfish, okay? Okay, fair. They want to see something awesome like this, some I walking agree. robot I agree. that's got a lot of personality. Let me throw this out there at you, Luke. What happens when a, uh, a robot like Booty Brigade goes up against a robot like Supreme Ruler? One of them getting up on the forks and the other one coming around and just sniping the back. They'll probably just start uh, collecting them. You know what I'm saying? It's possible. Let's see here. Tale of the tape. Rachel DeGuzman coming in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. An incredible 12 and 1 record. Nine of those being KOs. She debuted in September of this year with this robot. That is incredible. Nine KOs, 12 wins since September. And a golden dumpster in her pocket. Yeah, absolutely stunning. On the flip side, we have Tommy Wong coming in from California with a 10 and 2 record all 10 of those being KOs also debuted with this robot in September 2023 these are new designs these are experimental designs anything could happen and I am on the edge of my seat to see just how it's going to play out there's some design similarities between Monkfish's weapon and the weapons on Droopy and Monkfish has just shown absolute bulletproof reliability. This is going to be a super huge fight for both of them because uh, these are formidable opponents uh, on both sides of the cage. Now these are two loophole style robots and that uh, Monkfish's mini bot is closer to a multi bot. You know, like that is a pretty heavy full sized robot. Absolutely. And uh, so we could see like some two on two action here where they split up and go after different robots. Very possible. Cut the tension here with a knife, Ricky. Yeah, I, I said I'm on the edge of my seat. I am literally inching towards the edge of my seat. Five, oh, and four, just because I haven't had a chance three, to say, Luke, the two, salmon is such one, a good fit for you. Fight, Thanks, brother. Fight. It, it is really lovely. Ooh, a big hit here. Monkfish wow, spending time in the air. look at that. Chunks Link. of our ceiling are missing. Link's just absolutely shredding Monkfish here. Monkfish needs to get that weapon spun back up. That is going to be tough to do with a robot like Link's on your case. And it looks like the multi-bot on Monkfish is impaired. Lynx is such a precise driver, really staying on Monkfish, popping it in the air. Is the weapon on, nope, Monkfish's weapon is still running. Monkfish has just shown absolute reliability. Oh, another big hit from Lynx. Wow. Tap out from Monkfish. Yeah, the entire weapon assembly was just ejected from the, I guess the bottom, now the top of Monkfish. Booty Brigade here is going to advance to the finals and will face Supreme Ruler and Jeff Waters. Wow. In exactly the sort of interesting matchup that I suggested earlier, Luke. <laughs> true, true. And yeah, we are gonna if, get a, if there's one robot that could do it here, it's probably Booty Brigade. Yeah, and if there's one robot that can do it in an interesting way, it yeah. is Booty Brigade. Yeah. That said, we are going to have a Silent Spring versus Monkfish battle for third as well, and I think that is really going to be a stunning fight. Robot. 
Monkfish has just absolutely captured the imagination of the fans. You can hear it here in the stands. People are saying, Monkfish, Monkfish, Monkfish. Look at that loop. That is uh, an entire, in fact, I was going to say that's an entire motor. No, it's not. It's not quite all of the motor. Some of that motor is still in the robot right oh, now. Yeah, you want to see either all the way in or all the way out. And no, no, that left some pieces behind on, yeah. its, on its ejection path. Right, yeah. They are not, be oh, look at that. There's a massive uh, crack at the bend in that weapon system. Uh, that was a brutal, brutal hammering that Monkfish took. Uh, I hope they have spare parts because that is not going to be a quick repair uh, going into the fight for third. Rachel de Guzman will face off against Jameson Go. Let's take a look here at this replay. Just brutality from Lynx. Just getting under Monkfish, popping it in the air, sending him to the roof several times. You saw that right there. Almost hit the camera. And Lynx just uh, <laughs> getting through the mini bot on Monkfish to go and attack the main bot. See this one absolutely brutal hit and Monkfish's weapon just started coming out. Very fast uh, tap out from that team. A dominant win here for Calvaniba and Lynx, and Tommy Wong and Droopy. Now Calvin Iba is the defending world champion in the Beatles. Let's see if he has what it takes to win another Golden Brett. Let's check yeah. in here with Chris in the pits. Hello, Chris. Hey, hey, I'm here with Jeff Waters and Supreme Ruler. Jeff, it looks like you're gonna be going up against Booty Brigade here in the finals. Let me ask you, like, what are you thinking going into this? Now you, you have two championship bots that you're gonna be going head to head against. So what I think that's great about this is this year the Golden Brett will not be going to the East Coast like everyone thought it would. It's gonna be either going to California or my town of Vegas. So I think going into this fight, we got some good strategies to take down uh, Lynx and use that kind of like, ignore Droopy. Droopy is not gonna be able to get to me. I fought bots like Droopy Strider and all that in the past. But I think a revolutionary design like this is going to change the sport. You heard it from Jeff Waters. Now, let me ask you, um, you're going to focus on Lynx. What's your strategy going head to head on, on Lynx? So I don't know if I'm going to be fighting Lynx or the referees. The referees have been having it out for me all day. They don't like my design. They say it's unsportsmanlike. I've been getting punches all day for it. It's, it's honestly kind of funny that they don't like this. So I've been going in there. That's been what's driving me all day. Every time I get a badge, I get more and more brutal out in the arena. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, a design that you've brought and that you've pushed. And, you know, I just want to wish you good luck. Thank you so much. This is a huge shout out to Jason Woods. Without, uh, without him, this design wouldn't exist. That firebot wouldn't exist, and we wouldn't have cooked Silent Spring. That is very impressive. I, I hope that, that you take that as a feather in your cap forever. Yeah, no, this is excellent. Thank you so much. All right, Jeff. Back to you guys. Man, that is fantastic. It's a story you love to see. And I'm going to say right now, Jeff, your robot has already changed combat robots. Uh, we. I don't think we, we've seen how many robots today? A, a half dozen robots with yeah. articulating uh, lifting arms. That wouldn't have happened had we not had uh, Supreme Ruler here in the past. Like, we've seen other robots try it, but this is clearly a front runner and a trailblazer uh, in a new weapon type, and that yeah. is just something that so few people get to say and something to be very proud of. So, congratulations. It's an advancement in fork technology because you think about forks in a different way. Yeah. Um, you know, that is cool to see it, you know, like we saw it with uh, with Ace, we saw it with, uh, with Tracer, mm -hmm. and um, really here at this competition and at this weight class, this is where that robot type is really able to shine. You know, you just get full kind of like, uh, you know, all of the views on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good robot. It's obviously highly effective and um, I, you know, like, the matches are not the most exciting, you know, just to see a, a robot pin for 10 seconds, uh, release for two seconds, pin for 10 seconds, you know? Like, I think people are here for destruction. And uh, yeah, I mean, powered powered cam lifters, you know? Let's see more of it. Well, let's, let's see where it takes us. That's the real message, I think, here. 
is like, you know, maybe it's people's cup of tea now, maybe it isn't, but this unlocks all sorts of other design potential for what, you know, what comes after the cam style lifter? What does that enable other robots to do in the future that have, hasn't been able to happen so far? Uh, and that's the whole progression of, of design evolution, the, the arms race that is combat robots. And that's what I think is so beautiful here. Got it. Cool. You know? Yeah. So I, I don't know where we're headed next. Um, I, I know like we've got a lot a sport of... sport or... No, no. I, yeah, I don't know. As a person, I don't know where I'm have going. like a little cam lift, uh, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. So... Um, You've got just static forks. Yeah, what, that's so 2000 and late. Like, yeah. this, this is the future. Why aren't Absolutely. we here? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't know uh, where we're headed next in terms of cages. I see a lot of open space. Uh, we are pretty deep in the brackets now. We've got some finals coming up. We've got um, a couple of third place matches. I think we're going to do third and fourth place matches next. Got it. And then um, the last three will be for Golden Bretts. That's, I mean, that's the way to do it. So uh, if I was going to guess, it would probably be a 30 pound uh, three, three. The uh, old uh, uh, emulsifier Megatron rematch. Uh, no, no, for third and fourth place, it would be Red Storm and Waddles. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. Well, now, I, we saw, skipping to the finals. Now. We saw Waddles just violently disassembled. I, I'm assuming they have a second robot up there. If I not, they might be forfeiting the, uh, the fourth place fight. Oh, that would be rough. That would be rough when you're fighting for charity and when you're fighting, I mean, let's, let's not uh, overlook the fact you get a hefty sum for yourself as well. It's not just this charity money that you get. You also walk away with a, a, a nice check in your pocket. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's actually a fat stack of cash. Yeah. Um, let's check in with uh, Chris up in the pits. Hello, Chris. Chris. Rachel, so close. So close. Monkfish, incredible year. Uh, I, you know, some of the people are asking me, you, you know, you're there, you're, you're one round away. Why the tap out? Um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to win that fight. My mini bot was down. I think I inadvertently hit my own mini bot. And um, I saw that the weapon motor had popped out. And I knew at that point, if he just kept hitting me, Lynx kept hitting me, he was just going to cut the weapon motor out. And there's just no way of winning. So I tapped out. And also, I'm a little bit chicken because I just already ruined a $100 motor earlier this week. And I didn't want to lose another $100 motor when I knew I was going to lose. I mean, it, it, what a great run today. I mean, just since September, the momentum that you've already built, it's, it's incredible. Monkfish looks awesome. It's actually still in really good shape, you know, despite the, the fight that it just came out of. Yeah. Really looking forward to seeing you again in 2024. You know, I, I expect great things from Monkfish next year. I'm very excited that it's worked so well. It's only been together, I think, what are we in November? So this robot has only existed for about six months in total from when I first started the design. And this is the fourth competition I've ever been to. And I'm just super, super excited that the design is, I test little things, make incremental changes and update it and it just works better. And now I know uh, some additional things I'll take home and be able to update again and just keep iterating over and over again until I get it exactly how I want it. Rachel, we're so proud of you. Congratulations again. Can't wait to see you again next year. Thank you. Back to you guys. Oh, thank you, Chris. That, uh, whew, that is so much progress in such a short period of time, and that robot still has such a uh, long uh, career ahead of it as long as Rachel wants to pursue it. Uh, so much of today just gets me excited for the future. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the cool things about combat robots is that uh, they have personalities. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can embody a lot of personality into a, a combat robot. I just love this kind of like frantic stomping, right, for Monkfish. Yeah. That face, you know, on Monkfish. And these massive, massive hit that's, hits that it's able to deliver. Yeah. I was standing cage side during a Monkfish fight earlier in the day, just like in the stands with the fans, and it was just electrifying to hear it um you know like we 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 hear what the youtube live kind of like stream hears but like when you're actually here sitting cage side it is incredibly loud um when it makes uh, contact that weapon yeah. is totally dialed in it's incredible yeah that's true let's go to Lindsay. we uh have some of those super chats uh, filtering through how you doing Lindsay? 
Hello, Ricky. Uh, I just wanted to kind of capitalize on this conversation about monkfish because there's been such an outpouring of love for Rachel de Guzman and the design behind monkfish. Uh, so I want to share some super chats. Uh, the first one here is from Ryan Liu. Monkfish is my favorite Brazilian robot. There was a, a lot of <laughs> chatter from the Brazilians that they were adopting monkfish as their own <laughs> now oh, that there lovely. are no other Brazilian bots in. So um, I thought that was really sweet. The next one from uh, Power Surge driver and builder Chris Caps. Monkfish, monkfish, monkfish. Big fan. <laughs> Uh, all right, the next one here is from Ellie. Uh, correcting a typo from earlier, Rachel is her hero. Go Monkfish. Uh, so very sweet. Uh, from, Ener from Energy, Monkfish, monkfish Supremacy. Uh, with some cute emojis. And then the last one, uh, I think, is uh, my favorite from Razor259. Somebody Aww. set up a date for Monkfish and Billy. Aww. Love at first sight. Yeah. Someone make it and happen. Maybe, uh, maybe Droopy can watch from the bushes. Oh, Luke. That's, oh, dear. that's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm just saying. You know, look at its face. <laughs> it's not even 10 o'clock yet, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, there's so many places I can go with that. None no. of them I can go anywhere with. No, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to. Let's say... Uh, <laughs> where do I go from that, Luke? I mean, really. I... Uh, yeah. Ooh, how about to a rumble? That sounds like oh, a good a place, rumble. right, everybody? Yes, we're saved. A rumble. I think a so. rumble. Here we go. A rumble in, what are we, cage one rumble. Yeah, cage one rumble. Wow. Okay, oh. I see super scope in there. Yeah, this is a heavy hitter rumble. I see kitchen grill in there. Do I see any three pounders in there? Oh, Cthulhu. It's a three way rumble. Wow, exciting. We've got the Coakley Brothers versus Kitchen Grill. Wow, okay. Very exciting here. Now it looks like the cage managers here are testing out this big house robot. Usually like the house robot for a, a rumble kind of gets more involved, you know, in the fight. Uh, so uh, they like to make sure it's, uh, it's looking fresh. You know, I, I think it might be worth taking a second here. We are seeing absolute veterans, absolute all-stars, absolute, uh, well, we shouldn't say all-stars. The all-star event is coming up. But let's talk about all-stars. I was going to go on a different point, but now, now that we're here, let's go uh, talk about all-stars for a second. Yeah. Um, we have a promo here. Big all-star. We've got three nights of some of the best fighting robot superstars from NHRL's past, present, and future. Plus, we managed to convince some of our best friends from the internet to come, like this guy. three weight classes of 12 of the craziest robots fighting across three nights to be crowned the inaugural Havoc All-Stars champion. That's some heinous hits. That's some preposterous prizes. And oh my God, the challenges are the craziest. What more could you want? December 5th, 6th, and 7th, here, right here at the House of Havoc, or streaming exclusively on YouTube from 7 to 10. Be there. I will. I like when he says, be there, I will. I take it as a threat. Yeah, you know, well, you're he, gonna be there. I, you know, I just might. Now, uh, Ricky, I've heard that you might be building a robot for this event. Is yeah, that right? I, uh, I'm going to dust off my... It's a uh, foot-like foot themed robot, is that right? It is, it is not at all, actually, but it does build on the, uh, you know, the legend and the, uh, the lineage of baby shoes. And I was like, what, you know, what 
could be a little more. Okay, uh, here's my question. Yes. Okay. Question me. You had, Please don't question. Ba me. Baby shoes. You know, you had stiletto. Mm. You've got all these shoe kind of like uh, related robots. How come? You know, when you built the 250, it wasn't like high tops or something. But, you know, it was Bigfoot originally. Okay, um, that's but, pretty good. But but mammoth Bigfoot just, is not a type of foot though. No, which is why it's, it didn't not make a type the of shoe. It I didn't make say. the cut. It's it's you know we, someone suggested clown shoes. Okay, oh, that's it's, it's awful. Not, no, yeah, that's it's just, just terrible. No. I mean, imagine us. I, I, I wanted to wear a leather shoe jacket that you could think of, on you know? TV. I didn't want to wear giant shoes. Like, uh, like waiters. You should have called it like waiters or something. Uh, yeah, or um, platform, like 70s platforms or something. See, like this naming convention would make sense if you had like other kind of prehistoric uh, animals. You yeah, know? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Mammoth was too good to pass up as a term. Uh, okay. You know, what's what's huger than huge? What's uh, let's what's a double entendre for something that is. Uh, both large and, you know, a, a creature that existed. Sure. Plus, Mammoth has a giant trunk on it. You know, it has a... That's true. You know, it's, it's got big googly eyes. It has yeah. tusks. Okay. It checked all the boxes. Nice. Yeah, I, I honestly, I wish... You know, I didn't name Baby Shoes. Okay. That was, a, that was crowdsourced. I just brought it to enough competitions without a name, and someone said, I want the tiny robot that's wearing Baby Shoes to be called Baby Shoes. Wow. What were you calling it before? Just, just, just robot. Ricky robots. Five. Yeah, Ricky's just robots. robots. Four, it didn't three, have a name. I love that two, name. Though. Yeah. <laughs> one. Maybe fight. next time. Robots fight. Hey, we're gonna go oh. through a rumble in here. In case Look at this. It's an articulating lifter. For yeah. Situation. This is like the supreme ruler at home, Ricky. <laughs> wow, a kitchen grill tipped up against the rail. Is that? It, I think that is Kitchen Grill. It is. Oh, and it's tangled up with Cthulhu. So that's a very odd-shaped uh, Kitchen Grill. Wow. Kitchen Grill's weapon is going full bore into the top of Cthulhu. Wow. Can Fluffy do nothing? Yeah, there you Can go. Can you not save us, Fluffy? Let's go, Flo. I feel like during a rumble, like, Flo should just be very active. Give him, like, nine or ten on sticks. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm in that. Firmly in that boat, yes. Wow. Okay. Spinning down. Oh, here comes Super Scope. I wonder where it was. People sound happy over there. That is an emotion other people have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Luke, Luke, Luke. Flow here. Wow, just uh, dealing with a bunch of dead robots. Semi-dead, mostly dead. Mostly dead, dead-ish. Yeah. Not dead, just dead-ish. Wow. Kitchen Grill just in the corner for most of this fight. I feel like with Rumbles, you just start doing weird stuff. Oh, yeah, here we go. Using it as, you know, like a crowbar, you know, Cthulhu. Yeah, something like go. that. That works, sort of. Right, Cthulhu's weapon is now fully spun up. Kitchen Grill is still trying to extricate itself here from the corner. It does seem that way. Oh, it's close. It's close, Ricky. We're getting there. Oh, okay. Flo just ejecting a little bit of a CO2 there. Just, if that happens sometimes. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Super Scope coming over here to see if they can help extricate. There we go. Let's go, Kitchen Grill. Back on its feet. Time to kill, Kitchen Grill. That is the Super hardest scope. roof shot we have had in that arena thus far today. Wow.
Another huge hit on Super Scope. Wow. Kitchen Grill really showing off its power here in this rumble. Yeah, this is a great chance for that robot to really uh, look out for weaknesses. Oh my, sweet Jiminy Cricket. I wanted to see this performance from Kitchen Grill in the bracket, Ricky. Yeah, what happened? These hits are bonkers. Yeah, the Cuckoos are dead. Just a little. Wow, a good round of applause here from the audience. They love these huge hits. Oh my gosh, I can hear Corey Coakley saying, come on, hit me. Wow. Now, is this the end of this rumble? Was there a timer going here with this rumble? It seemed like it was longer than three minutes. I, yeah, there, it's, it's a Mobius strip of time. Oh, good. There's, there's really no limit if yeah. we believe. So it was both infinitely long and infinitely short. Right. Okay. I think that's the way to go. That's the way it. to look at it. Yeah. Rumble, just time, question? Time, que it's, a, it's, a, it's at least three Jeremy Baramies. Yeah, okay. Good. You know? Yeah. It's my thought. All right. <laughs> now, Ricky, um, I yes, am seeing yes. online a lot of really interesting discussion about rule changes in 2024. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, like we, we like to change the rules at the top of the year. and We like to run a full season with the current rule set. Best we can, yeah. We don't like to change rules in the middle of the season just because it gives an unfair advantage or disadvantage to robots that were fighting under a different rule set. Sure, sure. Um, I am super curious to see what the rule set is going to look like for January and beyond, and uh, whether we are going to be coming up with new rules that will um, affect the design, affect the flow of the matches. Uh, the team here works with Mike Jeffries to really just review all of the tape, mm -hmm. think about it, talk it through, and come up with changes that still like spark creativity and encourage innovation in design, but also keep the uh, the competition balanced and also like a good mix for the viewers, the fans, and the builders. Yeah, we, we walk a really tight line here, Luke. Part of what we want to do is explore areas of rule sets that haven't been explored before. Yeah. And that inevitably means you're going to find things that do not work sure uh, but th the goal right this this sport is growing faster than it ever has yeah and if you don't figure those things out now you're never gonna figure them out in the future yeah and we've already seen things uh, that have unlocked fights that you you know we haven't been able we would never would have been able to have had yeah. we not been experimental so it's a really fine line to walk that said I, I think everyone agrees here there were some experimental rules that just did not work out uh, the way we hoped in the 2023 season. They weren't awful, but they took us as far as they're going to take us. Right. You know, we tried them. We're going to try something else next time, and we're right. just going to keep fine-tuning year after year. So there are a lot of big changes. Uh, they are mostly in terms of the way uh, weight bonuses are handled. Oh, don't reveal it, Ricky. Of, well, I'm just giving general kind of things. Wow. Um, but this was not designed to break any uh, news you here, You know, Ricky. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no. It's, uh, Ricky, tell me more about these new weight bonuses. No, well, I'm joking. Don't you, say anything. You get, you get a huge weight bonus for a red robot. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. We decided that yeah. dogs had it too good. Right. Yeah. And they were too easily able to discern a robot from its background. Right. So now it's all going to be red green. Red green. And the robots. entire arena is going to be green. Yeah, okay. Every good. robot is going to be red. Nice. Good. 37 pound weight bonus in the three pound class for a red robot. Okay, good. Nice. All right. 40 pound uh, robot. And a slap in the face if it's any other color. Okay. Nice. It's not outright banned. We're not crazy. Yeah. There you go. But yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're running an orange robot, uh, you know, it's like you're skirting well, the edge. Well, yeah. You know? This is it red orange. Yeah. Is it orange? Right. 
Yeah. We're not it's like sticklers. It's a Pantone color. You've got to like uh, get out the color swatches. Yeah. You know? it's, oh, and then and then there's this whole thing: is how's it going to show up? And this lighting and this right. television tonight. And it's... In all seriousness, I am really, really interested in those discussions that happen over the very short off season that NHRL has. We take the rules incredibly seriously here. We take the True. experience for the builders and the fans incredibly seriously. And these are hotly debated topics throughout the year. I think that, like, um, just when, when you see that there's seven events in a year, next year it's going to be even more, there's this tendency to feel like, wow, you know, like, this rule feels broken to us. And, like, why don't they change it? Why don't they change it? It's like, we know that it's broken. <laughs> we are talking about it all the time. And it's going to get changed in January. Yeah. and, and If it's truly broken, I should say. Well, the other thing, too, is uh, as painful as it is to have match after or, or event after event with a rule that has... Uh, well, we'll say a flaw, but like, let's say it's not implemented as well as it could. Sure. Um, that's still time, not only for us to figure things out, but for us to get feedback. I can't tell you how many good suggestions come in on like how you should handle this better. Yeah. Where if we just came up with a stopgap solution, the first, you know, the first event, it, it wouldn't have evolved into something as beneficial as it did in the long run. So, yeah. uh, I mean, granted, that's trying to make a rosy picture out of in ideal situation, it really comes down to fairness more than anything else and trying to give people a good picture for the, you know, the year to come so it doesn't change every single event. But, but there are good outcomes as well in taking a measured, slow response to win and how we change the rules. Now, Ricky, um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about what people are fighting for here today. Yeah. Now, um, they are fighting for a million dollars in STEM grants here. Now, uh, if you come in first in your weight class, it is a $150,000 donation to the STEM charity of your choice, $100,000 for the second place winner, $50,000 for the third place winner. Every single finalist, all 72 of them up there, they also got to donate $1,000 to the STEM charity. Uh, uh, well, one of six STEM charities um, that we had pre-selected. Mm -hmm. And each one of the Sparky Award winners got to donate an additional $10,000 to the STEM charities of their choice. It is uh, our way of giving back to the STEM community. And um, it has done an, a lot of good. Um, just like this is our second year of running a, a, the Million Dollar Championship. Last year, a lot of our money went to STEM educational programs across the country, went to other combat robotics leagues that are running educational programs, really helping to grow the league. Yeah. Now, additionally, if you weren't here, uh, I don't know, six hours ago when Kelly Biederman was on, she had some really exciting news for a second million dollars that we're going to be giving out. This is going to be going straight to arenas around the country. Now, if you are running a program, if you're at a college, for example, and you you want to build your own three pound arena or 30 pound arena we are going to open up arena grants for another million dollars and stunning um you know like i heard estimates for how much it would cost for us to build these uh, arenas at scale mm -hmm. we are going to see a ton more new arenas getting built across the country with this second million dollars that we're going to be giving out in 2024 and you know it's, it's important to keep uh, a sense of perspective here a lot of the builders that have uh, showed up a lot of the fans that have shown up watching nhrl the last couple of years don't understand how big of a uh deal that is prior to nhrl building the two 30 pound arenas here there were only a couple places in the country where you could safely fight a 30 pound robot period um and even fewer of those ran regular events maybe once a year uh maybe twice if you were lucky and you'd have to travel across the country the idea of 30 pound arenas proliferating across the country uh unlocks a world of potential and a, is a huge step forward uh, for this sport, especially in that weight class. And that's not to undersell the difference that a whole lot of three pound arenas could also make. Um, I know when I was younger, trying to get into combat robotics, uh, trying to convince you know an adult to drive me uh, two hours or five hours or 10 hours to an event, it, it just wasn't feasible, at least not on a uh, regular basis. 
Uh, if you can have a, you know, the local college that's a half hour away from you, an hour away from you, two hours away from you, hold regular events, it unlocks so much potential and it just brings this uh, sport, this hobby, uh, this, this community to so many more people across the country and probably across the world. I assume um, that this is not going to be limited to just the United States. This is something that um, could very well continue to spread, you know, through North America, South America, Europe, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm I'm thrilled. This is I, the, huge. The amount of money that was given last year to charities uh, was amazing in general for you know public good, but um, we're balancing that this year with uh, both public good money. There's certainly a lot of money just going to gen general charities, and then so much that is going to go towards uh, furthering the sport, which then does its own you know special flavor of good in the world. So yeah. All right, uh, let's go upstairs and check in with Sam up in the pits. Hello, Sam. All right, hello. I am here with one of our ref staff. Uh, this is Gwen McGuire, and she's been a ref here for how long, Gwen? Just about two years. And not many people know your name here, right? I like to think I get around a little, but I definitely try to keep out. I think a, a good ref is somebody who's not the focal point of a match, so. Yeah, uh, so a low profile, uh, but a big impact, consistent refing and, and here at every event, month after month, and that is why this year you have won the Unsung Hero Sparky Award. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is good. I love that it's a little microphone with nobody there because I have no idea what to say right now. This is perfect. Uh, show yeah. the, yeah, there we go. It's, it's like incredible to just be a part of anything that goes on here. Like there's no org quite like it. There's no group of people quite like this. So it's, it's everything like builders, staff, fans, like whether they're here or online, they're all the people that make this happen. So this is every single person that's here right now or watching online, like this is just as much them because they make this so possible too. Amazing. Gwen, thank you so much for everything you do for NHRL, uh, for repping, for the robots, for, for everyone here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Gwen. A, an award well deserved. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a second there. I am shocked to hear that Gwen has only been around that long. She uh, has done such a good job. She feels like uh, she's been here forever in a good way. She's a uh, pillar of the staff uh, and brings so much uh, just to the gen general uh, positivity and vibe and reliability. I mean, really does a good job in addition to bringing that positivity. Yeah, she's so a great ref. It's it's fantastic. Thank you for the work you do. Congratulations. Very well earned. Yeah. All right, we're going to go into another rumble here in Cage 1. Wow, people over there have got the best seats in the house for more rumbles. Yeah, they got quite a treat. Wow, okay. <laughs> We've got the Yoblins here fighting one another. And that's not technically a rumble, no, Neil. That's, that's this is just a multi-bot that's uh, having a disagreement. Mm -hmm. This is a little family infighting. Yeah, okay. It's a lover's quarrel. Yeah. A lot of, they're maybe from West Virginia, but, you know, they're uh, good and duke it out. Now, the Yoblins have totally flat faces. They have no forks. No, no. Just the way you like it, right? No forks. No forks. None whatsoever. How do you eat spaghetti, Luke? With a spoon, Ricky. That sounds right. Yeah, I chop it up with the, the side of the spoon, and then I just shovel it into my, my maw. I know? don't like know why. My gaping I just, maw, I you know? feel like... Do you use a fork to eat pizza? Uh, <laughs> okay. That's don't. a very personal question, Richard. <laughs> okay. And All right, away we go. Let's Saved check out by these the yoblins. They're going to yobble their way to victory or defeat or both. Wow, okay. A tentative start for the yoblins. Yeah. I feel like they're about to go into a synchronized dance or something. I hope so. Yeah. They're now, yobbling uh, right along. The yoblins. Let's see. Are they 30 pounders uh, in the rest of the uh, fields? Or are these two 12 pounders, 12 uh, pound multi bots? Wow, they are tiny. They are not large. Oh, yeah, get it on. Here we go.
can someone get a Photoshop situation of the Spider-Men pointing at each other with little <laughs> yoblins as their heads? That's, that's what I really want right now. Well, you see, one is green and blue, and the other is blue and green, Ricky. You know, that's... I can't believe they left that 37-pound weight bonus on the table. All they had to do was be Oh, red. no, one of the yoblins is smoking. This isn't a Pizza Hut in 1991. Wow. Okay. I love this. It's just no holds barred, no timer. We're just going to go until both of these yoblins catch fire. You know, this. let this be a lesson to people. Every now and then, we, we get a suggestion, a uh, very emphatic suggestion. Sure. Uh, you should put the robots in the ring and just have them fight indefinitely. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely I've heard this suggestion before. To the death. Um, and Let's fight until the batteries get puffy, Ricky. Right, that's, that is exactly the suggestion. And uh, yeah. I want to see that battery just expand through the top plate, you know, just like a, a marshmallow being microwaved or something, you know? Yep, yep. Yeah. This Oops. is why you don't do that. Wow, okay, a little bit of uh, smoke here. Could be a smoke from a lipo. We put that out into the universe. You want a puffy marshmallow battery, Lipo batteries don't like being pushed to their uh, to their max, you know, for uh, long periods of time. They and tend to expand and then catch fire. But you know what these drivers said? They said, I want to push you around, and I will, and I will. Now, was that a little spark of uh, flame that I saw on the green Yoblin? Someone took that little goblin, that little Yoblin, for granted. Yes. I think the Yoblins are inspired by uh, Yob Nall, the long boy. So I understand. I just, yeah. uh... Wow. Okay. Yoblin also just has a ring to it. I mean, I guess you have a winner question mark. Yeah, the blue Yoblin. Yeah, these these are um, cousins, distant cousins of Yob, the, the uh, Yob Nall lineage. Same right. builder. Right. Um, Chris Rummel. Yeah, uh, I, although I think one of them right now is being um, piloted. Yes, one of them is being piloted by Brandon Bennett Young. Right. Um, and the other one isn't really being piloted at all. It just exists. It is a, a yeah, stationary it's, object. It's in rest. Oh, it, it's in hibernation mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the Yablins, you know, they come out uh, periodically, you know, when it's time to feed. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, they come out from under their tiny bridges, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two twin bridges, identical, you know? Right next right, to one another. Right. Yeah. Pick the bridge less traveled. Let's go to Kyle. Kyle, save us. Kyle, please save us. <laughs> I'll do my best. Hi, how are you guys doing? All right, so we're checking in today with the full core team. Uh, what's going on? How are you looking right now? It looks a little stressful. Um, it's surprisingly okay after torrential or torrent. Um, I'm just gonna keep the same type of fork configuration on and try to do the same thing I did last fight. Uh, and what was the strategy last fight? Um, just use forks that can get under torrent and just try to push them around and try to sort of get them from the side a little bit. But um, yeah, that's. All I can do in the next fight, just um, hope I get under him and, and push him around. And Gotcha. And then uh, question, I know a lot of us are curious, what is the lifting capacity of the, uh, the, the waggle sticks, the lifter mechanisms right now? Um, it's enough to easily flip the robot over, so it's, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and, I don't know, 20 pounds or something. I, I don't know exactly, but. Gotcha. All right, man. Well, good luck in the next fight. You know you've got a tough one coming up, but you've got a great team behind you, and I think you're going to do great. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, man. All right, good luck. Did you hear that, Luke? Yeah, it's a self-writing mechanism. That's what I heard. Yeah, but it's capable of lifting another robot. I hear that, oh, I'm running a wedge with the self-writing mechanism. They can lift another robot. 
Okay. Let's, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, they've just appeared. Wow, these are the golden breadth that we're going to be, going to be giving out in about an hour from now. That's a lot of Three bullion. pounds, 12 pounds, and 30 pounds. Incredible. Now, Ooh. these all have like the big switch on the back. I think that you can turn them on and yep. uh, use them as like a nightlight or something in mm -hmm. your room. To just haunt your dreams. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, this is the most coveted prize in combat robotics in the Beatles, the 12s, and the 30s. If you are building a robot in that weight class, you want to win one of these. Yeah. This is like a lifetime achievement. Um, I would love to win one of these myself someday. And uh, just being close to them just... Uh, Gives you the tingles. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I kind of, I want one. I want one. You just take it home. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Embod embody the golden bread. It is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, these have just such a high shine on them. I'm li literally blinded. Yeah. They're uh, they're built by hand here, and uh, we are going to engrave each one of them with the winner, the eventual winner, um, you know, so that when you take it home, this is really just an incredible, incredible trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Personalize something that stays with you a lifetime, and... Uh, really just such a good emblematic uh, trophy of, of what you've accomplished, all the work that goes into it. There is no builder that gets to this point by accident. There's no builder that gets to this point uh, without a tremendous amount of time, energy, work, blood, sweat, tears. Yeah. Um, in addition to all the talents that they bring to the table. Right. Uh, and having that encapsulated, and having that encapsulated also, you know, pay some honor to all the all the builders that you met and fought and beat along the way. Um, so it's, it's not just the fact that these are beautiful and goofy and wonderful trophies. Uh, they are also, uh, you know, such a good symbol of of what you overcame to get here. Yeah, it is fantastic. There are builders here who have won both a golden brat, obviously, have also won golden dumpsters, and have won Sparky Awards, which yeah. is just like fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, I, this is this is this is a goal. This is a goal for so many people. Sounds now we're like gonna it. go over to Cage Two. This is the uh, third place, the fight for third place here in the Beatles. We've got Jameson Go and Silent Spring facing off against Rachel de Guzman and Monkfish. There's fifty thousand dollars in uh, charity money that is on the line here. Both of these builders would like to take home that and uh, donate it to the STEM charity of their choice. Let's take a look here at the tail of the tape. Silent Spring, of course, run by Jameson Go. Now this is, uh, he's running his undercutter module here. This is a shuffler, so this is going to weigh in at four and a half pounds. An incredible 64 and 12 record here, uh, career across multiple years, multiple seasons at NHRL, facing off against Rachel de Guzman, uh, the stomping undercutter shuffler here that made its debut in September and took home a golden dumpster in its debut. Incredible run for Rachel de Guzman and uh, bringing it all the way here to the end. One of these builders is going to be taking him third place and giving out $50,000 in charity money. Incredible. Jameson, you can see there's a uh, look of calm, but also... You know, this is a this is a bittersweet fight. I think uh, this is this is emblematic of that uh, that triple crown uh, being pushed off at the very least until years. Double to come. crown. He's still in for the double crown. It's a thing, Ricky. You're, you're right. It, you know, there's probably an even better term that doesn't that doesn't bring crowns into the equation. Okay, I have just heard that uh, Mike Jeffries has just run over and told Jameson Go that we are going to pause this fight right now. Wow, look at this! Jameson Go piloting Silent Spring uh, with the transmitter behind his back. I guess at this stage in your career, you've got to find ways to make it interesting. Wow. Okay. Now let's see what is happening here in this fight. They haven't told us yet. But it looks like we are postponing this fight. They look certainly ready to go. Oh, 
Oh, I see what's going on. I'm trying to listen here, Cage Side. I think that Jameson Go has to go in and fight uh, now one of his other two robots. And uh, so he, he is going to go to uh, Cage One here, a 30 pound third place fight. And I think they probably want to run the 30, place, uh, 30 pound final here uh, shortly after that. So he's going to have to run up and go and get Megatron. Now this is the fight for third place here in the 30s. And I can see uh, loading in here. This is Red Storm facing off against Waddles. Now, Red Storm, run by Kevin Melchuski from Seattle. This is a lifter bot that has an incredible 10 and five record here with four knockouts. Uh, taking home a golden dumpster in September, so just six weeks ago. Facing off against Brian Boxel from uh, Team WPI. Uh, this is a multi-bot. Uh, Waddles, this is like a modular robot. Um, and its record is 13 and six. Uh, with 10 knockouts, taking home second place in May of 2023. Now the winner here is going to donate $50,000 to the STEM charity of their choice. And uh, we're gonna be deciding that winner here in three minutes or less. But I can see here at Cage Side that we are working on the house spot. Now the, uh, the top of the head of the house bot is off. So uh, we are gonna have to fix the house bot and close up the cage before this match starts. You can see the fire extinguisher peeking out there from the house bot. Each of the house bots in our larger cages, one and four are loaded with a CO2 based fire extinguisher. It comes in super handy when we have, uh, you know, just the raging fires inside of our uh, and even the smaller fires, it's still nice to give them a little, little uh, how you doing? I'm eager to see how Waddles looks in this fight. I mean, we saw a violent disassembly in its last fight. Now, I wonder if they're going to be running with that uh, horizontal configuration or if they're going to go with its vert. I can see, like, what seems to be, like, just a little edge of a, of a, of a, of a vert here at the bottom of the screen. So I am wondering what it's going to look like, uh, and whether they were able to successfully get that robot back together. We will see. I'm expecting a non-trivial amount of duct tape in that situation. <laughs> there you go. You know what? I'm, I've been trying to think here. What, what's another title we can give this? The, um, the double cheeseburger. No, the 12-pound the and the 3-pound is the big bot bifecta. The 12-pound and the 30-pound, yeah. Ricky? That's what I said, isn't it? I don't know, three. three oh, I'm six, sorry. The three. 12 and the 30 is what I'm trying to the say. The bifecta. The big bot bifecta. They're both. The big bot bifecta. Yeah. The big bot bifecta. I like it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Maybe we could shorten it to like b b b b fecta b b fecta Report you to the, uh, the yeah, Business Bureau for the big yeah. bot bifecta. Oh, interesting. The house bot appears to be the source of the problems in Cage One right now. Um, Normally, we run into these kind of situations, and if the house bot isn't functioning, the house bot isn't functioning, but... Uh, I've seen it before you know, where the they've finals. pulled the house bot out and then ran over and got the other house bot from the other cage. That has happened as well, yeah. This is, these are like 350-pound house bots. You need to get like a whole dolly and everything. You've got to get multiple people yeah, to like lift. There's a pantry crane. It, it, is, uh, it is very heavy. You can absolutely blow out your back if you try and pull this thing up by yourself. Well, you should build another robot whose job is to move the robots. I think that's... Yeah, you get like a 650-pound robot that's just right. hands, big hands. Just it needs to be human hands, large. Human hands. Yeah. Can't, can't lift be monkey up. hands. Yes. Or, or I got yeah. nothing else. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about just comically large human hands. Okay, you know? okay, like with a lot of knuckle hair. Yeah, right. You yeah. got to have a lot of, uh, you know, personality with human hands that that's pick up house butts. You know what I'm I, saying. You know, I, I, if someone came and just stuck hands on the side, you know, there's a robot idea. Okay. Ima imagine if you would. Sure, okay. Your robot um, actually just magnetically latches on to the house bot. 
Uh, your robot magnetically latches onto the yeah, house. Yeah, let, let's okay. say, for instance, you have, or, or Is, are the house spots magnetic? Yeah, they are. They, they are. are. Okay. So let, let's say you've just got some real beefy wheels. They go, they magnetically latch, lift the house spot, you know, a, a, a half inch off the ground, and now you can drive it around. Now you have 350 pounds of oh. weight that you can go ramming into your opponents over and over again. So like a 30-pound cam lifter. A 30-pound cam lifter. And now you've become a 350-pound and and cam rambot. Wow. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Let's workshop that one, I Ricky. like this idea. You know, you want to get that... I, I saw that in your eyes. It, I, you want to get that golden I dumpster. saw it, yeah. Um, all right, we're going to go check in with Lindsay here up in the pits. Lindsay, save us. <laughs> all right, uh, while we wait for the next fight to begin, uh, let's go through some super chats that uh, we've been holding on to for you. Uh, so the first one here is from Scene Evergreen. I'm so excited for Huge and Full Court to both win hand in hand like the best friends they are. Uh, like I said, we've been holding on to these a little bit. Uh, Huge no longer in the competition, but uh, Full Court, you know, uh, can uh, frolic off in the uh, distance by itself, I guess. I don't know. Um, all right, uh, from Quest Williams. <laughs> it's been a minute since you gave Lindsay some screen time, but in case you do, remember who the people are here for, the Booty Brigade. Quest is really, uh, you know, uh, the president of the Booty Brigade fan club over here. Uh, yet again, Droop uh, is going to eat that lift while uh, Lynx kills the flamey. Listen, all you young folks, oh, I'm not hip with these uh, emoji talks. <laughs> all right. Uh, and then Eric Tate, Supreme Ruler. You wanted Supreme Ruler fans in the chat? I see Jeff right over there. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're here. They're coming out, showing up for their man. Uh, and then one more, I think, maybe one more. Let's oh. do it. Or may maybe that. Oh. Uh, from e Ethan, uh, is this the part where we support the ruler? If you choose to, Ethan. If you choose to. Yeah, Ethan, you got to make your own choices. <laughs> You're an adult with your own money. Yeah. You know? Listen, vote with your super chat. That's. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way for us to uh, really juice the super chat numbers. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. That's great. <laughs> That's a KPI here, Ricky. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I, I, listen, I like Supreme Ruler a <laughs> lot, okay? I'm just, I'm unabashedly uh, a C Supreme Ruler uh, uh, fan, stan, whatever the, the words are these days. Uh, and I, I do really enjoy seeing any supportive comment, really. I mean, at this point, there are so many robots here to love, and any time a uh, fan takes the time to chime in, uh, on the YouTube channel, on Discord, whatever it is, get that positivity. It just makes the vibe here uh, so much. It means the world to the builders. Yeah. Um, so, you I mean, know, we're, good on we're, you for reaching out and expressing those positive feelings. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, this is an amazing stage for them to uh, to express their creativity and to really show off their, uh, their build prowess. Like, it's fantastic. Um, and for them, you know, like, having fans in the stands, having fans on the chat is really thrilling. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange uh, but, but wonderful experience. In the meantime, speaking of strange and wonderful, Kyle, how are you doing? <laughs> Hey guys, yes, I am standing by with Matt Boras. Matt, this is a very familiar place that we're standing in right now. We're at the World Championships and you were awaiting a match against Jameson Go and Megatron. We've been here two years ago. We were here last year. We're here again this year. Big difference this year. Last year, you were going up against a Megatron that was literally held together by little pot welds that were just barely holding the bot into place. <laughs> this year, you have a pretty much brand new, all the way put together Megatron. What strategy have you put together for this matchup? I mean, this has got to be weighing on your mind. Yeah, for sure. This is uh, feeling like deja vu all over again. <laughs> um, there really isn't a good strategy for JMO. You, you can't really outdrive him, especially with the vert. Um, we're going to run the same config that we ran against him last year. Yep. Um, we need the thick top cover. If we don't have it, we'll lose for sure. Um, so that only leaves weight for plastic forks. So we're going to run that config. We're going to drive a little erratically, hope he makes a mistake. Um, we've got a lot of faith in our weapon that if we do catch him, we can still damage him. Um, 
if we do happen to catch them, I'm just going to try to stay on them and just not let up. I mean, that's all you can do. If you give him an inch, he will, he will get you. And then how's the atmosphere been this year compared to last year's world championship? First of all, how are you feeling? Are things a little bit more chill or are you like, oh, this feels familiar. This is a nice groove. I'm in it. It's a little bit of both. It, it does feel familiar being here um, again from, I think this is the third straight year. We've yeah. been fortunate enough to make it to the grand finals. And, uh, but no, the nerves are still going. I still really want to win this. Yeah. And um, to go back to back would be incredible. Well, Matt, good luck, my friend. Well deserved making it to the final for the third year in a row. We'll see you out there, my friend. Thank you. All right. All right, now we're going to start this match here in cage one. Now, this is a match for third place in the 30s. This is Red Storm and Kevin Milchewski facing off against Brian Boxel and Waddles. And we're waiting for the, uh, the shot here of Waddles to see which configuration it went with. Oh. That is a vert, Ricky. Just a little birdie. We've got Kokoto Mane here standing cage side, the builder of Serial Killer, another very popular builder here with the fans. And uh, they are running their vert module here. I wonder if their horizontal is just Five, absolutely four, destroyed in that three, last match. I wouldn't three, doubt it. Um, one, that said, right, I think the vert is not a bad fight. way to go. Kevin can drive really, really well against uh, horizontals. Ooh, that vertical seems rather anemic, though. Spinning up, that took a long time, Luke. There's a lot that you can tell from the sound of a weapon inside of the box. You can see, oh, that was a big hit. Yeah, and that oh is Oh my not. God, Red Storm was stuck up, but it was able to wag itself off. This is a great start for Waddles. Uh, really using the mobility, the size of the box to its advantage. But I can hear, I can hear it. it's that slow spin up. It's not that absolutely instant power. It's, yeah. on, it's, it's at full speed here. That robot is on like. its last legs. The drive looks great, though, Ricky. It does. I, I, I actually I don't think it's the wrong call to run the weapon slightly slower here. Just land big concussive hits here on, uh, on Red Storm. Kevin Milchewski really breaking up the... Oh, uh, my. That is a wow. stuck position for Waddles. Uh, this is going to be an unstick, it looks like. Yes, Let's it is. Let's go, Kevin! Oh, oh Kevin, Kevin! Trying to switch that switch. You can see Fluffy turning around like, uh, bro, uh, please me? don't. Excuse me. Kevin Milchewski trying to turn off the house spots. Doing his best. You will see those lights extinguish if he is successful. Oh, oh, it was so close, Ricky. It was, it was. Look, those eyes are happy, but it's a lie. That is an angry house robot. Wow, just going after his opponents. The weapon on Waddles, you can hear it spinning up. Another good hit oh, on oh, Red Storm. Oh my, that was a huge hit on Red Storm. That could be the end. Red Storm is very much struggling to drive now. That was a tremendous amount of damage in that one little hit. Wow. Uh, and that. Oh, oh no, it has, it has rejuvenated itself. That hit was the percussive maintenance that it needed. Red Storm is back in action. It is getting a little hung up on the ground, but that is uh, not enough to disable it by any means. Both of these robots have escaped the count out. They're going to take it to the judges. The judges will be deciding our third place winner in the 30s. Oh, and what a nice little finish there for Red Storm. Just a quick, uh, no, you don't. Fantastic. A little ta-ta for now.
Kevin Milchewski winning uh, the Driver of the Year award here at uh, the finals, taking home a Sparky for that. And uh, we are one judge's decision away from deciding who is going to donate $50,000 to the charity of their choice, either Red Storm or Waddles. We're getting a lot of support uh, from the fans for Kevin Milczewski here. Yeah, a lot of love out there. He's a fantastic driver. You know, this is a very fast Chevy robot. Let's take a quick look here at this replay. There wow. were a couple of big hits there from Waddles on Red Storm. Uh, the control for the duration of the match, the vast majority was on Red Storm's side. Uh, you know, it's, it's a hard one to judge. Uh, because the numbers are just uh, so skewed in each category. This uh, is a close match for it is. sure. Yeah. You know, like we saw a lot of speed and a lot of aggression out of Waddles. We did. Uh, we saw some big hits out of Waddles as well. And uh, Red Storm, you know, showing also aggression with its lifter. Yep. And um, and also, you know, like getting its opponent up against the rail. And, Tremendous uh, that amount of control. Shows, shows really, really great control in this fight. Mm -hmm. That was a great match. And... Um, the judges are going to be uh, deciding here. This is one of those that were so close where you're like, it could go either way, and uh, it was totally fine. Either one of those builders did uh, everything they could in yeah, that fight. Totally earned it. I uh, am excited to see. I don't know offhand where the you know this money is directed to. I would love to hear uh, from both of them. You know, who do you have in mind? Where's this going? Oh, you um, want to hear before the judge's decision? Yeah, that gives me something to root for, you right. know? Like, so you can see someone's heart broken just live on the stream. Oh, that's, is that right? Maybe. They go, oh, this is a really important Anything charity. Anything for the drama. It's doing fantastic work in my let's, community. Let's give a check to both charities. Oh, and then we and rip then up you, the one. You rip up. Right. Yeah, just take it and rip it up in front of Got me. it. <laughs> this is the evil Ricky energy that I live for. <laughs> oh, that's worrisome. That yeah. That is high on your list of things yeah. that make your day better. Yeah. Uh, I, I see. I, I'm full Sam Hansen you know, evil uh, overlord transition. Yeah, good. So I, I think this is a little circle. I want to see who Sam wants to turn evil and how long it gets back again to you. Well, good. There you, know, you go. This is, it all come, what comes around goes around. There. Now, uh, we're hearing from Control that the judges are waiting for a functionality test on Red Storm's oh. drive. This is how close it is. When they ask for a functionality test after the uh, the bell, you know, uh, that is, uh, means that it's close. All right, let's take a look here at this graph it. Oh, we're getting worried now. This, this just in. It's a split judge's decision in favor of wow. Kevin Milchewski and Red Storm taking home third place here, donating $50,000 to the charity of his choice. Now, Kevin won a Sparky earlier in the day. That is $10,000, mm -hmm. plus he was a finalist, so that's an additional $1,000. He's going to be donating $61,000 to the STEM charities of his choice mm -hmm. uh, here this year, which is very, very cool. Yeah, I mean, that is a world of difference. There are charities that I've worked with that can make, you know, make a program work for years off of a $5,000 investment. Right. Uh, 60 some thousand is world changing uh, to, to the organizations and to the people within them. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I really want to see, you know, and hear about all the good that it comes, you know, that comes from it. Now, you see this with a lot of competitors here in this sport. Most of them came up through a STEM program of their, their own. Either it was a STEM incubator, maybe it's a makerspace in their community, mm -hmm. maybe it's a, um, an educational program they have volunteered with in the past. Um, when you go up there and you ask people, like, what is the charity that you're supporting? They have answers right there. Like, they've been thinking about this a lot. Mm -hmm. There are very few people up there in the pits who have not uh, worked with or been touched by at least one or two STEM charities in their, uh, in their community. That's you know, true. you take a look at, like, educational robotics programs for kids. That is fantastic. You see computer programming um, programs for kids. And... Um, yeah, you know, like, it doesn't have to be for kids, of course, but, um, but yeah, I mean, this money is going to be really doing amazing work in these local communities, and it's cool that we are giving it to the builders to have them make choices about what they care about. Yeah. 
Let's go to Chris now. Uh, that's a wonderful sentiment, Luke. I, Chris, what? Uh, oh, he is on the edge of his seat. Chris, oh, wow. what can you tell us? Chris. Wow, it's Kevin. Hey, hey. Hey guys, I'm, I'm here with Kevin Milchewski and Red Storm. You, you took third today. You have an incredible opportunity in front of you. You're about to be able to award $50,000 to a charity of your choice. What what are your thoughts and have you considered who that is gonna be the recipient of that? Yeah, I'm looking to give back to hometown where I grew up in. So I'm looking to donate to a charity that's uh, computer science focused in the town I grew up in in New York. And that's the Mid-Hudson Valley, right? Yeah, Mid-Hudson Valley. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the area. That, that's my area too. Um, that's very exciting. Kevin, what a great run in 2023. What a great run today. I hope that you're really proud. You, you, you also took driver of the year. Uh, any other thoughts about what, what you've been able to accomplish in 2023? I'm tired. That's a lot. That's a lot of robot, but I keep coming back to NHRL because it's so much fun. It's been a great year. Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. Wow, Thank that you. Is very exciting. Now, Kevin Milchewski lives one town over from me in the Hudson Valley and directly across the river from Chris and Lindsay. Uh, so it's cool to see that uh, some of this money is going to be coming back to our community, which is mm -hmm. very, very cool. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Wow, that was unexpected and uh, personal. <laughs> yeah, very, great. very nice, very heartwarming. And that's. I think the, the wonderful story that goes into so many of the eventual destinations for these grants uh, is they, they really touch lives directly. I, you know, there's no one here um, giving it to some giant... Um, it's not going to Nestle. <laughs> you know? Yeah, or, or... Like, oh, or, this is the fund to uh, dry up our local rivers, you right, know? Right, this is, this is going directly to people and will directly touch lives, and that's a really beautiful right. thing. Yeah, that's very cool. And uh, I, I think that we're going to be hearing a lot more of those types of stories, you know, uh, really picking things that are close to we, people's hearts. We already have builders showing up. Um, some of them said, you know, this this enabled me to get into the sport. Yeah. Others, others are just saying, like, hey, you know, you did good near me, and it got me interested in what you do. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we did see, like, a lot of builders rally for makerspaces, mm -hmm. specifically. I mean, makerspaces are such a an integral part of the builder community um, for people who, you know, are going to only use a tool occasionally. You know, a makerspace is perfect for that. They're going to go in and learn how to weld, go in and learn how to build, right? Um, makerspaces really just, they are woven into the DNA, you know, of so many of the robots here. Um, we, we saw that with uh, with Makerspace CT in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, the builders rallied together and, you know, like said, please, let's put that on the approved list of, uh, of charities here. So, um, yeah, it's very cool that um, that we're, we're seeing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we've we've seen a, a lot of other charities, you know, that people are passionate about. Um, and it's cool. I know that we're going to be putting out, you know, more information about where the money goes, um, ultimately at the end of the, uh, the season. And um, it's cool to see what everybody did with the money last year. You know, like a lot of very cool STEM programs yeah, uh, funded last year. It's not just uh, off into the ether. Uh, it, it really does come back to you. And it gets multiplied. I mean, frankly, it, the... Uh, you know, say it goes to a makerspace. Uh, you buy a tool. That's not just one person that touches. That's uh, dozens, maybe hundreds uh, of people that that benefits uh, for years to come. So. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Very. Congratulations, right. Kevin. We still have our 30-pound final. Yes. Yes, it's coming up. That uh, emulsifier Megatron. Um, just match for the ages. Yeah, Ouroboros of, of robot combat. Uh, cage one, however, this is the third pound. Is <laughs> third pound? This is the third place uh, fight for the 12 pound uh, class. We have huge going up against torrent. Torrent, yes, torrent. Thank you. Now, huge and torrent here. Uh, they are fighting for third place and another fifty thousand dollars that they can donate to the STEM charity of their choice. Uh, the Durflers, they uh, they won last year uh, with Huge, mm -hmm. and uh, they were able to donate a ton of money to Bots IQ in Pennsylvania. 
let's take a quick look at uh, the tail of the tape here for these two competitors. We've got Joe Durfler here from High Mount, uh, what? High Mount Vert. Oh my God, I thought that was his, his hometown. Uh, no, <laughs> this is a uh, High Mounted Vert uh, that has a record of 10 and five here with four knockouts, taking home first place in December of 2022. They are the reigning uh, champion here in this weight class. Facing off against Donald Sung, running a vert with a record of 13 and six and uh, making its debut in January 2023 in the New Bots event, taking up third place. Its uh, sister bot, Torrential, took home first place in that competition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, these are Golden Dumpster winners and a Golden Brett winner, uh, additionally, you know, on both sides of the box. Very cool. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots Away fight. We go. Fifty thousand dollars on the line. Now you just designed to uh, kill compact vertical spinners, Ricky. Oh, you know what does that robot look like, you, Luke? You know, uh, huge. <laughs> I would say that uh, Torrent looks very similar to Psycho. Uh, you know, and Psycho did great in uh, its last match with Huge, uh, squeaking out that win from the judges. Um, but yeah, what does this uh, remind me of? It reminds me of huge, Ricky. Huge on Autobots. For good reason, the Durflers are part of the pit crew on uh, Team Huge. Yes, absolutely. I saw um, Jonathan Schultz up there in the pits helping them out. Oh, I see we have oh, wow. uh, some drive issues going on Torrent now. Yeah, and the weapon on Torrent is down. Yep, huge. 60 is seconds here. Spinning down fight. a little bit, being very careful in its approach. Wow. Huge launching itself into the, uh, into the glass. Now, that weapon on Torrent does appear to. No, well, no, it's coming back. Something's happened. Oh boy. It is intermittent, Ricky. We have seen that today. Oh, you can hear some uh, some beeping. That motor controller is a little unhappy. It's functional, but it really needs to be babied. This is something you see from time to time when a, a controller has some damage or a motor is starting to overheat. Uh, you can just barely get it to work, but it, it tries to protect itself from working too hard. Torrent was completely stationary there for a moment. It looks like Torrent might be down to just a single wheel because it is twisting in place. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Fluffy coming over here to see if it perhaps is high centered on something. Yeah, if Torrent can't move out of that, uh, that stationary circle, it might be getting counted out here. 50 seconds left. Yep. Huge's weapon is down. Torrent's weapon is down, question mark. I don't know. Down-ish. It, uh, it's down-ish. It goes up, it goes down. No. Wow, Torrent barely moving here. 30 seconds left. I think that I hear counting. I... Joe Durfler may be taking home third place here in the 12s. That is a knockout. Your no. winner is you. Congratulations to the Dorflers. Uh, Ricky, it's yeah. the Durflers. It's the Durflers. Durflers. Uh, last night, they stopped me and they're like, yeah, I know you've been calling our fights for multiple years, but the entire time you've been saying our last name incorrectly, it's not hmm. Dorfler. It's Dor Dorfly. It's Durflers and Durfly. Okay, so that is that is the pluralization. Yeah. Doorfly. Dorf, dorf fly. The Durfly. The Durfly. Yes, exactly. Not the deer fly or the door fly, the Durfly. Okay. Now, uh, here you can see, uh, you know, a really good overhead shot. Donald Sung really taking a look at his robot, trying to figure out what happened. Killing the weapon, killing three out of the four wheels uh, on that robot, and uh, really... Donald uh, taking this, this robot out, barely functional. Hmm. Okay. Not where he wanted to be, but let's, let's be honest, that is still a huge achievement to get to the number four rank. Uh, Massive. In, yeah. It's uh, just being here today alone, incredible, but getting number four today, still a huge feather in your cap. Yeah. Just, fantastic. you know, not a giant check in your cap. Yeah. 
I am uh, really interested in seeing uh, what these uh, brothers from uh, from Pennsylvania are going to do with this additional money. Fifty-one thousand dollars to the STEM charity of their choice. Let's check in here with Chris. Chris, I am on the edge of my seat. Where is this money going, Chris? Hey guys, so I'm here with Joe. Awesome year, great run today. Congratulations, third place. Last year, you were able to give away a considerable amount of, of change to two great organizations. Tell me who you gave it to last year. Uh, so last year, I gave it with uh, Bots IQ, and what she does is Michelle Conklin. She's here today. Um, we split half with her, and then she houses money for Plum Senior High School. Um, it's just a little bit easier for that to happen, specifically to set it up. So it's been a fantastic uh, last year, specifically setting everything up. So. Um, I'm looking forward to the next steps. Well, it, it's it's incredible. You have an opportunity to give away another fifty thousand dollars to a, a charity uh, that you are going to choose. W what are you going to do with this opportunity? Like, do you have a, some some places in mind? I have a couple ideas. Um, don't want to really say anything right now. Um, we'll figure it out. I'm going to go and talk to Kelly and see what we can exactly do. Um, but whoever gets it, I, they're, in, they're in great hands, you know what I mean? Uh, Don and I love coming back here and doing this specifically and competing. Um, and this is just one little cherry on top of, you know, giving back to somebody, so. Well, uh, the two of you have been able to change a lot of lives, and that is so incredible. Thank you for everything that you do, and great year. Thank you. Thank you again. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Very cool. Whew. I uh, dare I say, Luke, I think we have a uh, an exhibition match. An exhibition Ricky. match, a grudge match, a freestyle match, if you will. Okay. Cage three, and you know what cage three usually means? Fire. fire. Yeah. Now I can see kill it with fire. Uh, kill it with fire builder here, Kakoto Mane from Team WPI here in the blue corner, facing off against an articulated. Uh, just a hammer saw over here in bright green. A, a pair of articulated hammer saws, Luke. I love a hammer saw, Ricky. Thrilling. I, and, I, uh, I never I know when see... you're serious anymore. At this no, point. no, I <laughs> genuinely love a hammer saw, Ricky. You could okay? just say that more seriously and be even less no, serious. You'd see the dead look on my eyes if I was uh, being sarcastic. I see. Kill it with fire here is a flamethrower. Let us go here. Here we go. Now, Kokoto Mani is one of our most creative builders here in the field, and he is running a super hot flame. You can see that flame is burning like bluish white. Yeah, the closer to it, uh, to blue and imperceptible. Oh, oh my, Luke. I don't want to get distracted in the middle of my own sentence, but I don't think that Kill It With Fire is able to move. And I think these little hounds of hell are settling in around it to feast wow. on its lifeless, flaming body. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. It is slicing and dicing. What doesn't this do? Now, I think that I've worked out what this bright green robot is. I think that this is Mako. Now, this is a modified SSP kit. Now, when we saw Mako earlier in the year, it was a conventional lifter going after that arm. It's disgusting, Ricky. It's trying to oh, saw it to no! pieces. Cutting up the head. Oh! Look at that, Luke. That is incredible. Wow. Violently severing the head on Kill It With Fire. That is going to make a great highlight uh, video for Kokoto Mane and his YouTube channel. Uh, watch his recaps. They are delightful, Ricky. Such a high level of enthusiasm. Uh, I can't tell you how much I love it when a builder shows up and he's just as thrilled as I am to see their robot get absolutely destroyed. Yeah, yeah, you can see the joy. Just like Kokoto throwing up his hands, just being like, yes, that is awesome. It is like, uh, that's what you want to see in these things. It is, it really is. Yeah, okay, great, nice. Uh, Kokoto Mane really kind of stormed onto the scene with Serial Killer, a very popular fan favorite robot. It's just mm -hmm. so large and goofy. 
It is the exact kind of robot that I would want to build. Mm. Um, and he has brought that back and run it in the freestyle, you know, kind of competition here. Sure. Um, for people who don't typically uh, come here or you watch it just on the stream, uh, freestyle is a great opportunity for people to set up their own matches, their own dream matchups, and run them in cages where we have the capacity for it. Right. And uh, so we see a lot of people saying, that was my favorite fight last year. Let's do it again, you know, when we go and meet each other in August or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and uh, you can see these really cool matchups here of, you know, articulated kind of like arms coming down. And they uh, were like, oh, we should yeah, want to. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you, yeah let's yeah, do yeah. this. You know, yeah, that's great. Make it happen. Yeah. And then they do. And we all win. Yeah, absolutely. It's as simple as that. Very cool. Whew. Yeah, Kokoto is one of my favorite builders. He's just like such a good vibe, you know? Like it's when you true. talk to him, he's just like this radiating just sunbeam. Um, and he just loves this sport so much. And he is so excited that he's going to WPI, which is right down the road here mm. um, from us. And uh, at part of such a dominant college combat robotics team. Right. It's, it's hard to fall in with a better group of people uh, if you you know, really want to continue to make this a, a priority in your life and, and pursue this, this sport and this hobby. So we are going to hop into the 12 pound finals very soon. We're going to take a look at the bracket first, though. We've got it up on screen for you. Uh, here's how you got here. It's been a long, hard road. Uh, Psycho and Full Court will be duking it out for that golden dumpster. Each of them um, really tough battles. No robot on this list is a uh, is a pushover. Um, and the fact that we have a full court versus psycho final is just still so uh, exciting and thrilling to me. I I've haven't gone seen a dead eyed. Ricky. Yeah, no, I. It's <laughs> but full, but really though, it is a matchup that we have never seen before. It's a matchup uh, that we can't predict with uh, a high level of accuracy, and they are both durable, fearsome robots uh, that could do almost anything in this fight. So I am very excited. The winner of this match is going to go home with $12,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. The uh, second place finisher is going to go home with $4,000 in cash, mm -hmm. I believe. The winner of this match is also going to be able to donate $150,000 to the STEM charity of their choice. The second place is going to donate $100,000 to the STEM charity of their choice. Either way, Jameson or Coleman, they are looking at a minimum of a uh, very large cash prize uh, in their pocket and at least $100,000 to the charity that they care about the most. Yeah. Which is huge. It is. It really is. A lot of prize money on the line. And uh, yeah, just very cool to say, I got to the finals. I am the reigning champion uh, in the 12 pounders. I am the standard bearer for the sport in this weight class for the year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, every time that you announce me, you got to say that I am the defending champion, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a burden champion. that falls on our shoulders, and we're happy to do it. Yeah, okay, so. great. Here we go. Uh, I yeah, don't I see, see them loaded in anywhere. No, no, we, we have a moment. Okay, good. Let's take a moment. Nice. So we've had a uh, pretty amazing day, a lot of amazing competitors. Uh, and the thing that I get most excited about when the day's over and I'm reflecting is just how much new blood and how many new competitors and how many new enthusiasts show up uh, to every single event, including the finals. Yes. And something we've talked about a little bit today is that we now have the Havoc Academy. Right. The Havoc Academy uh, is, you know, it's not just a kit. It's not just a, a buy a robot and come and compete. Uh, this is a uh, crash course, if you will, in learning to build a robot, in outfitting you with the basic supplies and components, and then giving you the coaching and the, um, the instruction and the basically, let's say, the uh, resources to rely on to get you to be a full-fledged competitor here. Yeah. Um, you know, we are going to have... Uh, we certainly will have the ability uh, as part of this program for you to build a robot with a lot of instruction that's relatively well laid out for you. Uh, but you will then be able to take those parts and build your own robots. I mean, this we've done our best to make sure that this is the good stuff, right? This is yeah. stuff that can carry you through to be a real competitor here uh, in a very short period of time. You can cannibalize your learning robots 
and uh, bring it, you know, into your first beetle weight. There's, there's something really beautiful that doesn't get talked about a lot okay. here. And that is that so many of these robots are assembled from, like, the scraps that went into the robots before them. There are robots here that, you know, have salvaged a, a sprocket or a motor controller or a battery or whatever from two, five, ten years ago. And little bits of old designs are, are living on and fighting and winning fights. So, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. All right, now we are ready to queue up our 12-pound final here. Entering the stadium now, make some noise for Coleman Christie and Full Court. Woo. I love it, he has to turn a little sideways to get through that door. I don't know about you, Luke, but if I were them, I'd watch that again in slow motion. The dramatic entry with my robot, the, yeah. uh, the slow walk up to the arena. Yeah, yeah, do it like half speed. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Pop a collar here and there, yeah. Now they are uh, going to be facing off against, is he ready? Control. We will find out any moment now. He's going to be facing off against one of the greatest combat robot builders of our generation, Jameson Go. Put your hands together for Jameson Go and Psycho. Until JMO uh, invests in t-shirt game. Oh yeah, just start shooting t-shirts out into the crowd. Is that right? Yeah. I think that's like a liability, wouldn't you say? I mean, we're in a pretty enclosed space. Probably. Yeah, probably probably. bean some kid some, right in the face. Someone's gonna hit a grandma and. Yeah. We got a lot of people here from all uh, you know age ages here. You know. Suddenly that hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> is gonna be going to uh, the yeah. lawsuit charity. Right. Yeah. Choice. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, t-shirt cannon would be pretty awesome. You know, I feel like we need the t-shirt cannon back here, you know, and just like start launching it into the crowd. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you could uh, fend off. Uh, oh, we have factoid on the screen. Full court, seven and three in JDs. Hmm, interesting. So what we're seeing here is that this is a robot that often makes it the distance, uh -huh. uh, but doesn't often destroy its opponent in the process. Yeah, it's one in three in fights that end in knockout, which is another way of saying that out of four knockouts, uh, it went the wrong way three out of four times. Sure, sure. Yeah. And yet, still a pretty impressive record overall. What they're saying say? here, what Gil is saying in this cryptic factoid is that Jameson needs to win by knockout. This, right. If it goes the full three minutes, Jamo, you're probably going to lose this one. So try not to, uh, you know, do that. So uh, here we go. It's a, it's a tough road to hoe. All right, well, Psycho, uh, of course, has had many knockouts under its belt. Uh, it's finished first twice and second once, so it's not just knockouts. I mean, it's, it's, all right, it's outright victories. Yeah, podium um, finishes for yeah, Psycho. Podium finishes, uh, uh, top-tier stuff. Uh, we gave it the probably the most frustrating path to get there in having to go through full court. Yeah. I mean, uh, this isn't a robot where it can say, oh, I'm just going to drive great and uh, do my best. No, it, it needs to drive perfect and do more damage than it ever has in the past. All right, we're going to take here a look here at both of these robots here with the tail of the tape. Psycho, run by Jameson Go from Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is a compact four-wheel drive vert with a 21-4 and four record with 13 knockouts. Coleman Christie running full court from Southern California. This is a lifter, question mark. Record of nine and six with one knockout. And head-to-head uh, -head wins, one and one for both of these robots.
This is the 12-pound final. This is uh, for the Golden Brett. We're going to be awarding a Golden Brett here in just a moment. Incredible. This is for all the potatoes. At least all the 12-pound potatoes. Just a big potato. Oh, five, and it's four, just another point where three, we get to see if he's off for the big bot by Fender. One. Fight. Robots fight. A good box rush here from Coleman, Christie, and Full Court. Just the size difference here is shocking. James Ngo trying to get around to the back of Full Court and pop that robot in the air. It's easy to forget, folks. These robots weigh the same amount. Yeah, one of the big challenges here with Full Court is oh, the there pin. Is a pin. You don't want to be pinned. Lots of, oh, and a stick. A stick, Luke. That robot wow, is stuck on the arena Psycho wall. up against the rail. It is going wow. nowhere, having to use its unstick in basically the first 30 seconds, the first 35 seconds. Burning up that one unstick, full court waiting for its prey. You can see Psycho has spun down its weapon. It is waiting for its, uh, for its unstick. There it is. There Ooh, go. and an unfortunate oh. spot for it to be. Landed on its head. That weapon is back up. And it is attacking the house spot. self righted really quickly. Right into a, another attempted pin from full court. Seco really searching for the angle here that it's going to make a difference, but it is so difficult. Uh, full court just stays absolutely squared up with its opponent. The white areas on the left and right are absolutely the weak points for attack if you need to attack from the front. Psycho again in a full 10 second pin up against the uh, the rail. Those little fingers going nuts on the top of full court. 80 seconds left here in this fight. Jameson goes weapon is running at full speed here. And another big shovey pin up against the rail. Very dangerous spot for Jameson Go. So much control being shown by full court. That's not a surprise. The question is, will Psycho be able to find that opening and deliver a kill shot before this match ends? And there's a bit of it. There able to get Ricky. under its opponent, deliver a couple of big blows. Popping it in the air. Destabilizing. Five times in a row. 45 seconds left here in this fight. Trying desperately to run uh, away from this pin, which is an absolutely valid defensive strategy here in this fight. Oh, catching a seam in the floor. Jameson with 30 seconds left here. You can see the crowd is calling out for Psycho. Still anybody's game right now. Coming closer and closer to a judge's decision. Full court again, landing a full 10 second pin as we take this one to the judges. I'm on the edge of my seat here. The 12 pound final is going to be judged, is going to be decided by three judges here. Incredible. That is the full three minutes. Coleman Christie doing it, taking it to the judges. Man, look at Coleman's face. That is uh, exasperation. That is exhaustion. And maybe just a glimmer of hope. Okay. Coleman has had nerves all day. We've been able to see it fight after fight. Uh, it's all come down to this. Okay. I don't want to speculate here. I want the judges to really just kind of think this through uh, themselves, you know, without uh, really any commentary. This was a good fight. I mean, if it you're was. a control bot, this is what you want to see. You want to see control, you know? That um, said, I mean, Jameson did deliver some hits there, and that is so hard to even get one. And he got, you know, a I mean, a that's aggression up, with your main weapon, right? right? So that is aggression. Control goes to... Oh, now, see, and I'm starting to speculate. Uh, yeah. Okay? Take a step back, Luke. Yeah. We just got to wait. We're going to wait. Yeah. All I'm saying is that there was a lot going on in that match. There's a lot for both of these drivers to be proud of, and I'm really... First off, that was exciting, and I am very excited to see what the outcome ends up being. Okay, good.
Just the absolute length on that robot. It's shocking. And that's yeah. like a five foot long robot here, Ricky. Uh, it, it is very impressive. I also want to point out the mobility on both of these robots was astounding. Um, yeah, good speed. Jameson wondering if this is going to be uh, the first of two stepping stones to that big bot by Fecta, uh, or if he is going to have to rely on Megatron as his one and only golden dumpster for the day, uh, or we don't even know if that'll happen. It's just uh, one step at a time here for Jameson Go and Coleman Christie. Ladies and gentlemen, we are off camera, but I, I have to alert you, one of the Golden Bretts has now been removed from our desk and is off to its final destination. You will see live and in color exactly who this Golden Dumpster goes to in just a few moments. Excuse me, Golden Brett. I keep saying Golden Dumpster. This is an entire level up from the Golden Dumpster. This is the Golden Brett. This is the championship trophy. the current highest honor in the three 12 and 30 pound combat robot weight classes. There's not a more tr uh, coveted trophy here in our sport. There really isn't, and it's, it's kind of amazing. I mean, NHRL has come so far, but I, I don't think there's many, very many people who would argue that this is, in fact, the, uh, the uh, highest honor in these weight classes. Okay. All right, uh, the judge's decision is in. We're waiting for the graphic. We are waiting for the graphic. We are waiting for someone to be cage side with the golden dumpster. Golden, Brett. golden Brett. I keep doing that. I love this just in. Your winner, full court by split decision. Coleman Christie picking up two judges' decisions here, winning the 12-pound final here. A golden Brett in his uh, luggage going home to Southern California. $151,000 being directed to the charity of Coleman's Choice. We're going to go to a replay here. You can just see such a huge amount of control overwhelming control in this match made all the difference. Um, Psycho, Jameson Go and Psycho were uh, pinned so many times and held at bay so many times. They fought, Jameson fought his best. There were a lot of good hits there, but in the end, it came down to which robot was pinned the longest and uh, which one did the pinning, and that was Coleman Christie. Chris? Chris. I'm here with Coleman Christie and Full Court, who is your champion of NHRL in 2023. Yeah, thank you, wow. Um, thank you, wow. Um, oh, I'm just, I'm just, um. It's okay to be nervous. You are about to be able to give away $150,000 to a STEM charity of your choice. That is incredible. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. And I'm excited to be able to do that. And um, can you just, can you sum up your day for us? Um, yeah, I mean, I've just been you know, going through fights all day and really not expecting to make it this far. I'm shocked that this is working and making it through this day. Um, it, just, it just awesome. We're so proud of you. There's, I, I think there's only one other thing to give you here. Let's do this. Colby, it's time. I'm gonna, I'll take full court from you. Hoist this thing above your head. One more thing, Colby. This might be too big to even get 
on camera. Here it is. You got one more thing to hold above your head. Congratulations on such an awesome day. Thank you. <laughs> Back to the desk. Wow, Chris, thank you. I, the emotion there, and it's after such a long journey, you have so little left in the tank. Trying to express those emotions is hard, and yet we still see it just like pouring out of that young man. What an incredible performance, what an incredible journey, and a hard-earned victory. Coleman Christie, your 12-pound uh, champion for 2023 here at NHRL, uh, the reigning champion for the next year, taking home $150,000 to the STEM charity of his choice and a golden brat, plus $12,000 in cash as the first place winner. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely nothing to scoff at. That'll buy a lot of knots me's. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Coleman Christie taking home some pretty heavy hardware back to Southern California. Yeah. That is a huge feather in their cap there in the SCAR community down in Southern California. Um, you know, Coleman runs uh, variants of full court um, to great effect there uh, yeah. at, uh, at his leagues there locally. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, uh, no, uh, no question here. He absolutely dominated his opponents today. He did, and although I will say it was a split decision and for good reason. Uh, Jameson Go had a lot of good moments there. Uh, it could have gone any any one of, uh, or well, could have gone either way rather yeah. um, throughout the match. But I think that was, at least in my opinion, the right decision. They came down. It was just. Uh, you know, Psycho couldn't do what Psycho needed to do, and Full Court did exactly what it was designed to do. I'm sure this will, uh, you know, be a uh, topic of interesting debate online. I certainly have my own opinions about Absolutely, it. Absolutely. But, but uh, I don't want to take it away from Coleman. I mean, that's a no. fantastic run here today. Yeah, and, and even if there are people that have uh, differing opinions on this, we got to hand it to him. He built to the rules. He executed perfectly um, when... People see a loophole here or a, uh, a thing to exploit. Uh, NHRL encourages them to do that to the maximum of their ability within the rule set and within the spirit of, of the competition. Uh, and he just nailed it, you know, on, on every mark. So, uh, you know, hats off to him and we'll see what he brings next year. Okay, great. Okay, Ricky. Yes. All right, we've crowned our 12-pound final. We have two golden breaths left here. We've got the, our beetleweight final and our 30-pound final. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jameson Go here taking home second place, going to donate $100,000 uh, from his win here in the Still 12s. Still intense, yeah. And uh, taking home second place and $4,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay. Well, we are nearing... <sighs> Boy, uh, do we, and we don't have any third place fights left, do we? Do we? Or we no, we do. We have um, Silent have Spring Silent versus Spring. Monkfish. So it, Jameson obviously uh, is still in the running for the 30 pound, but is still in the running to be a, uh, a podium seat um, in the three pound championship as well. There's an incredible amount of money that is still left on the line for Jameson. He is guaranteed to, to take home another $100,000 at least for a uh, STEM charity of his choice in that 30 pound final, potentially 150,000. And uh, he is fighting for the uh, third place finish and an additional 50,000. Now that is really uh, still up in the air. Yeah. But uh, by the end of today, he will have donated at least $200,000 to the STEM charities of his choice today. Pretty cool. You know, I, I know it's not what he would rather, but it would be kind of neat to have like a one, two, three finishing. Oh. You know, like that would be... That's that, got to be a something. That should have a name. Yeah. Right? Right. It's like the <laughs> ultimate podium or something, you yeah. know? Because you're standing on all three. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't even have enough legs for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a twister board. Okay, good. All right. We got to right. keep uh, workshopping these, yeah, we got a lot to workshop. Yeah. We okay. just, we need more time behind the desk, you and I. I think that's really the key here. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, let's take a second to... We have so many builders left. We have so many fans uh, both tuned in at home and here in the, um, in the building with us today. So many people have stayed dedicated. It's going on 11 o'clock. It's 1030 at night. People okay. have been here all day. People yeah. have been watching at home all day. And uh, as much as builders would still build and still fight, you know, in a closet with no one watching. Sure. The people watching and the enthusiasm that we have here in the room and online is really 
uh, it just elevates the experience yeah. so much. So a thank you to everyone yes. who has tuned in. A thank you uh, to everyone who dedicates their time, attention, and passion to being fans of this sport. You make it so much better. You really this do. This is so fantastic. Thank you all for all of your support this year. Amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, I just get like so energized when I see full stands at almost 11 o'clock. You know, uh, this really means that, you well, know, like, Saturday night. Fantastic. I mean, people, they could be out. This doing is the best thing, though, uh, that's happening this entire week. OK. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I, I know that if I was a fan and I was once a fan of NHRL, just like all of you. Oh, you know? I remember. Yeah. <laughs> you sauntered up and said, oh, look, it's Ricky Williams. Yeah. Look at the thing that he's brought today. What? Yeah. Tell us about it. Baby shoes. Here's how you can improve your robot. Yeah, I was yeah. one of those really annoying fans. All the Ricky. time. Yeah. But but you know what? Ricky, how much to buy this robot? You know? Can I have it, Ricky? Can I please? Yeah. We want to buy your robot. Yeah. Yeah. One of those fans. You know? It's all right. It's all you now you're here. Yeah. So it's a it's a journey. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. You know, like when, when we were both back at 50 Day Street mm -hmm. and I was just, uh, you know, somebody with uh, Cheeto dust on their fingers. It's a lot of Cheeto dust. Just wandering around inside of the pits and uh, talking to any builder that I wanted to. I would have no uh, guess, like, you know, three, four years later that we'd be sharing the desk together. It's a short period As of time, As almost peers, too. Ricky. Yeah, it's... It, that is an incredible journey. Also, yeah. I like, I didn't... For all I knew, you know, robots were going to be the flash in the pan of, uh, you know, the, the late 20 teens. And, yeah. You know, I, I your, your life is varied, Ricky, so <laughs> I can understand. And, and, but now it's just, you know, it, there is such a depth and such a value and such a special, um, you know, irreplaceable uh, spirit that comes along with combat This is robots. the hobby that has actually hooked you, Ricky. Uh, okay. So to speak. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's I, a I'm, high I'm addiction. I'm curious, potential. like, if you never found combat robotics, like, what would you be doing right now? Dirt track oval racing or something? Uh, you or? know, no, I tried that. No one would do it with me. Anyway, Good. we're going to go to Lindsay. Save us from this conversation again. Oh, my goodness. Our, 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 you know, lovely savior from above. What do you have for us, Lindsay? <sighs> All right. Well, I have some super chats. Of That's what I've got do. for you. Uh, the first one here is from Sam Jones, who has some congratulations to share. Uh, congratulations on third place. Huge. I'm excited to see uh, what the Dirt Flares are going to do with their charity, uh, their nonprofit donation money this time around. Uh, he was keeping it a little secret. Uh, this next one here is from Revolution 04. Uh, hey, it's red. I left a while ago because I was too tired, but I'm sending all my hype and spirit. NHRL staff working overtime for this one. Love y'all. And if you don't know, Red is our hype man. You may have seen him in the crowd or on videos. He's uh, got the uh, fantastic mustache uh, and beard. Always hyping the crowd up. He is our number one. Uh, so thank you, Red. Uh, lastly, this is from uh, <laughs> Pit Desk member Justin Hunter. Hey, Luke. When's your Boys to Men album dropping? Yeah, we got to get together the entire announcing crew. I mean, like, we look fantastic. I'm into it. Let's All right, do it. Tonight, after everybody, uh, uh, you know, clears out, we're going to start recording. It's fantastic. Well, I mean, we certainly got the equipment. Yeah. You know, I used to um, mix and master CDs for a little while. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. <laughs> There's a... Uh, there was okay. a period of t so I've got the equipment okay, wait, at wait, home. Wait. Here, you... Here's the thing that I asked for yesterday, and I actually genuinely want this, just, you know, for my own, just as a Ricky Willems fan, you know? Sure, sure. I'd like to have, like, just a rough timeline of Ricky's life and just, like, all of the odd things that you've done to make more than $100, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, like, if, it, if I just made $97, okay? it doesn't matter. Now, I'm assuming that you're selling these bootleg CDs at, like, Walmart parking lots or something, is that right? They were on Amazon. I don't know if they still are. Bootleg CDs on Amazon? <laughs> you're confessing to, like, a federal They're crime bootleg, right now, They're not bootleg. It's original music and audio production. Oh! Oh, I thought you were stealing other people's no. music. We were talking about boys to men. I thought that, you were making bootleg boys to no, men that CDs. No, that was a different part of my life. Okay. All right. So you were, are you, this is original music that you were recording, Ricky? The other, I was recording for other people. Oh. 
I was just mixing and mastering and recording. You were running a sound studio, Ricky. S essentially, yes. Like, how old were you, when, when my brother, my brother got to make a wish, and he wished for a recording studio in our house. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you got to put that to use. Okay. And so I did. You took your brother's Make-A-Wish recording <laughs> studio. Yeah. So well, that you could record people's music for profit, Ricky. Sure. Also including his, to be okay. fair. All and right. I needed practice. Now, what did you know about audio mixing at the time? Ricky? Some. Okay. <laughs> In my Not head, zero. Cannon, you're like 11 years old right now. Okay? I, like... I... Ooh. Let's see here. That was that was early high school. I think that was okay. Yeah, I was a little older. All right, like, so like 14, 13, 14. 13, 14. I okay, think, good. Yeah. yeah. No, the bootleg stuff was earlier, um, and that was a whole separate situation. That was like we got a CD burner, quick. I'm what not are you kidding, buying, Ricky? Kids? I was such a little hustler as a kid. We would have been best <laughs> friends. Okay, honestly, we would just be scheming ways to make money. All right. I remember. I remember when Pokemon uh, Silver and and Gold came out. Fantastic. And they hadn't been translated yet into English. Right. And, but people were starving for them, and you could just sell floppy disks with, you know, emulated copies. Of course, I would never, ever do this, ever. But you could, and maybe it cost $1.50, and maybe a lot of people asked for refunds when they got halfway through the game and the translation ended, because I don't speak Japanese. Wow. Okay. What age was this? I don't know. When did those games come out? Okay, all right. They came out, like, in the late 90s. Something So, like what, you were maybe seven? Eight? I don't know. Don't. We're, let's get back. Selling bootleg we're, software let's, from Japan, let's, Ricky? Let's full circle this, Luke. Let's bring it back. Bring it back to fighting side robots. hustles. That, Fight, oh, no, oh. fighting robots. Right. I, that's that's what, what unites I like. us I'm not in, even common purchase, in common purpose. Common when we passion. have conversations, I literally like leave you my body. You forget that this is here, yeah, okay. and that's, that's worrisome. Yeah. Are, are, we, are we in the bracket? What is going on here? <laughs> We are at the NHRL Finals. This is the championship for the year. We have 70-some teams that have earned their way to this point by yeah. winning um, competition after competition and being seated in the most elite group of 3-pound, 12-pound, and 30-pound robots. They have come together. They have battled through seeding fights. They have battled through championship brackets. We have awarded one championship prize at $150,000 to charity, one second price prize to $100, and one third place prize to $50,000. We still have three fights remaining for first place and third place in the uh, three pound division and first place in the 30 pound division. Right. This is an incredible night with incredible fights and incredible competitors and we are so close to calling the 2023 year to a close with the most coveted prizes in combat robotics at the very least in these weight classes, the golden threats. Yeah. This whole time, all I can think about is you committing felonies in the late 90s, Ricky. There's got to be a statute of limitations on your attention span, Luke. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, I just thought, oh, it's brilliant. You did it like before, while you were still a juvenile. You right, know what right. I mean? they'll, they'll never convict me. All right. With that. This is going to be the 30-pound final. Now, entering the uh, building here is uh, one of our 30-pound finalists, one of the scariest verts in the competition, one of the scariest verts in the world, all the way here from Ohio, Matt Boris and Emulsifier. Listen to that, Jim. Some nervous faces, Luke. A lot of intensity. Coming in. Now coming in here uh, into the arena, we have one of the living legends in our sport, one of the greatest of all time, Jameson Go and Megatron.
Now we're loading into Cage for Emulsifier and Megatron. These are robots that have faced one another in the box and they have an even record, two and two. Uh, these are two very evenly matched robots. Now, uh, we haven't seen a ton of Emulsifier and we haven't seen a ton of Megatron this year, which really speaks to the absolute build quality, the design quality of these robots. Uh, it is no... Uh, mystery why they are here in the finals. Let's take a look here at this factoid. Megatron's name is a reference to Jameson Goh's first robot ever, Ron. So it's really actually Mega Ron. Mega T Ron. Mega T Mega Mega Megat Ron. Yes. Um, yeah, so Jameson Go built Ron as a teenager um, growing up in Georgia and, um, you know, like really getting into this sport very early. I mean, this is uh, the culmination of more than a decade of really dedicated work uh, as a combat robot builder. And uh, you can see that in his many top championship robots uh, across the country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll actually notice um, sometimes uh, Megatron ends up being spelled with a capital R-O-N at the rest. Uh, of course, we capitalize everything here, so you don't notice. Now, getting back to it, Emulsifier, uh, if we haven't stressed this enough, they are the reigning, cha reigning champion here. Yeah. They, um, they took home this award last time in a very similar fight. Yeah, there um, is a golden Brett that's sitting in, uh, in Hilliard, Ohio <laughs> right, right now. Uh, presumably. Yeah. And uh, unless he's pawned it off or something. Right. Uh, and uh, he is three minutes away from potentially bringing home a second Golden Brett. Mm -hmm. These are two incredibly hard-hitting robots. The, uh, the strategy for each one is different. Emulsifier really is just this big sledgehammer. Let's take a look here at this tail of the tape and talk about this. Megatron really is a control bot. It wants to pin you and then come down with this super heavy um, articulating hammer saw. A 25 and five record here, career all time for Megatron. And uh, yeah, these two robots have a two and two record, so they are evenly split. Matt Forrest here from Ohio is running a big old vert. This is a sledgehammer. What he wants to do is get um, your uh, front wheels off the ground and hit you with this huge disc. There is so much weight and power in Emulsifier's weapon. We've seen massive concussive hits. We've seen big 30 pound robots hit the ceiling here today with Emulsifier. Now, uh, one of the big factors, one of the X factors here is going to be those long forks on Megatron. We're going to be, it's going to come down to ground game here. Who's going to be able to consistently get under their opponent? Uh, and that Speaking is, of ground game, you can see here Emulsifier has chose not, wisely chose not to run its uh, enormous front wedge. Uh, it is running long, uh, presumably UHMW forks. Uh, they are going to try to out fork Jameson. And uh, they certainly have the equipment to do it. It's all going to come down to whether or not they can muster the driving skill. It is thrilling to see a Megatron fight. It's thrilling to see an Emulsifier fight. This is five, really a dream matchup four, for so many three, fans. Yeah, if you want two, carnage, you've come to the one, right place. Fight. Robots fight. Away we go. Emulsifier off to a really sharp start. That big sound that you hear is Emulsifier. Now what you're going to see is, oh. oh, look at that, the fork getting under Emulsifier, getting that robot up and using that gyro to its disadvantage here. Megatron wants to land a pin and then come down with that heavy hammer saw. And you can see that the forks on Megatron consistently getting under Emulsifier. Those are double articulated spring-loaded forks. Uh, if, oh! Good what? angle there on uh, Emulsifier on Megatron. Ooh. Now it looks like that hammer saw is not spinning quite as fast as it was before. Well, I think that might just be incidental at this point. Oh, big hit there. The rightmost fork starting to take some damage on Megatron. Woo! Wow, shoving Huge Emulsifier hit. into the rail. Jameson goes switching up his drive style here, going more aggressive. Emulsifier just uh, absolutely refusing to back down. Whoa, quite 
a combo there, hit after hit on Megatron by Emulsifier. I can see foam coming out. Is, is that the foam from the left wheel on Megatron? I believe so. And we have some, at least one missing fork on Megatron as well. Wow, I think that that might be the full tire on the left-hand side. And a tap out. That is a tap out. Your winner, Lady. Matt Forrest, an Emulsifier two-time reigning champion. Back-to-back -back wins for Matt Forrest and Emulsifier. Wow, that is a lot of heavy hardware to bring back to Ohio. Two back-to-back -back golden breaths. This is a robot to be feared. Let's take a look here at this replay. Now it was fork wars for a little bit and they were trying to get under one another, but Matt Boris and Emulsifier found those angles and started tossing Megatron, getting under Megatron, uh, really just kind of like eating into that side, uh, that, that left side drive and uh, eventually ripping off that wheel. Jameson Go saw the writing on the, the wall here and very wisely tapped out before uh, Emulsifier sent Megatron home in a bag. We're gonna check in with Chris, who's here with Team Bots FC. Victorious here in the 30s. Matt, you are the 2023 30 pound world champion. That feels really good to hear. Tell us about the day, tell us about the year. What did it take to get here today? You know, everyone at these events now is so tough and the field just gets better and better. So to be able to go back to back and repeat as world champion is just unbelievable. And I, there's no way I could do it without the help of these guys. I mean, getting all the robots turned around that fast and the mini bot drivers and the strategizing, it all just comes together in perfect unison. And well, you have a lot to celebrate. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that in a minute, but let's go back to you guys at the desk. Whew. All right, uh, let's take a look here at the bracket and see the path to victory here for Emulsifier. Bracket. Here we go. All right, now this is the path to get there. Emulsifier uh, was a... Um, was a robot that uh, was sitting there in round two because it was so highly ranked in the play-in rounds, defeating Vorion and then defeating Waddles to uh, come up against Megatron. Now these are three incredibly heavy hitter uh, opponents here, Vorion, Waddles, and Megatron. Uh, there was no easy path at all through this bracket. Matt Boris absolutely earned it here today in convincing fashion. Let's give them that hard-earned trophy. Chris? Matt, are you ready? It's time to hoist your golden Brett. Let's hear it! Matt Boris, Emulsifier 30-pound champion! <laughs> One last thing, Matt. Here is your check for $150,000 to a STEM charity of your choice. Take it. Fantastic. Matt Boris and Team Bots FC taking home the top prize in the 30 pounders. Now, uh, this, this is a robot that is absolutely feared across the country for good reason. You know, you're in the box with Emulsifier. All it really needs is one or two good hits, and your robot does not look the same shape that it, it did when it was going into the box. It doesn't look like a robot at all anymore. It can just look like a pile of parts. Yeah. I feel like it takes a lot to uh, force Jameson go into a tap out situation, and um, you know he could he could absolutely see it. The tide had turned in in that fight. Yeah, and uh, you know what a 
uh, difference between some of the predictions that we had earlier in the day, uh, especially on Jamison's part, uh, being locked out of that final chance for uh, a victory in that weight class. Uh, Amal's fire, of course, was, uh, you know, a highly ranked robot. I think a lot of people had uh, money down for it. Uh, but we've had some big surprises, too. Yeah. Jamison Go now taking home two second place finishes. Now that is $9,000 in cash in terms of prize money and $201,000 in charity donations to the STEM charities of his choice. Now he's still in the running for the third place finish for uh, the Beatles. Yes. And uh, the prize there is an additional 200, uh, sorry, $50,000 for a total of 250000 on the line for Jameson. So many numbers and figures floating around, it is hard to keep track of. But in any way you count it, it is an immense amount of money that can do an immense amount of good for the charities of these builders' choice. Yeah. Um, out of a total, roughly $1 million prize pool, you know, in charity money, he's either going to take home uh, a fifth of that or a quarter of that, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. It is. Uh, really Jameson is. Go, like, when you sit down and you start to do the math, and we've done it previously in the past, he has won tens of thousands of dollars in cash prize money here from NHRL over the years and has donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to charity programs through his finishes uh, this year and last year. DPS. All right, very cool. Jameson uh, here has one fight left for the day. Silent Spring fighting for third place, facing Monkfish. And that will be a fun fight. I mean, yeah, I, those are both beloved robots, and I'm in for some big damage, I think. Yeah, cool. So, thank you again for joining us tonight. It has been a very exciting night. We have a couple of more, uh, a couple more wonderful. Uh, fights coming up for you as well again in the three pound class and in a way Luke uh, as much as people focus on the 30 pound and the 12 pound classes I kind of think the three pound class is the emblematic class it's the uh, most competitive out of the weight classes absolutely it's the most it's, it's the most mature the most competitive the most mature and still the most accessible which kind of yeah. gives it a, a certain magic yeah, but first we're going to uh, check in here with All Stars, our event here in December. Everyone here is invited and uh, here's some additional information about that event. Get excited for Havoc All Stars. We've got three nights of some of the best fighting robot superstars from NHRL's past, present, and future. Plus, we managed to convince some of our best friends from the internet to come, like this guy. Three weight classes of 12 of the craziest robots fighting across three nights to be crowned the inaugural Havoc All-Stars champion. That's some heinous hits. That's some preposterous prizes. And oh my god, the challenges are the craziest. What more could you want? December 5th, 6th, and 7th here, right here at the House of Havoc, or streaming exclusively on YouTube from 7 to 10. Be there. I will. Now, Ricky, I hear that you're going to be bringing a robot here to All Stars. Yeah, it will be my first time back as a competitor at NHRL in a long time. Uh, yeah. Whew, since, what, 2019, I want to say. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, a yeah. lot has changed in that out. time, and, uh, you know, I got to get back in the fray somehow. Yeah. So uh, I've got uh, some big, powerful surprises. I'm, I'm hoping I can really make a splash. What's the weight class? Or can you say anything about your robot? I'll, I'll say it's uh, a 30-pound weight class. Uh, oh, okay. It's bigger to me is more interesting in terms of building. You know, tiny little things. My hands don't do well with them. Is it um, a baby shoes and uh, you there's know, inspired a, there's robots? There's a definite the uh, inspired robots? There's definite, you know, spiritual connection. Okay. Uh, to my most popular robots. So we'll interesting. See. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I really do. Uh, I really think it's going to be neat, and I'm really interested to see uh, what some of the uh, the people we're bringing in from outside 
have uh, you know on their minds and, and bring to the table. The folks. Are you going to be announcing the, your own fights then, Ricky? What you is know, going I, on here? I am a little unsure on how we're going to do this, but my goal is to give you at home uh, a sense of what it's like to be in the pits, what it's like to work your way through the experience of bringing a robot, fighting with that robot, repairing that robot, uh, the whole nine yards. And uh, if I can talk to that, uh, the easiest way to do that is going to be from a pit table with a, my own robot in my own hands. And, uh, you know, all the excitement and terror and uh, the highs and lows that come along with that. So. Yeah. I think that's one of probably the toughest things here. Uh, you know, like, we love this sport so much. We're super fans of the sport, but we cannot compete here. Because <laughs> we just, uh, I don't know, we don't have time, right? Um, and it's cool that uh, you're building something new. And uh, you've got a month to do it, Ricky. It, it will be exciting. It's escaped CAD, I'm hoping. When I get home, I will uh, get hopefully the second um, quarter of the parts that are required to put together this robot uh, nice. waiting in my mailbox for me. Okay, good. Very cool. Uh, something to look forward to, Ricky's mysterious robot. Do you have a name for this robot, Ricky? Uh, yes, uh, the robot uh, is named Moccasin. Oh. Like uh, for like the, the water snake or yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. Got it. One of the few lethal... Um, One of the uh, few lethal uh, venomous, venomous shoes, is that right? One of the, the few lethal snakes uh, in Maryland. Good. Okay. Awesome. All right. Whew. So. Now. Wow. Okay. I have just heard... That we are running iPhone 15s in the corners of our cages. Is this true, Neil? Look at wow. that. Wow. Uh, you know, this sounds crazy, but if you if you want a really good quality camera in like a compact, durable case, uh, the iPhone 15 just as a camera, forget the phone, does a really good job. Look at this wow, picture the quality. the camera is very good quality here. They can run 4K all day. We got 20 of them. Wild. Yeah, and, and I've been looking at these cages this entire time, and I was wondering what this weird, like, camera is peeking out. It's the iPhone 15's camera array. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Every single camera that we have used today is an iPhone 15. That in, is, at least every camera inside of the cages. That is wild and delightful. Yeah. Um, yeah, after this, I'm going to, you know, give you all the phone numbers for all of these phones. You can call them whenever you'd like, you know? No one will pick up, but you can call. Middle of the match, you can call cage two. If you know? Brett picks up, please uh, talk to someone. That's, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that is really, really cool. Look at that. These, so all of these iPhones, I'm told, are running the Black Magic app. And yeah. uh, this just does wild things with picture quality and streaming ability and everything else. Um, iris control, all these. Listen, I, I'm a, a nerdy, like, tech-obsessed guy. I don't know some of the things that, that these cameras do. I mean, I can get some of it, you know, temp control and that sort of stuff, sure. But, like, they go into depth on photographic abilities that I don't even understand. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's pretty cool because you don't have to understand them. They just yeah. work out of the box in a package. Yeah. It is, uh, it is really interesting. You know, like, I would imagine that an iPhone 15 cannot take a direct hit from a beetle weight. Uh, but very few things can. can take a direct hit, but they can definitely take a little abuse. Wow. And it's, it's also tough, too. I mean, we've got flamethrowers in there, Luke. Yeah. Uh, I, they build iPhones... They build iPhones to sustain a lot of damage. Not so, like, I can't put my iPhone on the dashboard of my car no, for no, an hour. No, no, it shuts itself it, it shuts off. Itself. I've done that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Um, you go back and you're like, oh my God, my baby, what have I done? You know, like, right. I can't believe I went inside and I had lunch this entire time. So uh, engaging was the conversation that I was baking my iPhone out on the, uh, the, exactly. the dashboard. Exactly. Now, you throw a flamethrower in the mix, and it's even more intense. And I want to throw this out there, too. I mean, for the people that haven't had the pleasure of walking into one of these arenas just after a flamethrower was there, it's hundreds of degrees. It is very, very warm in there. Yeah. Uh, we've got ventilation systems, and it airs out everything. Doesn't matter. The cage itself is radiating heat at you, and it is oppressive. The fact that they can run in there at all is kind of magic in its own sense. It's a kind of, it's a clever solution to a camera problem because, uh, you know, if we break these, you can just go down the street and buy more of them at the Apple <laughs> store. Ooh. 
we're, we're going to go over, actually. Speaking of fire, uh, here's a great iPhone shot. You can see it's starting to do some funky things there. Um, just with having fire nearby. A face full of fire would be a whole other uh, situation. I think we're going to get to see that here in a second. Wow. It's like it's got a heartbeat, Luke. It's, it's oh, look at, it's, it's like wavering and doing, you know. Are we about to see an iPhone just die here on the stream? Maybe. It's not. I oof. don't mean to personify them, but I feel bad for this phone right now, Ricky. Yeah, you know, they've, they've died for our, you know, yeah. our, our pleasure here. That's something else. Of course, the robots have been doing that all day. Yeah. And we didn't bat an eye at it. So I guess we shouldn't feel too bad for the iPhone. Yeah, we got to like uh, equip them with uh, little little weapons, you know? I want little iPhone gray. Oh, you know, I just had this revelation. Somewhere in Norwalk, Connecticut, there's going to be a Apple store with a lot of weird returns. Right. Tomorrow. Yeah, could you imagine bringing that into the the Genius Bar? Yeah. Like, hi, uh, yeah, this uh, this phone, it melted. I think it's my SIM card. It's like, sir, it's... It's, uh, it's in three pieces, and most yeah, of them are burned. Yeah, it's no longer a rectangle. No, it's, it was, yeah, it's, it's a SIM card. Yeah, right, <laughs> it's, right. Yeah. Um, gorilla gla you told me the Gorilla Glass wouldn't scratch. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm actually pretty surprised that these have, uh, have held up as well as they have. Control, do you know, like, have we replaced any of these iPhones here today in, in action? Or are they, you know, are we running basically all the same phones that we started with at the, uh, the start of the day? They are trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm interested to find out myself. Yeah, it's filed. That's wild. Ooh. I mean, like, we were running action cams previously, which is really designed for, like, skydiving and stuff. And, yeah, you know, I mean, like, they... Uh, snowboarding and where, like, you know, you don't need to have 4K camera picture. Right. In these cages, you absolutely need to see a totally clear picture. You need to see if the weapon is up or if it's down, if something's broken, right? I um, spent a bunch of time judging, right? And I can't tell you how many yeah. times I was like, I really want to know if he sniped that belt or if it broke on its own or whatever the case was. And that little difference in picture quality makes a world of difference when it comes to the, um, you know, auth not the authenticity, the accuracy yeah. of our judging criteria and hopefully for the enjoyment of you folks at home, uh, you know, watching remotely. Now, uh, just to update you on where we are right now, we have two fights left for the 2023 NHRL season. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we have the third place fight here, Silent Spring facing off against Monkfish, and the finals, Supreme Ruler facing off against Booty Brigade. <sighs> now, uh, I don't see them down here, so I'm sure there's a good reason why. Yeah, I'm sure they They have been hard. fixing their robots for a very long time, Ricky. So It's uh, a lot going into it. Um, and, of course, Jameson is an interesting uh, subject as well because he had other fights that he was getting to. And um, for the finals, I'm not exactly sure how we're handling that timing. Usually, you know, your 20 minutes is your 20 minutes. Right. Uh, but uh, everyone is assuredly off doing their best, working at this, trying to bring their absolute finest uh, abilities and machines to these final fights. Okay, good. So. In the meantime, I want to hear about bootleg Japanese software. No, I, I mean, I think we finished that, that wait, character. Wait, I arc. see Austin over here. Austin, you want to? Uh, Austin probably knows a little bit about Austin. bootleg Japanese software. You got the jacket and shorts going there? That's, yeah, of course. Listen. That's something. Um, all right, no, so I, I want to chat because unfortunately, like, uh, we've got a bit of a bit of a change up going on. Oh, so okay. um, the case is uh, Supreme Ruler uh, had unsportsmanlike conduct up in the pits. Oh, wow. And uh, we've never had to do this before, um, but we, we had to ask them uh, to leave. Uh, wow. So they will be unable to fight uh, tonight, um, which stinks. It does. Um, because this is really, really fun, and I, I actually, like, really, really like their robot, but, like, first and foremost is setting the tone of what matters about this competition, and that Absolutely. we all support each other, that we all help each other, that we're, we're friends and trying to, like, continue to push the sport forward and build better. Um, so, I think that uh, the Booty Brigade guys are going to come down, and they... I think they're, they're pulling JMO down to get one more fight out of JMO uh, and potentially some others. So at least there'll be one last really amazing fight. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a, it's a disappointing call, but an easy call to make uh, nice. associated with just like people have to be good sports. So 
Now, yeah. Austin, Thank you. while we have you, we do have a final golden bet here for the Beatles. Will you declare who is the winner for the 2023 finals in the Beatles? That would be Booty Brigade. All right, congratulations yeah. to Tommy Wong and Calvin they'll, Eva. They'll come down in a minute, but uh, yeah. All well right, learned. thank you guys. Okay, thank All you, right. Austin. Thank you so much, Austin. Wow. Okay, that was an unexpected uh, end for the Beatles here. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, again, as Austin said, we've never had to have that happen before. Um, but it really is important to uh, not only set the example and set the tone, uh, but stick to the rules and the, the policies that we've set forward and be fair. That, that's the only way to be fair to everyone and the only way to uh, uphold uh, not the sanctity, but the, you know, authenticity of, of this award and this competition. So we do yeah. what we have to do. Now, uh, interestingly, uh, this is uh, <laughs> for Droopy and for Lynx. You know, they are the reigning world champions from the last three years. And yeah. now they're the reigning world champions for four years in a row. Sort with of. With the team up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, you ever watch, like, Legends of the Hidden Temple where they get a half yeah. pennant? That's, right. That's what this is. They're going to go home with, like, each one half of a friendship We've bracelet. We've got to chop this uh, golden bread. I like half. that idea. Yeah. I, I like that idea of chopping this in half. I would if I were them. Um, well, Lynx has two. Maybe you give this one to Tommy, so yeah, he has that's, two. That's a good know? point. Yeah. Um, and I also, I don't want to undersell this. Uh, right. The droopy that we have in, uh, in the form of Booty Brigade uh, is a ground-up redesign. That is a new robot that was designed by Tommy, uh, tested hard-fought battle after hard-fought battle. Um, you know, it's not just him throwing in something he already had. So there is a lot of work and effort, uh, testing and tuning, all that jazz that went into it, made it what it was today. Oh, you know, I uh, mentioned wow. earlier about T-shirt cannons. We, we have a T-shirt cannon here. What? Yeah. I, what? Can we get a shot of that, folks? Let me get a. Wow. We are cannoning T-shirts as we speak into the crowd. We Someone, are shooting T-shirts into the crowd with like a Milwaukee uh, leaf blower here. Yeah. Uh, sorry. We just. And just as, as, as soon as he as appeared, fast as it happened. It's gone now. No wow. one will ever believe us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, let me ask you this. Say, say you called up your great um, Aunt Georgina. Okay. And yeah, you said, I mean, I hey, do have a great, yeah, great Aunt Georgina. Gra dear great Aunt Georgina, I was just in Norwalk, Connecticut, and I was hosting a robot event uh, with builders from around the world. And towards the end of the night, a mysterious man showed up with a leaf blower and shot t shirts yeah. at pedestrians, unwitting yeah. and unwilling pedestrians. Yeah. She'd say, you're telling your stories again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this. It's time to go back to the home. Luke. Yeah. That's, that's what you would hear. There's a line behind, uh, between reality and fantasy. And you, right? have, you have crossed. I really hope that you would stop this. Okay. Right. Yeah. We told you as a child, this can't keep happening. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's... No, th this is a fantasy world that we live in and that we're lucky enough yeah, uh, to true. enjoy day by day. Yeah. Uh, so thank you to all the builders here. Thank you to everyone in the stands that makes this possible. You folks at home that just keep listening to um, uh, us ramble while these incredible builders put on such an incredible uh, set of fights day by day, uh, event by event. It is wonderful that we get to do this and we are very thankful. We have one fight left here in the evening, and this is the fight for third place in the Beatles. We have Jameson Go and Silent Spring facing off against Rachel de Guzman and Monkfish. Now, oh, wow. Lynx oh. is coming down. No, no, no. Austin teased us. Wow. Okay. We, we do third have. place official bracket fight here. Calvin and Tommy. <laughs> They're trying to load into this box here, Ricky. Uh, yeah, anything can happen. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to run this. It's just like a wild rumble. Okay. Speaking of rumbles, I am starving. Oh. Somebody uh, run Ricky here some uh, cold uh, pasta. No, the only thing that... Uh, oh, I got a story about cold pasta. The only thing that is uh, going to satiate my hunger at this point... Is more cowbell? Is more robot carnage. <laughs> okay. Got cowbell it. would help. You know, if you want to do a little cowbell on the side, I'm here for it, Luke. Uh, but... I want to see Booty Brigade absolutely smash something to bits. I don't know what that's going to be, but I have faith in that I see, I see booties. Uh, 
I can see that we're loading in here this third place fight. But first, what we're going to do is go to Chris, who's standing here in the, uh, in the audience with Tommy Wong and Calvin Eba. Chris? Tommy, Calvin, you are again world champions. Tell us about the year and the day and what it took to get here. It's been really rough getting here. You know, Lynx as a, its own didn't qualify. And I'm just lucky that I have Tommy to, to team up with and um, get to the finals. And um, it's, it's just an amazing feeling being uh, with Tommy and, you know, going all the way. Uh, Tommy, it's a grueling season. Tell us what it's like to be here. Tell us what it's like to get here. It's just been crazy competitive. Like, Norwalk has really just grown to the point where you, can, you can't take a single match for granted anymore. And there's some wins that you're like, how did I even win? And it's just amazing. Congratulations. Once again, you are world champions right here. Go ahead, set links down. Go ahead, hoist it up. And there's only one more thing. Here you go, $150,000. Fantastic, reigning world wow. champions now for four years in a row. Uh, this team up here, these two friends here in Tommy Wong and Calvin Eba. Calvin taking home uh, first place in the last two years. Tommy winning their very first world champions ever. And uh, both of these com uh, competitors doing absolutely fantastic this season with their robots. Love to see it. Cannot wait to see them in 2024. Uh, this is the team to beat. These are the robots to beat. These are the builders to beat. They are beetleweight champions for a reason. Through multiple golden through. dumpsters, multiple golden brats. All right, now let's take a look here at a factoid as we get ready for our third place fight. Now, Monkfish had a nine fight winning streak broken earlier today by Silent Spring. This is a rematch from earlier in the day here where uh, Silent Spring really won that match handily against Monkfish. At one point, Wilds. Uh, I don't know if you were calling that fight. Now, um, Monkfish was kicked behind the house spot, and uh, we saw Remy de Guzman like physically kicking the floorboards up so that uh, you could uh, they could escape, you know, with Monkfish. This just in. Yes. My goodness, Booty Brigade is going to join this fight. This officially becomes an exhibition. Now, I wonder who takes home third place in this case. Did they talk about it and already negotiate this uh, before this fight? Yeah, I believe this has been worked out. It's, it's up to us to be on the edge of our seats to find out. Yeah, regardless of who they agreed takes home this money, we are all winners tonight. This is pretty awesome. I mean, these are the very best uh, Beatles, you know, from this, this, uh, this season. It's cool to see them here in an exhibition rumble. And I wonder who is going to take home uh, third place and donate $50,000 cash to the STEM charity of their choice. Edge of my seat, Ricky. Yeah. I've been on every surface of my seat tonight. I've got <laughs> the full, like, uh, ADHD can't sit in a normal way thing going on um, where every limb is on every surface. That crowd is psyched. You know, I said I wanted some more destruction, and what better way than to have our top-rated competitors all fighting, duking it out. Fight, robots, fight. 
All right, now this exhibition fight here, it is chaos. It is chaos, Ricky. It is absolute madness. Wow, the most feared Beatles from this 2023 season. Taking a bow here with an absolutely destructive exhibition match to cap off our season. These are the best of the best. The most potent robots have just been thrown into absolute bedlam. 30 seconds of action here, and I am seeing parts getting stripped away. No robot is safe. No booty will be left untouched. I am just in amazement, Ricky. Look wow. at that heat signature. It is crazy. The amount of energy in these robots and these hits. Wow, 90 seconds left here in this exhibition rumble. Yeah, we are coming up on the second half of this match. This is incredible. Wow. I feel like I'm seeing like multiple rematches here in a single fight. What I really want to see is Bunkfish just standing over, uh, you know, it's uh, dead competitors here. 60 seconds left. Looks like the weapon on Lynx may have gone down. Droopy is pushed up into the, uh, into the blue square here. And Silent Spring running great. seconds left in the 2023 season here. We've had a fantastic, fantastic season. And what a way to cap it off. Total destruction. Total <laughs> madness. Feared Beatles uh, here in cage three. Duking it out for no other reason than just sheer enjoyment uh, and chaos. That wow. is the match. That is your final fight of the 2023 season. It has been such a pleasure and such an honor to weigh in on these fights. We've uh, seen hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of fights so far uh, this year. Yeah, I was getting thousands of fights this year. Yeah. And uh, hundreds of fights today alone uh, are, you know, uh, all of us here, the entire commentating crew, uh, we... <laughs> we enjoy this so much, and it is such a uh, pleasure and a delight. Thank you <sighs> so much Thank for you a fantastic guys. season. Thank you to the fans. Thank you so much to the builders. On behalf of uh, Austin McCord, NHL's founder, and the entire staff, thank you so much for an incredible, incredible season. Thank you, and good night. We'll see you in November for All-Stars. And we'll in see. January for our new bot event. See you then. I'm Ricky Willems. That's Luke Stangle of Kyle Cross. We, uh, we love you all, folks. Thank you. Where's Chris go? Chris? <laughs> Look at this, Chris. Ah. Who else do I need? <laughs>